Hey, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today on the stream. Glad you guys are here. Hope you're having a, a great night so far. I'd like to welcome you to a new installment of a pixelated point of view talk, or as how I like to call it, app of talk. For short, we're currently at the third episode uh, today. So the first episode, we've actually, we spent some time in the Quake Free universe by uh, looking at experimental uses for depth map based machinima. In the second installment, we went over um, creating songs with pre-made Habo track samples inside of the game Habo Hotel. And today we're going to do again, something completely different. So basically what we're going to do today, today uh, as the screen suggests, I want to examine the machinima potential of Nintendo GameCube and Wii games. Basically I want to do a bit of a move towards console game machinima. And having said that, I think it's time right now, if you haven't seen um, my blog post yet, I am currently working on a new machinima project. And that one is going to be uh, is going to be called. It's a current work in progress title called Trigon, and it's going to be an experimental visual study of Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets, or better known as the GameCube port of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So similar to Arena, this movie will also uh, highlight Hogwarts, the different maps, and all of the different facets of the 2002 rendition of the Harry Potter universe in like a highly experimental way. So it's actually my first console based project and of course this change of pace, although it's really welcome, it also brings uh, both opportunities and challenges to the table. So this is, um, if you follow me on Instagram you've seen me post this like a couple of weeks ago. It's a couple of screenshots actually from Trigon off the shots that I recorded. This is a live camera manipulation inside of the game and that is actually something that I wanted to uh, talk about more during these live streams. So again, we're going to be investigating the machinima potential of Nintendo GameCube and Wii games. And I will be doing that today, of course, by using the same game, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets as some kind of a research uh, sample. And I wanted to do a couple of things here. I want to uh, show you live camera manipulation on stream right here uh, through the Shadow Virtual Machine. And uh, while doing so, I will also, uh, I will be combining the live camera manipulation also with some of the creative insights that I had during uh, the production processes found inside of Trigon. Uh, because like I said, it's a console game, it's a different, it's a different thing compared to PC gaming. So it brings its own opportunities and challenges to the table and actually uh, quite some interesting things that you might not initially expect. And that's why uh, I thought it was interesting to do so and I want to wrap it all up basically I want to combine camera manipulation and the creative insights together with a full playthrough like a perfect playthrough of the game alongside some personal commentary of me playing the game because you know Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for GameCube is not necessarily just a game that I'm using for my project it's also a game that I really really hold dear so I will uh, of course you know give my personal feelings about things found in the game and I'll also like highlight some technical insights. How am I going to do this you might ask and of course I'm going to be I'll be doing this with this. This is my this is our playground basically for the next free for the, for this stream and the next two streams. This is a this is an emulator. This is called Dolphin. Uh, it's an uh, it is one of the but in my opinion the best uh, of course the best GameCube and we emulator, um, but it, and it basically what it does is it emulates a Nintendo GameCube and a Wii and it allows the user to play GameCube and Wii games on a personal computer. So today I'll be using the Dolphin emulator and it currently uh, it has two interesting functions that uh, actually help tremendously with making machinima. It's called the custom texture mode and the free camera mode. And of course, I will give a short demonstration of both to give you a visual example before we actually start the game. Um, because again, these options bring new opportunities, but they also bring challenges. And you know, I thought it was a kind of interesting to go a little bit deeper in both of these before we actually dive into the game. Here we are. This is a screenshot of the options menu of the Dolphin emulator and inside of the graphics menu, so to speak, it got two little islands, one called texture dumping and one is called utility. Let's quickly take a look at the texture dumping 
on the bottom of the screen. It's, uh, it's uh, the arrows pointing towards a little checkbox that is currently not checked and it says enable. Basically, once you press, you tick that box, so to speak, and it's enabled, Dolphin will start dumping every single texture, not, I'm not sure about every single texture, but the majority of textures that, it fi that, it's be that is being loaded into the RAM of the emulator. And it will dump all of the raw textures for you to experiment with, to have a look with, or, or to edit. Basically, um, in the case of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, we'll be actually dumping some textures like paintings, and we'll be loading these in Photoshop, we'll be editing them, and then we'll be using the utility menu to load these custom textures real in real time into the game. So you're actually replacing textures live, which is pretty awesome. So once you actually have... Uh, select load custom textures in the utility box, it will just load it up. Of course, uh, for convenience sake, I've set up a hotkey. Uh, I've set up uh, shift C for, for custom, basically. Every time in my emulator when I press shift C, it will automatically shift between the original textures and the custom textures that I made. Of course, I'll be giving you a short demonstration about that soon. But first, let's take a first look at the free look camera. It's just called free look. In, uh, in Dolphin, I just like to call it the free look camera. So let's take a look at the image on the top left of the screen. If you go to the options menu and you select free look settings, you will get the actual screen that you see on the bottom left. The only thing you need to do is to hit the enable button so that it's enabled. And then on the right, you can actually set all of the different parameters like moving up, down, left, right, forward, backward, or uh, making the camera go faster or lower or increase field of view or you even have like rotation options for like pitch jaw roll all that good stuff yes it is exactly what it says it is once you enable it basically in every single from the get-go you are able with without like little to no adjustments being made you can actually like break loose from the game camera and practically every single Nintendo GameCube or Wii game, which is insane because this is like, I personally don't know why, like it's not, not many people have actually dived into this like machinima wise, maybe a lot of people have, but I barely hear anything about it. So with having that said, I think it's time here for a little demonstration. First, I quickly wanted to show you the Dolphin uh, folder. Now I'm going to do the recording, the gameplay recording, and I'm also going to do the cam, um, you know, the actual texture dumping on Windows. But I just wanted to qui uh, sh uh, quickly show you like how it looks like, like how the folder looks like on my Mac. I'm actually I use this. Uh, I, this is the computer I use to actually capture Trigon with, so it has quite some interesting things in here. I highlighted two of these folders, and these basically like represent also the utility and the dumping islands in the settings. So of course you get dump and here all of your dumped items are in here. Like for example, if you go to textures, uh, yeah, you guys can't see it. So I go to gallery. Like here are some of the textures that I dumped from the game. I got a painting here and I got two like maps, texture maps, whatever they're called, I don't know. Like, uh, th these are actually textures from Hufflepuff students. So I don't know exactly know, I don't exactly know like what made the developers make the robes of Hufflepuffs like purple in this game. It's kind of weird because Ravenclaw is also blue and it kind of looks off. So I went ahead and I actually, I changed two different things. I wanted to change the content of this uh, of this painting and I wanted to change both of these uh, robes to uh, yellow. Now, I already did this and basically if, uh, if you change your textures, you know what, just for the sake of it, I'll just go and open this, this texture quickly into Photoshop and let's move to Photoshop, of course. So now with it being in Photoshop, basically I can go ahead and just go crazy and edit the texture. I'm going to be really, really rough with this. Uh, I'm just going to <laughs> like use the bucket tool here to ba basically transform the, ro the robes of the Hufflepuff students into 
yellow like it should be because Hufflepuff's color is yellow, of course. And here you go. This is really si a really simple, quick, down and dirty way. I mean, I didn't even try anything, but this is exactly like how you would do it. Like you, you, you dump your textures, you go into Photoshop or GIMP or Paint for that matter, it doesn't even matter. And you uh, adjust your, the texture that you want and then you export it. And then when you export it, you have to make sure to actually have the exact same name. Otherwise, if you don't use the exact same name, if you rename it to something else, Dolphin will not know which texture to replace. So just save it with the original name that it got, and then you can save it into, here we go. Let's go back to Finder. You actually save it, not in the dump folder, but in the load folder. And there's a couple of things. And of course you got textures here. And here's already a folder with the game's ID on here. This is, uh, this is the game ID for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And there you go. So, and then you can just basically, you are supposed to save it in this folder. I already got a couple of other textures in here. Like a lot of these are, uh, like a lot of these are just transparent. Uh, I actually, I dumped a lot of textures and uh, like for the heads up display and whatnot. And basically I opened them up in Photoshop and I erased everything in them. So these are just transparent anti uh, PNG images. But whenever, when I open, um, whenever I open up the game and I load up the, the heads up display, the heads up display will be there, but it's just transparent. There's nothing in here. And remember the painting that I just showed you, uh, I just like, I opened it up in Photoshop and I put a little photo of uh, Vesalius the Nightmare over there and then I saved it again. I didn't really do a lot of effort, I just made sure like it looked good and I, I lined it up with the with the, 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 the cover of the, of the painting basically. Of the case of the painting, I just wanted to make sure that it lined up perfectly and I saved it and that's it. And uh, as you can see here on the top right, like they all have their original name. So Dolphin knows exactly what to do with them. So having that said, uh, I already basically, I did all of the texture like editing already. So it saves, it saves us some time here in, uh, in Photoshop. Here we go. Well, let's just boot it up. and see what happens. EA Games. Challenge everything. If Harry Potter. <laughs> That's good. They're working. All right. So I'm just going for now. I'm just going to load into like any random um, into a random save file so that I'm actually able to show you guys like what 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 actually goes on with the custom textures. All right. So here we are. Uh, this is my like this is my save file. My complete save file, basically. This was the save file that I tried to uh, record Epixelate, like Epoch Talk Free with initially. As you can see, I tried to get the maximum score, but I forgot that I actually got some points deducted from prefects and whatnot, so... Ouch. Yeah. So... You got anything to say, old man? No? Okay. Alright, so... I changed... A couple of textures. First of all, take note of the heads up display on the top right that contains our spells and all of the GameCube buttons. And also, I'll just move a little bit closer to you so you can see it. Also, take a look at this Hufflepuff student with the weird purple robe because, once again, Hufflepuffs are supposed to wear yellow robes, right? Black and yellow. Yellow is their color. So, uh, remember my shortcut, Shift C. And all of my uh, custom textures that I edited are in the custom texture folder. Now when I press this button, boom. As you can see, all of the custom textures have been loaded like almost instantly. 
and I can just keep swapping between them if I want to. Look, of course, I might have a little bit of flicker going on in the background, but that's that's how it works. Now they got like new new ropes, and I also got rid of my heads up display on the top. So once I'm going to do some camera manipulation, I don't have to deal, you know, with these weird buttons of my uh, of, of my spells in here, which is kind of odd. Okay, sorry. So when once I click it, I don't like I can just go fully cinematic. Like I can go fully berserk here with the cinematic mode, which is awesome. Now, I'm not really sure if it. Oh yeah, it works. Okay. This is also. Now that's done. We can move on to camera manipulation. So this is like the original game cam. The camera keeps following Harry wherever he goes, and even if you keep turning, it doesn't matter. You know, this is what happens. Now that the, because I turned on, I enabled the free loop camera, I can move the keys that I set and actually move around. Now, of course, you might have some glitches going on everywhere because you're not, let's just say, you're not supposed, you know, to see this originally, like this weird little thing. So, because, you know, when you're here, this is not even here, so it's not loaded into RAM. This is actually a little trick that the developers use to save RAM on the GameCube because the GameCube doesn't really have a lot of RAM. So also if you look up here, this is not even loaded. This is already like challenge number one during the production of Trigon. I will mention this so many more times, but making sure that everything, like you have like a really cool idea for a shot and you want to make, make it like extremely huge like this, but you can already see like, oh boy, like this is happening. On the left, like it's not loaded. On the right, it's not loaded. And if once you go up, oh boy, it just looks like a mess. You know, that was already that was the very first challenge I had to overcome when capturing Trigon. I had to make sure like everything was still at least properly loaded into the RAM in order to you know create the illusion of cinematic representation of Hogwarts. So as you can see here, I did some camera manipulation. I'm going to slow down the camera as you can see. So now it's really slow. I can zoom in, I can uh, zoom out, I can zoom in a little bit, and now when I press A, I'm actually doing a dry, like a rider shot, which is pretty cool. Like this, in the, no in the normal OG game, you wouldn't be able to do it, but with the free cam inside of Dolphin, and with the aid of custom textures like this, because you know, like, like I said, I'm hiding the, the heads up display, I'm actually able to make cinematic shots in here and you can you can go you can be really creative with this. So that's just a, a tiny little representation of like what you could do. There's a lot of things that you can do with the with with the free look camera and of course I'm not going to show you all of them. But uh you know all of the all of the little tips and tricks that I used during production of Trigon, I will show you these, of course, over the course of the stream. Now, I, the last thing I want to do before we go back to the presentation is I want to show you, of course, the custom painting that I uh, that I adjusted because all of the paintings are hanging on the grand staircase. All right. So I'm going to turn off the custom textures for now so we can actually find the painting. I know where it is. <laughs> That's why I choose it. Here it is. Here is the, here is the, the painting that we adjusted. I didn't really pick him for like any reason whatsoever. I just uh, I just thought it was an interesting painting. Let's go here, take a quick look at him, and now when I press Shift C, boom. Now Hogwarts has like some very expensive Swiss masters hanging on their walls. Like I didn't know Hogwarts had the money for that. And there you have it. It, it, there's really nothing more to it than this, you know, that's how you just get custom textures in there now, now you can go back to the original you can load them back. You can just do whatever you want of course um, If I quickly go into free per in first person mode You can probably see already like some of these paintings a lot of the paintings They're being like they're repeated over and over and over again like here. You probably saw it already like here's the here's another one <laughs> and here is another one. <laughs> like throughout the course of, uh, throughout the entire uh, castle, you know, you will see multiple copies of all of these paintings. And so basically the chances are pretty high 
if you just kept if you if I just changed this uh, texture and I just went on and about and I just did whatever the hell I wanted to and I just left my custom textures on I would probably like see this painting in like the, the most weirdest places but you know here here is another one so having said that that was a quick demonstration of uh, of the custom paintings and how to use these. You're probably wondering, like, why, again, like, why did you choose Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Well, it's a long story. Let me just keep it short by saying that uh, everybody has a game or a movie or a book or whatever, any kind of thing or, or a toy. It doesn't matter. Everybody has something in their life that is really close to their hearts. And for me, that is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the Nintendo GameCube. I will undoubtedly go deeper into this during the stream. And like, don't worry, this game is not perfect. It is far away from perfect. It's like really far away from perfect. It's actually doing a lot of things wrong. And don't worry, I will definitely highlight those because the things that the game does wrong are really, really annoying. And they really piss me off sometimes. Like sometimes they really make, make the game even unplayable. Like, for example, you know, there's like a specific spell challenge in the game where the camera is just broken or there's a Quidditch match that's extremely hard, those kind of stuff. So in order to, um, to meet our goal, which is uh, combining creative insights with personal commentary and 100% playthrough of the game, I actually have to set a couple of goals that I have to meet. And in, uh, at this moment, I've got eight goals that I have to complete for 100% completion plus two additional uh, optional things that are like not necessarily required, but it would be, uh, you know, I just want to do it for completion's sake, so to speak, you know, to in order to complete everything. So let's start with the first one. Um, and that is to beat the story with all eight spells. Now, of course, we got to beat the story in order to beat the game. The, uh, you know, we got to go into the Chamber of Secrets, we got to save the day and... Uh, Kill spiders and whatnot. You know, you, you know, you, you've watched the movie. You've read the books. You know what it's all about. Uh, but we we got to do it with all eight spells. And I'm probably wondering, like, what the hell? What do you mean with eight spells? Like they, like Harry Potter games give you sp sp like spell books, like there are peanut butter sandwiches. You know, you can get them anytime you want. Y yes and no. Because technically, you could beat the game with only seven spells. The eighth spell, uh, Alohomora, is entirely optional. You do not need it at all. Uh, and to be honest, it's kind of shitty. It's really useless. It only it, it looks cool. It makes some cool looking sound effects and and light effects, but it only opens up like what three three or four uh, chests with with uh, with wizard cards. So it's not all that useful. But in order, you know, for completion's sake, again, we just need to get to finish the game with all eight spells. Next up, we got to finish the game with the maximum amount of house points possible. I admit, this sounds a little bit vague, but the point is I do not n exactly know what the maximum amount of house points is in this game. I've read online that for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for Nintendo GameCube, the maximum amount of house points you can get is 600, which makes sense because a couple of prefects deducted house points from me during the second night during like a stealth mission, and I already had 580. So it was kind of most likely that 600 is the maximum, so I just have to finish the game with the maximum amount of house points possible. I cannot have any house points deducted. If prefects deduct house points from me, I just have to load my save state and start over again, basically. Next up is to win the Quidditch Cup. And of course, this sounds pretty easy, considering this is a Harry Potter game. This is actually the only, like, except for Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup, of course, this is the only Harry Potter, mainline Harry Potter game that combines an entire Quidditch season. It's, it's freaking ridiculous. You have Quidditch practice, and you have three full-fledged games against uh, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. And you can actually, you can either lose or win the House Cup, which is insane. Because in, in Philosopher's Stone and in Prisoner of Azkaban, there's, like, barely any, any Quidditch left. This is, like, the only game mainline Harry Potter game, at least for like GameCube and stuff like that, that combines this 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 cool stuff. You know, it actually has Quidditch in there. This is awesome. But winning the cup, boy, it's a different story. 
because the last game against Slytherin is extremely broken. They're supposed to be better and quicker than you because they have Nimbus 2000 once. Once again, you know, that's the whole events of the story and the book and the movie. But their brooms are so broken that, like, if you don't get the snitch in, like, two to three minutes, you automatically lose the game. And if you lose the game against Slytherin, that means Slytherin wins the Quidditch Cup. So it's really easy to actually fuck up in the last game. Like, the first time I recorded this, it took me half a day. I'm not lying. It took me half a day to beat Malfoy. So it's quite hard. But it's challenging, and I like that. Next up is to win the House Cup. Basically, that means if we got more House Points than Slytherin, we will win the House Cup, so nothing crazy about that. We got to purchase all items from Fred and George's shop. Of course, um, there's like two renewable items in the form of Luminous Balloons and uh, Stink Pellets. But uh, the rest of those are all single purchase only. And, you know, we just got to shop every time when we can. And especially a lot of these items are really helpful, so we'll be visiting them quite a lot. Next up is to return all of the lost items to the notice board in the Gryffindor common room. So there's like a little side quest where you have to find the lost items and if you return them you get a wizard card. They also get you house points, like we really need those, so of course we got to do that. This is uh, going to take up a large chunk of our time and that is to obtain all 101 famous witches and wizards cards. They're scattered all around the game and it's not that simple that if you miss one you can always come back to it especially in the very first level already. If you meet, if you miss like one or two cards, you're done for. You're not going to get 100% completion. It's, it's really that hardcore. You have to be like on your, on your mark all the time for this. Last mainline goal for us is to beat the high score of Neville's games every single day. So we got Gnome Tossing. I believe it was called Gnome Tossing. It's just throwing gnomes into the lake, which is kind of, if I may say so. <laughs> And uh, gnome dunking, basically you're still killing gnomes, but you're throwing them through enchanted rings and then they will fall to their death for some reason. Um, that one is really hard, by the way. And you got like three broom races every single day. Th these games cost beans. And now in, the, in the beginning, of course, they will cost like maybe maximum five beans or so. But once you get further into the game, nearing the end of the game, you'll actually have to pay like 30 to 35 beans for a single game. And you can only carry like 100 beans. So this stuff is going to be like, it's going to be insane around the end of the game. Like especially during the Saturday night stream while we're at the end of the game. I can assure you things are starting to get crazy real soon. First optional thing is just really simple. Finish the game with a full inventory. So like 100 beans. I just have to max out my beans. Uh, max out my stink pellets, all that stuff. Like max out everything that I can. Fill up my potion files in order to make it look neat. You know, it's just for completion's sake. Last optional thing is to read all the passages from the books found inside of Gringotts. Gringotts is an optional GBA game that you need like the GBA version of uh, Harry Potter Chamber Secrets to use. Um, and once you connect the GBA game to your GameCube, you can actually go inside the Gringotts area in the, in the GameCube game. And you can uh, like get a couple of duplicate cards. But also every like the first four days and nights, every, uh, like they change during the day and they change during the night, there will be books in that area, in, in, in the vault or in the bank, whatever you want to call it. And they contain hints, helpful hints about like the events or the assignments that you're supposed to be doing today. They actually give you hints about the game, like what you what what is like in store for you like that night or that day, which is kind of helpful. So my also optional goal is to read all of the passages from these books. Having said that, it's time to bring everything to the table here. And of course, my stream overlay, here we go. Um, please take a quick look at the bottom right. They contain like, basically these are all of the uh, little icons that represent all of the goals. Uh, the first one is, of course, beat the game. The second one is the house points. Third one, Quidditch Cup. Fourth one, House Cup. Fred and George, lost items, wizard's cards, high score, uh, all of the hints in Gringotts, and have a full inventory. Every time we meet one of these goals, I will make sure that they turn to green. Of course, I also got a red one if we fail, but that is not an option because we have to 100% this game. And yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. I really can't wait to show you Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. 
I'm going to override this one. This one was actually from the previous stream. And for now, I'll be quiet and watch the story unfold. to the burrow, Harry. Did any of you ever give a thought of how worried I'd be? But, but... Beds empty, no note, car gone. Um, Could have crashed um, out I... of my mind with worry. Did you care? Never, as long as I've but lived. Mom... Now get outside and start denoming. I've had it up to here with all of you. Except you, of course, Harry. I'm not cross with you. Of course not. <laughs> you ready to do a bit of denoming then, Harry? Well, I'm not sure, Ron. I've been with Dursley so much this summer, I'm a little rusty. And here we are. Inside of the burrow. Um, I'm gonna pause right here because these assholes just keep... just won't shut up. Uh, the burrow is basically a tutorial level in this game. Uh, as you as you can probably tell, the game starts off directly, like shortly Depend after. Depend the glass jar, Harry. Yeah, this is what I mean. They will just not shut up. Uh, the game just basically starts like directly after Fred and George and Ron rescue you from, you know, from the house, and uh, you end up here. This is just like a little tutorial level. It contains like four levels and every time you learn something new. So the first thing that we need to do is like, we need to aim. I, I better turn on my heads up display. And we need to smash this jar here. With That's Dad's power testing machine. Try casting for Pendo at it. No, I'm just gonna break the glass. you're ready we'll meet you in the barn this is like I, I think it's safe to say that that was one of the lamest jokes I've ever heard inside of a video game I'm not gonna lie I've also heard that like some of the developers really don't like this joke but okay hmm. when I learn some second year magic I should be able to get the shield to the top yep you will and this actually this will become a little bit relevant I later ought to go see what's in the barn Okay, so uh, back to the main menu here. Um, if you were to play this game like regularly on, uh, like, just say regularly, you would have resume game, quit game, and options. The last two options, level selector, and I'm a big cheater, would not be here. These are actually developer options. These are were uncovered by the cutting room floor by the great people over there, uh, you know, who like to dive into video games find little find all of the easter eggs and secrets in there i really love it i've been following this game as well and they have unearthed some action replay codes that allow you to retrieve like a couple of these developer options so these two functions were just used by developers like level selectors uh, allowed the developers you know to go to every single map that they wanted to if they you know uh, before play testing the game basically so they don't have to start all over again from scratch I'm a big cheater it's just a little cheat menu now don't worry half of these cheats even don't work god mode doesn't work uh, this one actually gives uh, like the max amount of beans this is GBA link up this is for Gringotts I'm going to turn this on this is the only cheat that I will be using and trust me it will not matter for the full 100% like in order to go to Green Gods, you normally you would have to like connect a GBA to the game. I could use like MGBA inside of uh, inside of Dolphin, but it takes a lot of time to set it up. And now I've actually I've got like one tiny little cheat inside of the developers menu that allows me to do it for me. So I'm just going to do it like this. This is a lot easier. This this does not like require me to use MGBA and all that stuff. Fully loaded gives you all the spells, doesn't work. Kill Harry works, sometimes it will just like directly make Harry faint. Remove bad guy, rarely works, I've never been able to get it to work. Allow cheaty buttons. Um, offer you to do two things. It either uh, gives you a no clip mode, 
it, it basically offers you a no clip mode and also for in developer builds of the game it also allows you to go into free cam mode yourself so if i turn this on and i press the appropriate button as you can see i can fly throughout the game if i wanted to like so and you know you can do this oh oh boy what did i do <laughs> i'll do this also, I don't want to hear this lame joke again, thank you. Okay, so we're back. Alright, great. That's also a great thing that the, 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 the developer options give you. They actually give you the option like to cut, like skip cutscenes. When you go up here, you can also see like what was drawn by the developers and whatnot. And we this is just basically what they use for debugging and whatnot. So now when I press the down key on my uh, D-pad, I'll be back in here. Normally, if they were to press the upper d-pad it would transform the game into camera mode into free cam like basically what gone? like basically what we were doing like earlier uh in the little demonstration like with this and you go up and then uh, like oh hey yeah we can have a look what's going on but you know i'm using this for dolphin so the fact that free cam doesn't really work in here it doesn't really matter that much for me we're waiting in the barn harry yes and you need to shut up i'm busy i'm trying to teach people something I'll take my anger out on this thing. I'm going to like turn off the sound effects for now. Because I don't want to hear them keep blabbering through me. I'm sorry, I will do this like quite a lot, especially in the first level, because they would those these guys will just not shut up. It's hilarious. But uh, since this was the first level that I went through, right, let's get the beans here. This is our first introduction to beans. Birdie bots beans are found in all kinds of places and they can be used to trade on Hogwarts. That's great. I just kindly wanted to, I just kind of wanted to focus on like the bigger picture here because you never actually, as like being Harry, you never really get to see the, the, the bigger picture of like their backyard or so. Now, of course, this camera moves with me, so let's just go like this. So I kind of went with like the wide shots during the first level in the barn because, you know, it gives you a bit of an overview. And it also, it starts off with like quite an interesting perspective because you're never actually able to see like the barn. Like this, this many details inside of the barn all at once. And that's why, uh, that's why I went with this. Now, of course, there are some other like, the main interesting thing to focus on here, and you've probably already seen it like in uh, uh, in the introduction, little video background thingy that was playing during uh, during the pre-show of the of the of the stream was that I focused a lot on the house, and that was quite interesting because you know the house has a lot of different shapes, and especially if you like zoom in a little bit and you go back and you slow down the camera a little bit and you go like slowly. I'll just turn off the it, the heads up display and if you just go slowly down, you know even maybe add a little bit of extra effects. You know, this this looks really interesting. It looks really experimental, but it also looks really interesting. And um, that's really what the Weasley's house is really good for because, let's go up. There's just so many different like little shapes and geometry going on that it's really interesting to work with shot wise. And that's why I mainly focus like on, on the Weasley's house uh during like the first level of course i focused a little bit on the vegetation here but you know the, the majority the interesting parts here were like the the white shots i could make of the of the garden and of course their house here we go let's go inside the barn <laughs> there are gnomes everywhere Ugh. look they're up in the rafters <laughs> okay harry Target the little pests and we can come off the road. Uh, you gotta love the gnomes, really. You really gotta love the gnomes. All right, so this is basically the second part of the tutorial. This uh, teaches us aiming and shooting. Target the gnomes, Harry. I am targeting them. Basically, it, it, it like teaches you how to target moving moving enemies. Basically, here we go. That was pretty good, Harry. You've got the little pests on the run. They're heading for the garden. We'll meet you out in the barnyard. 
The first thing that most people would do is just directly follow them in through here inside of the barnyard. Don't, because see this chest right here? You actually get your first two in the barnyard, Harry. Shut up. Where you actually get your first two wizard cards here, and you cannot find them anywhere else. If you don't get them here, except for like one of the two, like if you get don't like one of them, if you don't get them, it's really already game over. And this one is either Merlin or Ofrida Clack. And yes, I've been here too many times that I actually know the card Number names. Number one, Merlin. Number one is Merlin, most famous wizard of all time, sometimes known as the Prince of Enchanters, part of the court, ki part of the court of King Arthur. That's great. There, now we get a little introduction to wizard cards. You increase your stamina bar with every ten you collect, which is which mm. is awesome. Perhaps I should go into the barnyard. No, we shouldn't. We should get a Frida Clack, which is number three. Number three, Elfrida Clagg. Chieftainess of Warlock's Council, okay. Chieftainess, whatever. So, except for this little cute ducky. <laughs> there is not a lot going on here, there's just like one interesting I shot. I ought to go see what's outside. Yes, Harry. Um, I could just go up and, you know, because basically here's like the little, uh, that doesn't work, okay. That sucks. I thought I was able to stand on there, it doesn't work, so I have to just have to do it through um, camera manipulation. So in order to make this work, I gotta face the area where Fred and George are in, so that everything in like that area is loaded into the RAM. I'm going to speed up the camera a little bit so I can easily manipulate the camera. So this is like the rafter where all of the these gnomes were standing on, and now you can actually see there's a hole in the window here. And surprise, surprise, who do you see when you when you look outside here are Fred and George. And it's quite interesting, you know, you can actually do like a kind of sneaky spy shot like this. You can just like slowly move there and you can see them standing there. This was really like a tiny little detail that I that I did not know until I actually started started production on this. This is kind of cool because like originally in the game you're never even supposed to be on here except like maybe with the with the with the eight of cheats. And of course you could like go crazy or you could like fo fully focus on like the fog in the grassland and the beautiful sunset in the background and then you can you could actually catch a little grip of the twins there which is kind of cool. It's a really cool point of view that I thought that you know I didn't I didn't really know existed until I started filming Trigon. Harry, we'd like you to meet our washing machine. Huh? Dad tried charming it. Now it's anything but charming. This is a good opportunity to practice some dueling. Dueling? And watch out when the washing machine opens its door. And keep moving around it in class for Pendo when the door is open. Like so. Alright, let's go. Like aim. Gonna do something or what? And dodge like this. Watch out! <laughs> nice shot! Go. Here we go. Ah, oh, just too late. Here we go. You almost got it beaten, Harry! Cast Flipendo when its doors open. I'd love to see that in Art Petunia's kitchen. You look like you need a chocolate frog. Here you go. You have to knock the frog out before you can catch it. Right, let's go throw some gnomes. We'll meet you in the garden when you're ready, Harry. Gnome throwing, like the bread and butter <laughs> of this part of the game. Okay, so I can be short about this part. Um, Get up, was... move on, Potter. I have to get this boy, of course. There was not really like any kind of interesting shot to make here. Like this is kind of all like it's kind of bland. There's nothing going on here. So except for like this little guy, of course, We're out the, the, garden. the washing machine. 
except for that, I didn't really bother with uh, doing anything here. So let's just move on. Throw some gnomes. We need to get a move on with the denoming. Mom will go mad if she finds any gnomes left in the garden. Look, there's one over there. What you have to do is flipendo them until they're dazed and confused. Then you grab hold of them and spin them round. And chuck them out of the garden. Wow, I've got to try this. Be my guest. And remember, flipendo the gnome, pick it up, spin it round and chuck it over the low wall. <laughs> I bet you can't throw a gnome as far as Fred did. Oh, I sure or can. any of the targets in the fields <laughs> over there. Don't try me, Ron Weasley. Really, don't try me. I'll just first go on and play the game. Throw some gnome. I told Brilliant. you I would beat your record, Harry. man. <laughs> what are you talking Number about? Eight. Derwent Shrimpling. All right, we got another wizard card for beating the record. Number eight, Derwent Shimpling. Ate an entire Venomous Tentacula for a bet and survived, though it's still purple. Okay, that sounds kind of... <laughs> that sounds kind of hardcore. There we go. Let's try to hit a target this time. Ah, <laughs> all the way over there. Give it another go. That was a bit all over the place. Let's go. Ah, that was too far. I suck at this game. Excellent! Yeah, it's fine. Oh, where are you going right now? I see what you did there. Okay, I really need to hit a target now. Here we go. No! Brilliant. Even further! Oh, Harry. <laughs> it went over the target. Are you kidding me? Okay, I probably should let go I, I probably should have let go like earlier already, so let's let's try one more time. That should be in there. Here we go. Target. And it was also the last gnome. I couldn't have like a better timing with this. It's late, boys. Time for bed. Big day tomorrow. Diagon Alley, then platform nine and three quarters. For someone who's never denomed before, you've done an excellent job, Harry. Almost as good as Gilderoy Lockhart himself. Thanks, Mrs. Weasley. I think you deserve a chocolate frog. I sure do. More sugar is just the thing I need. All right, so when you've completed all your tasks for one day, you'll be given the option to end the day in your rememberal, or you can continue to explore the world. This is important. As a kid, I didn't understand. I didn't think like this was too important, this message. But uh, if you were to like end the day right now and move on with the game, you would most definitely miss hello yet another wizard card and this wizard card i think this is like you can get a duplicate of it somewhere but you actually need the duplicate to get another wizard card that you cannot get like in any other way so you must get this card so basically the, the game is like in a sneaky way trying to tell you like make sure to explore everywhere anytime number 59 Gregory the Smart. You know, when I was a kid, I would just often, you know, just end the day and go on, and I would always forget this one. So this one is 59, Gregory the Smarmy, famous originator of Gregory's Unctious Unction, potion to persuade the drinker that the giver is their very best friend. Alleged to have warmed his way into King Richard's confidence and thus made his fortune. Alright, so we've got four wizard cards, we've got all the wizard cards we can get in the borrow, and this is also the end of the borrow, this is like the end of the tutorial level. Of course, as you can see, it is quite gorgeous. 
and I've spent quite a lot of time in here as a kid, especially because you know there were a couple of places inside of the inside of the game where I would be stuck all the time, and I would be just so stuck in the game, I would get frustrated, and I'd just start all over again, and then of course I'd be in the borrow again. So <laughs> safe to say, I've probably spent more time in the borrow than in any other level. So let's just throw one more gnome for the heck of it. I see what you did <laughs> You were trying to tackle me, didn't you? It didn't work. Another target. Here we go. Now, <laughs> now I can just shoot everything on target for some reason. I'm just a bit rusty, I guess. Just like Harry. There are a lot of interesting shots that you can make in this part, and I think this is like really a pretty video game level. Like especially for like a 2002 Nintendo GameCube game, there are just so many different colors. You know, you got the gnomes here, you got the sounds, you got the butterflies. First thing I wanted to show a little bit here, let me get everything in frame here. Let's uh, tr trigger the custom textures, slow down the camera. And this is like one of the most interesting shots that I made inside of the, the borrow. Basically, you've, you know, you've got, as you can see, you've got butterflies flying about, you've got the little windmill here, you've got vegetation, and of course you've got the Weasley house in the back, and you're kind of moving towards there, which is really awesome. You can also see like a tiny little piece of the, of the borrow over there. And this, like, this shot is like, it, it, it becomes really dynamic quite quickly. You have the camera movement, you've got the windmill uh, blowing around, you've also got, like, butterflies flying in and out of the frame from time to time. So that was really a great shot that, that, that I found here while doing in production. And it was really, it was, in this case, it was not necessarily like I should think like a gamer, like what is interesting about the game, but it was, it was just really like, you know, how can I make, like, how can I make the most dynamic and interesting representations of these levels? Because, you know, we've seen we've seen these levels like this and like this and like this and like this. You know, I could just stand I can just stand here like this and take a shot and that's all. You kind of also want to have like an overview of. Let me speed up the camera again. Like, like, how about a, a, a wide overview shot of the garden? Like, make it a, make. Make it a little bit more wide here, the camera. Move it. Make it right, like so. Slow it down. And now, I'm actually creating a rider shot over, like, the stone, the stone fence, whatever it, it, this is. And you also, you're, you're like, being, you're, you're given a, a wide, an ultra wide view. Of the garden here, also with the gnomes walking about, it just makes the world come alive just a little bit, even a little bit more, which is awesome. <laughs> Something I had a lot of fun with. Let me speed up the camera because I need it. Uh, a lot of fun I had was to actually follow <laughs> these little guys around. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, I know I can, like, you know, like, follow these little guys around all the time. I had a, I had a lot of fun doing the, doing so, really. I wasn't looking at here, so he was not loaded into the RAM. I should probably, like, stand here. Just make it a, look better. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I see you, I see you. But that was just also like something I thought would, would never be possible, you know, with, with the free look camera. I was just, I was really looking for something like this for like a couple of years already. I remember I made like a playthrough of the game on my original GameCube back in 2010 with like an easy cap or something. 
And then I actually already mentioned it, like how, how cool would it be if I can do some camera manipulation inside of this game. Final example here is, of course, this beautiful grassland here. I mean, I can just use the first person mode here. And you can actually combine the first person mode also with camera manipulation. So even like if you are in some tight spots during the game, or like some in some situations when, when you're doing camera manips and, and the textures are not properly loading into RAM, you can always use like the free the first person mode. The first person mode is not like some kind of hack, it's actually inside of the game already. So you know you don't need to do anything else. I just I just press and hold the R button and then like you have a limited, of course, a limited field of view that you can see because, you know, humans can also not see full green 60 degrees. But you can combine that, but I'm ho I keep holding R at this moment in order to, like, if I just let it go, then it would be like this. So, of course, you have to keep holding R. But in combination, just get it right here. You know, I could just combine both of these and also just make a really beautiful representation of the of the grass field here look you know with the fog in the background with the two targets in there the sunset that's that's basically how you can like combine regular camera manipulation with the with the first person mode and I'll be I'll be actually I'll be doing that a lot during um, during the remainder of the game also if you're in a tight spot like so and the camera, sometimes it happens like the camera's not like perfectly centering around you. What you could always do, like if I'm here, I could just change into no clip mode because then the camera will always perfectly center behind me. No matter what I do. If I need the camera to be behind me in order to get everything inside of like the shot, and but also more importantly inside of the RAM, so it's pro loaded properly, I can just go back into no clip mode because the camera will always perfectly center behind me. Like here also we got a little sneaky sneaky shot behind the tree. They're like uh, spying on these gnomes and they're they're spying back on me. Like in here as well, you know you can just like slowly move behind the tree if you wanted to. This is our inventory and uh, let's end the day and go to the next chapter of the game. Mrs. Beasley woke them all early the following Wednesday. She took a flower pot off the kitchen mantelpiece and everyone grabbed a handful of flu powder. Harry had never traveled by flu powder before and when he scattered the powder into the fireplace he immediately swallowed a lot of hot ash. It felt as though he was being sucked down a giant plug hole. Harry tried to keep his eyes open, but the whirling made him feel sick. He closed his eyes, wishing it would stop, and then he fell. And here we are. We're currently in Borgen and Barks. Borgen and Burks inside of Nocturne Alley. Now, we've kind of exchanged like the, the beautiful, colorful area in the bar of the borough to a more sinister, grainy, sh shady place, you know, with, uh, with woodworks, like purple accents and with a lot of like emerald lamps. First time I saw this, I'm not going to lie, if I can just get the light in here. It just really reminded me of a Sims plum bob because I, I actually, I started playing Sims around the same time as well. So this just had so much resemblance to the Sims for me. I just really got to love, you know, the green emerald, like the green, like the very bright green light coming through the, through the, through the door here. That's actually really what makes this game so great. Like some of these effects that are in inside of the inside of the game, they just really look great and they still hold up even if the game is like over 20 years old. Especially also the lighting, the the the, the, the butter smooth frame rate, the, the sounds, the sound effects, the music, it just all adds together really really well. Now I'm not going too deep 
inside of um, inside of camera manipulation in this room because there's not much going on here for it. But uh, I will show you like one tiny little thing. Let's just first run. What? I said let's just first run. Ow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> This is the, our first introduction to sneaking. Yeah, in order to prove my point, it cost me a lot of beans, but okay. Here is another another bean that we can get. And here is a save scroll. I mean, this, we can actually use this to save our game, so let's just do that right now. Yes, please. Now we actually got some tangible progress here. You little shit. What? <laughs> I've never seen him like doing this twice. <laughs> Bro, really? The first time, I'm not gonna, I'm not kidding you, it scared the living shit out of me. I had like nightmares for two whole days. When I went past this screaming skull. And now it's, uh... Yeah! Sincerely, really... Fuck you. Yeah! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Here is where we need to be, basically. Let's just uh, trigger the cutscene. Draco Malfoy. Touch nothing, Draco. Ah, Mr. Borgin. Mr. Malfoy, what a pleasure to see you again. The Ministry of Magic is conducting more raids, and I have a few more uh, items like this at home that might embarrass me. Like the Lumo spellbook? Items <laughs> that you are willing to sell? Correct. I'll expect you tomorrow at the manor to pick them up. Good day. Good day, Mr. Malfoy. So now we, we, like, a new door opens up. But before we can enter, we need the spell book. And this is where we need to be sneaky. Because if you remember, the hand does not like us one bit. He's basically like, talk to the hand. I'm gonna use the, the no clip trick here to position myself, like so. And now I'm going to uh, speed up the camera and I'm gonna show you like, I need to turn off, turn on custom textures. And I'm kinda gonna show you like an interesting shot, like this is from inside this cabinet. I've also used it like for the film. So basically now you have like all of the cool stuff, you got the potion vials in the background, you got the, the skull, it's a different skull of course, but you also got the, the, the hands, you got a piece of the, of, the, of the cupboard in there, and of course you got like the, the spell book just laying there being cool, and also like the, the fireplace. Another thing that you could do, but I didn't really end up doing, there are some like some, make some, make a really sinister looking shot where you're looking through the blinds so to speak, and you're seeing the Lumos spellbook. Can I pick it up? Yeah, all right, great. We got our second spell. Lumos. Let's assign it. to illuminate the end of the wall. Lumos can also be used to illuminate unseen entrances, and it's a little known fact that certain shops in the gloomier parts of Diagon Alley may be further explored with Lumos. Now, like, remember this, because this is called foreshadowing, kids. And there are no, like, we're not talking about shops here. It's just the one shop, actually. Maybe they were actually, this maybe tells us like they were planning to add this stuff to more shops, but 
uh, for now it's just one shop so this is actually another piece of foreshadowing here and also that the spell is active against spirits in dark forested areas hmm okay maybe we'll uh, use it later also, I figured out something while playing the game. If you actually go into dodge mode and you walk around, the, the hand also will not hit you. So it's even more, it's like better to just do this instead of like sneaking around because you just have to do this and you're already like running and then he will just hit you. So I just use like the dodge mode because it works a lot better. Poison gas, I guess. I don't know what it is. Like some weird gas coming from here. And now we gotta test out our new spell. Here's the hidden entrance. All right, where are we? Here is uh, it's not a wizard card. It's just a health item. Oh, we actually could have used it. That's great. Let's move on. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> that little bastard just keeps uh, sending stuff. Okay, so this is like similar to the gnome level in the beginning of the borrow. You just have to like target the bases and you have to target moving objects, in this case the imp. And then once you hit him and he falls down, you know, the, the faces will stop falling. Is there anything to raid here? No, there's nothing. So one is in the cage, one isn't. Dun dun dun! Okay, so where are you? Here you are. I got you. I got you. Back to the place where you belong, my friend, and that's in the cage. He doesn't like that one bit. He's like pretty pissed off at me. Well, if only looks could kill, man. Is there anything else in here? There is a door, but it doesn't do anything. There's like nothing else that we can raid. Get up here. Yes, Hedwig makes a return. Hedwig! Elops. Premium owl treats, the best thing for a happy, healthy owl. So, this little piece of gameplay will basically, like, like introduce us to owl favors. Like, if we give our owl a treat, it will actually return a favor to us. And stuff like that. Yes, I know you're gonna scream at me. Fuck you. Sincerely. And there is uh, the owl treat. Owl treats can be fed to owls to encourage them to do favors for you. That's great. Hey, Screamer. Here you go, Hedwig. Here you go. That will give her all of the confidence in the world to help us out. Thanks, Hedwig! Great stuff, Hedwig. That means we can move on. Another sneaky wizard card right here behind the ladder because the ladder is like literally here. And here's another wizard card that should be number 98 Gintna Firmage. I remember correctly. Number 98, yep. Dymphna Firmage. Famously abducted by pixies while on vacation in Cornwall and lived in mortal dread of them thereafter. Filed to persuade 
the Ministry of Magic to have all pixies humanely destroyed. So, if she got abducted by pixies and she was made into a wizard card, does that make Neville Longbottom like number 102 on this list? Because he got also abducted by pixies, although he was just hang hung on a chandelier, but... I guess that's the same thing, but I guess just the people who are behind the folio magic, I just forgot about that. <laughs> just don't bother, just don't bother about this because, you know, some of these descriptions of these cards are just like really insane. Like some of these are really stupid, like this person got abducted by pixies. And there's also some, some person like, like a lot of people who, who like got limbs cut off and stuff like that. And they also got in the card, so it's a bit all over the place. But still, you know, all 101 together, they're quite interesting, of course. Here we also got, you know, the beautiful greenish U. Actually, uh, let me go ahead here. Parts of the level below us are actually still here. So we can actually, if we, if we just look through here, if I just look like a little bit, of course you're not supposed to see it, but when we go through, the, through here and we look down, here is the... The little owl stand for Hedwig. Of course, she's gone. And here's like the area with all of the the imps. All right, another new thing that will teach us something new, and that is uh, hidden panels. If we like Lumos now, as you can see, we can spot hidden panels in the wall. And here is it. Another one. If I were to just play this game normally, I would just say like, oh yeah, I would just look at it and think like, oh yeah, this is just an attic. I don't care, you know, it's just a simple attic. I would just go like walk past it, and that's it, and I would never see it again. But it actually, also something that I found out during the production is that you can actually make quite like it. You can make it look eerie quite easily, especially like with this, make it a little bit longer. And the key here is to like slow down the camera by a lot. Maybe make it a little bit like less wide, like so. It's probably not the best example, but here we go. You know, if you just go down slowly, it could be even more slow. You have like a nice depth of field interplay here. Like you have this wooden bar right in front of you, and while you go down, you will see more of the attic. You will see holes in the wall, you will see emerald green windows, you will hear the imp screaming. The only light source that you have are these lanterns on the wall. Crates, barrels, all that stuff, you know. Also with the kind of your camera position, you know, you, you can really amplify the eeriness. Let's just say I'm just, you know, I'm just playing the game. I don't really look at it from a machinima perspective, but it's, it's of course it's a creepy attic, but now with with the free look camera you can actually amplify on that, which is really really powerful, and I really like doing that. It was quite an interesting find when I was here for the first time. That I actually look around and I thought, oh wow, this this little attic actually has quite some interesting potential for for machinima. All right, where are we now? We got out of we got out of here that is uh, that is all okay so here is a, like a nice example where the camera will just simply refuse to like sit behind me like whatever I try will go back if I go to no clip mode boom if I just leave it into no clip mode it doesn't matter I can just do it like that now I just have like the perspective that I want zoom in a little bit And now, if I just tremendously slow it down, you know, again, you could make some really nice depth interplays with the railing of the stairs and the crates in the background. It's quite an interesting view, actually. When you just get out of this, uh, when you just get out of this, 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 uh, this door, like normally the first thing I would do is just like walk here and it will also trigger the camera but now when I'm here I can you know still just have a look around 
and actually appreciate like what I see here. It's really nice. Okay, uh, introduction to wall sneaking. You to keep a low profile, you can sneak by pressing Harry up against walls. You can also cast a spell while peeking around corners. Spell casting while speaking around corners, it does sound interesting, but trust me, it's not really that relevant. I have done all the time without, so it doesn't really matter. Of course, that's good for Now, uh, some developer thought it was a good idea to not just make Harry wall sneak once or twice, but actually to have him make it do it three times. You know, in it, you know, you better just just don't do random wall sneaking. You really gotta make sure that you know how to sneak that wall, man. Push that thing. So now we open one door. We gotta sneak by that boy again. Now, we can go in here and ta-da, what is here? Another chest, and this one contains another wizard card. Number five, Gulliver Pokebee. Number five, Gulliver Pokebee, expert on magical birds, first to identify meaning of augury song. And of course, we gotta push the button here. Because now we can actually go to Diagon Alley. Here also, you know, it's annoying to actually have the camera center behind you, so you do it like this. I found this actually kind of interesting while, while we were just in here. Like if you go up a little bit. You don't necessarily have to go like extremely wide or extremely uh, close with this. Just you know the fact that you see the gothic door opener and then you have the stair and still this weird, <laughs> probably maybe not toxic gas sleeping from the sewer, which really makes it look so, so creepy. I also, I really like, you know, this little roof over here, like here's all open. And then all of a sudden when you get here, there's like a roof. And then you have like this beautiful green volumetric light shining through the windows. The volumetric trick, they actually apply it like a lot of times, like hundreds of times through almost every single window in this game. You've probably seen it quite some times now. And I, I just gotta say it works. It just works magically. I want to say magically. It works magically. I just like it. Especially like after so long, after the, after the game was released, it still holds up pretty well. I really like it. This is also yet another perspective. A really interesting perspective. Let's go to Diagon Alley. And here we are. So before we do anything, uh, of course we gotta save. Because otherwise we gotta do everything all over again. And here we have it, Diagon Alley. Like this is, this is insane guys. This is really insane. Like there's just so much detail going on in this place. Although like there's not much that you can do here. Like there's only like so many shops that are actually open. And you can actually enter and they have interiors. Boy, do, do the exteriors look amazing in this game. There's of course a little story about this, I'll tell you that in just a bit. Um, I just basically wanted to say before we do anything is that Diagon Alley, just as the interior and exterior of Hogwarts Castle are actually the two sole uh, maps that took me the most amount of time. Simply because it was really big and I just was able to make so many different shots with it. Like, you know, I could like make a cool looking depth of field shot, like a depth of field interplay with the logo and all of the, the, the windows here. Or I could just, you know, focus focus on the safe scroll behind this, uh, this kind of uh, gothic looking wall. I also got like the crates here. 
which at the moment don't do anything. And I'll also like tell you a little bit about that more later. I could also, you know, if I turn down, turn on my custom textures, I could also focus, you know, on the opening here. On like the, on this little cave here. Or if I wanted to make it more cinematic, I could just, not like this, of course, hold on. You know, I could like, make just a, a really wide shot with the Borgen and Burks logo and with all the witches and wizards in the background and we still got some, you know, some really dense looking fog in the foreground as well, which makes it quite interesting. There's lots of examples now, guys. There's like lots of examples for me. Let me turn on my textures real quick. Lots of examples to give uh, of like things to do here. Machinima wise, there's actually quite a lot of things to do. There's more things. Let's just say there's more things to do here machinima wise than there's to do gameplay wise, simply because there's so many different buildings and textures and models and whatnot. So we're going to d deeply dive into Diagon Alley, of course. Uh, so this is, officially this is considered Nocturne Alley. I uh, can't flip with this yet. Uh, basically, you know, where all of the shady wizards are, you know, Borgen and Burks is also like the shady place where we saw the Malfoys earlier. Um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of like quests that we gotta do here. So let's just first go ahead and trigger the cutscene. Harry, we hoped you'd only gone one fireplace too far. I was frantic with worry. What's wrong, Ginny? You don't look very happy. No powder went wrong, and I dropped all my things in the fireplaces I passed. Would you like me to go and look for them? That's so kind of you, Harry, but I think you'll need to get your things first. What was on your school list? A copy of the Standard Book of Spells, Grade 2, from Flourish and Blots, and a new potion bar from Mole Peppers. Well, let's all go to Flourish and Blots then. Oh, and you might need this. It fell into the hearth when you used the flu powder. Thanks, Mrs. Weasley. Come on, Harry. Let's go to Flourish and Blots. Jesus Christ. Stop simping, Harry. Hi there. Uh, okay, hi. Is there anything you want to tell me? My favorite Lockhart book is Voyages with Vampires, but Travels with Trolls is also very good. The old Roy Lockhart. Ouch! Nope. Just for now, take a quick look around, you know, and let, like, the beauty of Diagon Alley sink into you. This place is, like, absolutely gorgeous. That this is also one of the reasons why I love uh, this game so much because you know first we started off with the burrow which is like the tutorial level then you actually go to a full rendition of, of Diagon Alley of course not everything is open there's not like that much to do but there's just so many details like details colors and all those tiny like objects that is really not to it's really hard not to appreciate you know what you see on the screen right <laughs> okay really looks awesome let's first go to floors and blots and I'll just uh, think it's best you know to first do the story missions here and then just do some small camera manips along the way and then perhaps uh, and then perhaps once we're done with the main quest, then I'll just go in, inside a little bit deeper inside of the, uh, the camera manipulation. The first stop is Flores and Blots because we need to buy our spell book. Basically, the spell book will allow us to uh, to charge up our spells, also overpower our spells, which is something you will not want. But um, yeah, it's just something that we need to buy. How much is this book? The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 2, by Miranda Goshawk. Ah, now that would be one sickle. I'd like to buy that, please. Thank you. With the knowledge contained in this book, you'll be able to cast more powerful spells. Here's a helpful hint from the book, just for you. 
Build up the power on your wand and cast it when the spell is ready. But be careful. Don't overpower your spells or you could end up in a spot of trouble. It pays to increase your spell power. Volume 2 demonstrate techniques enabling the advanced student to build and sustain magical power. Basically, there's also like a, a perfect cast if you release it at the right time just before it overpowers. You have a perfect cast and it's the most powerful version of that spell. I'm not really sure as to how far uh, powerful uh, perfect costs are actually a thing inside of this game I've actually I never really like like seen any difference in like the effects of like Fopendo if like if I just shoot Fopendo's rapidly or I just like power it up it all has the same effect so it doesn't really matter well Harry did you get your book yes mrs. Weasley I can't wait to try out what I've learned where did you lose your things Ginny I think I dropped my brass scales when I passed the fireplace in the magical menagerie. My new quill also, definitely fell into the back um, of You can dance. also do live sure camera manipulation during cutscenes. See, everything so works. I think that must be in the leaky cauldron. And even magical if it changes for, uh, like changes Jake shot, you can cauldron. still keep manipulating. We really appreciate this, Harry. It is so kind of you to do this for Ginny. Yes, Harry. Thanks so much. Now go on, show us what you can do with your new spells. Bet you can smash those barrels over there. Yeah, so cutscenes can also be manipulated, but I don't really like, I don't really bother with these because they keep changing shots every couple of seconds and you cannot just simply keep pausing them, pausing the emulation because you cannot do camera manips when uh, the emulator is like paused. So yeah, it, it's a bit useless, you know, to worry about cutscenes. There's not really a lot you can do about these. But these cutscenes are actually rendered inside of the 3D uh, environment in here. They're not pre. They're not pre-rendered in any way. They're actually taking place inside of the 3D space. So that's why they're also. You can. Also, that's why you can also manipulate them with uh, the free cam in Dolphin. Now, we got two spells, we also got sickles now from the barrels, we collect these from barrels. Um, and that's basically the use of the barrels, we break them with a good flipendo, with a powerful flipendo, we get money to buy things. There's quite, there's like uh, five shops that we can enter, I believe. Yeah, there's like uh, five shops that we can enter. And there's also quite some things that we need to do. We need to find Ginny's scales, quill, and spellotape, tape, and we need to buy a potion vial from Mr. Mulpeppers. So in order to do that, of course, we need money. So uh, let's have a look. Are there any barrels here? Oh, okay, let's go have a look for all the barrels. And then we can buy our, our stuff, and we can look for Ginny's stuff as well. I can finally get rid of these barrels. Ow! I'm sorry. <laughs> now, I could have sworn, and maybe that's just me, I have no clue, but I could have sworn that in other versions of the game, these barrels would actually respawn once you, like for example, if I were to enter a shop and I would get out, like for example, Magical Menagerie over there, uh, I believe it was possible that these barrels would respawn, but I'm playing the North American version of the game um, and it does not work in here, so maybe it didn't work in the European version because I had the European version, but I'm not really sure if that this was actually the case, if they responded or if I'm just like talking bullshit right now, but I could have, I swear, I could have sworn that these barrels, like back in the day, they would respawn. Like I've seen them respawn countless of times, or maybe I'm just wrong, I don't know, I just... If they do respond, then it's quite, then it's kind of an interesting little difference between the European and the North American version. Here. Right. Okay, we got 17 sickles right now. That should be enough. Let's buy the potion vial. Take one thing off our list. And Mr. Mo Peppers is right here. There we go. 
Oh, that's uh, really hygienic, you. Thanks. Can you give me a discount? Excuse me. How much is this potion vial? It costs eight sickles. Okay, and how much after you sneezed in it? Okay, fine, I'd I'll like buy to it. buy that, please. Thank you. You're very welcome to fill your potion file with Wigan World Stamina Potion. The Wigan World's in the large cauldron, over there. To fill your Wigan Route vial, stand by the cauldron and press A when Harry's low in stamina, he will automatically drink the potion. So instead of dying, basically, uh, if you run out of health, Harry will drink the potion. Now we have one potion vial in the end. By the end of the game, we will actually have free... We will actually have free potion vials. Dude, seriously. Ever heard of a handkerchief? So, I can't get in here. Some cool looking things. I believe some eyes floating in the water. Here. Anything interesting? Oh! A trophy for that. Now, there's like this bag over here that just keeps on moving by himself. I'm just kind of curious what's in there. <laughs> More eyeballs. That is pretty scary. Some cool looking mushrooms. These actually look pretty similar to mushrooms we will see later in the game. Just a bit of uh, foreshadowing there. Looking quite good, but uh, this was, in all fairness, this was like the shop that I spent the least amount of time in because there's literally nothing to do. I mean, you just, pi you just pay for the potion vial, you fill your potion vial, and you get out, and you never come back. That's just basically the whole point of this, uh, the whole point of, 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 of this, this shop. Let's uh, go to uh, Gamble and Jabe's Wizarding Joke Shop, which is here. Gamble and Japes because we can get some stink pellets and we can also get one of Ginny's items. I didn't know Halloween was already around the corner. So how much are stink pellets? How much are stink pellets? Four sickles for a pack of ten. Alright. Some stink pellets! You now have some stink pellets. These can be equipped from the inventory and remember as you would uh, do a spell. To throw a stink pellet, press the button and stink pellets can be used to stun magical creatures or get you out of a sticky pr situation with prefix. So that's good. Let's just max some it out. Some stink pellets! Because... At the moment, uh, yeah, my stink pellets are maxed out. And this is like... Besides buying the the potion vial from Mall Peppers, this is like the only use that sickles have. I'm I'm really not kidding you. There's really no other use for sickles anymore. I mean, I've maxed out my stink pellets, and I got the potion vial, and that's all basically that you can buy. That's all there is to buy in Diagon Alley. So we will even get more sickles later, but they're just plain useless because there's nothing left to buy. Okay, we need to change uh, the cost of perfect flipendo with this thing, and this is actually the same thing as, as it was in the Weasley's Garden. So that was the foreshadowing for you here. Because now we can cast the perfect spell while in the beginning, the very beginning of the game we couldn't. Okay, there was like all of these useless... All of these things are super. We cannot even spend anymore. And here's a wizard card. Oh, there's not a wizard card. A froggy. Where is froggy? Just more sugar is uh, just what this poor bastard needs, really. There's not really much going on here in this area. It's dusty. That's all I can say about that. So every time when I walk here, I always think like there's like something behind here because all of these like boxes are like obscurely placed like they're hiding something. But I've tried, I've used like Lumos everywhere, I've, I've tried looking everywhere, but there's like, there's just nothing here, you know? 
this is kind of sucks because I kind of expected something hidden to be here, like a wizard card or a hidden passage or something. Okay, let's get out of here. I mean, this guy must be thinking, like, what is the kid doing in our storage room? Oh, wait, he doesn't even care. He's just reading a book. Yes, that's your mustache. Okay. Um, what else they got? A lot of unbuyable random stuff. I would love to get a jack-o'-lantern for, like, my spot in the, in the Griffin of Common Room. Now, the... the most common thing that people would do right now is just, you know, exit out because you're done, you got the stuff. But, remember that when the book said there are gloomier parts of Diagon Alley. Gloomier parts, get it? This is gloomy over there. That there are gloomier parts of Diagon Alley that you can use Lumos on, yeah? There you go. There's actually a hidden spot and it contains not only useless sickles. I've never really had like money that was useless. That's ridiculous. I mean, like they really make money useless in this game. And look what we got here. A wizard card. Number 32. Bridget Wenlock. Famous Riffmancer first established the magical properties of the number 7. We're great to know that it was you who made one of my lucky numbers. Okay, so like, beans in here or not? Some of these some beans. Just the coarse beans. But like I said, you know, there is like, the book says there is more gloomier parts that you can use it on. This is just basically like the only part in the entire Diagon Alley that you can use it on. I gotta say, I really like the decoration, how they decorated the place. I do have to say that this soundtrack is kind of getting on my nerves. The same as in Flores and Blots after like a couple of minutes, but I do really like how they made it. Like they combined concrete, like really worn concrete with these wooden supports and then all of the Halloween stuff. Like they did make it a bit gloomy. Then the volumetrics coming from the window and the doors. I like it. Actually, I came here quite a lot, you know, just to have a look around. Although I couldn't any buy, I just couldn't really buy anything because I already maxed out my stink pile. This is still a nice shop. I like it. I think it's best for me to save first. Yes, let's save. All right. What's up? Hello. You are really tall, you know that? Butter beer's the best drink in the entire wizarding world. Well, I can tell that you probably had like a couple of butter beers too many, my friend. I'm not gonna talk to you because you're probably gonna whine about like Gilbert Lockhart and all of his body, 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 body books. I don't care. So this is like one of the many rabbit hole useless things, wizarding equipment, you know, it looks really cool, but you can't get in here, it's closed. Have you seen this man? He is smoking a pipe. I can't read. Something needs to be painted and free cake this way, okay, why didn't you just tell me so? Anyway, Magical Menagerie is next. Uh, not only is this a kind of an interesting place that I want to spend some time on because I, I found out some cool stuff while I was uh, like sh shooting here, but there's also a wizarding card to get and there's also an item that we need to do. So let's jump right into here. We are closed. I'm feeding the stock. Keep out. So this is not the wizarding card. It's just the pumpkin pasty. So this uh, this 
kind of quest introduces us to stealth. We, we gotta be sneaky. Grab the shop owner, great. More useless money, really. I'm gonna be, or the certificate of being a total douchebag, he's got it. Anyway. Um, yeah. This level introduces us to stealth, and this is our first real uh, stealth mission, so to speak. Basically what we're gonna do here is we have to sneak past the shopkeeper because he's really an angry piece of shit, that's what he is. And he's also scared the living shit out of me countless times when, he, when I was a kid, really. Uh, but yeah, we gotta sneak past him, go inside the back room, which is uh, like somewhere behind that fire crap over there and get Ginny's stuff and then we have to sneak back so this is just an introduction to sneaking because we will be doing it quite a lot at Hogwarts cute little detail here this is the fire snail from the PC version of Chamber of Secrets this is the only time that you will actually see it in the game trust me I've looked everywhere you cannot find it elsewhere at least I think you can't um, but yeah this is kinda cool I used to play the PC version over at a friend's house, you know, in order in order to like see this, see the snail like pop up inside of the GameCube version was really a cool little detail here. Now, uh, another cool detail here is that when I look through these bars, you can just basically see the shop owner standing there and just being bloody creepy, and that is simply. The game is waiting for you to go, get past the door, so his code is triggered, his dialogue is triggered. He will then, like, scold you and he has to tell you, like, you have to get out of here and stuff like that, and then we have to, like, sneak past him. I decided to use this for machinima purposes, because if I slow down, and also turn on the custom textures, if I just slow down, go down a little bit, like, you also have some shot, like, a little bit of a lantern here, and you go past all of these bars, you actually have like a really wide shot of the magical menagerie with the imps and the cages moving and then you have just have this guy like in the middle of the shot standing there being absolutely creepy like for no no reason at all like even if you like zoom in a little bit you can even add more you could go even a bit lower if you wanted to like here you have the imp doing things, you have this weird eyeball thing, you got the moving cages and this dude. It's really creepy. But he is just literally, he's just like literally standing there waiting for you to enter the door and have his code executed. He's, he's just not doing anything, he's not even blinking. Look, this is just absolutely scary. <laughs> this is absolutely hilarious. Here, he's, he's, he's absolutely scaring the living shit out of me right now. Oh, I'm staring into your soul. I'm going to stare into your soul. Okay, uh, enough creepiness right here. Didn't you hear me, boy? I said, we're closed now. Go away. I don't know kids today. I wonder if the noise of a spell might distract him. Oh, here he is. The more noise we make, the more noise the animals will make, and the more triggered he will be. And stay out of my shop. If I can just stay out okay, of so this Okay, so I gotta keep an eye out what he's doing. So where is he going? He's going to the right. I'll just wall sneak it real quick. Flubber worms need feeding. And your mouse needs shutting. God damn it. See you, boy. Okay, I'll just I'll just make it a run for it. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> awesome. 
Ginny's bra scales. Ginny's bra scales, and we got another card. But the bad part is we actually still got to sneak again. Number 28, Tilly Toke. Gained Order of Merlin First Class for saving the lives of non-magical tourists during the Ilfra Comp incident of 1932 when a dragon swooped down on a beach full of sunbathers. Well, this is like a person that deserves a wizard card. And then, you know, we got... Uh, which, which else did we get? Like this dude who just ate in Tentacula and survived. Okay, although that, pro that thing probably would poison you. But this is like really somebody like who did a heroic deed and just really like... For all I care, really deserves like two wizard cards. Why not? Alright, now the shitty part is we gotta run by him again. And I'm just going to make a run for it. Where the hell is it? Okay, bye. <laughs> I got lucky here. I really got lucky. Of course, I also just could have went ahead and, and, and used stink pellets. But uh, I just didn't look, and now he's back to idling again, because, you know, that's just how the game works. Okay, bye fire snail. Luckily, that was the magical manuratory. I don't really like this part of the, of the, of uh, Diagon Alley, because the, basically because that guy scared me shitless when I was a kid. We gotta find Genie's Spello Tape in the Leaky Cauldron. That's the only thing left. Okay. Then we do that. We go to the Leaky Cauldron and get drunk. I mean, return Genie's item. Why not? Why not? Hey there, what's up? Have you looked in the Leaky Cauldron, Harry? I'm sure I dropped something there. I'm right on my way. Let's save one more time. How's it going? Did I tell you I've been having a bit of trouble lately with flesh eating slugs? Okay, what do you got to say? There's more than butter beer down in the cellar, you know, Mr. Potter. Like what? Deadly fire crabs, imps, bow truckles. Huh? What's in there? Tell me. That's disgusting. Oh my god, I gotta get out of here. Dude, did you see what he was doing? He was like sneezing in that thing. That, oh, never mind, you're not even listening to me. Strong cordial, sickles, family spirits. Really like it. Like for example, you know the different the different walls here. Also, especially this corner, you know, the two gens sitting there, and you have like green light coming from this door in the other way, and like the, the yellow light coming from here. And of course, they they've got board games and they've got family spirits are available. Bless you, whoever you are. Let's get more money we can't spend. Like if only I could get myself a beer in this damn cafe for all the sickles I have. I guess I just maxed out my sickles already. Oh, here is uh, anything I can flip in for beer and stuff. This one for sure. For some reason, I also never really understood it. There's like a, pardon me. There's like a Hogwarts emblem on here while we're in Diagonelli. Like, shouldn't there be like a Diagonelli logo on there? Fire crabs. 
This is also like the- I think this is like one of the first times in the game that we also have to deal with fire crabs. And, and now you can already see like the game is like kind of letting us loose, so to speak. Like they're not even telling us anymore how we should get rid of the fire crabs. Like it's for us to like find out how it works. Oh boy. Okay, I'm going back here just to be safe. This is not really the most exciting of places. I mean, hey, it's a cellar, but these like lanterns hanging on here, they do really add a lot. Like uh, I believe inside of Trigon, I did, wait, let me go into no clip mode because otherwise these bastards are going to like attack me any second now. Also a great thing, if you're in no clip mode, like enemies will just basically ignore you. You will see a lot of that happening throughout the, the game. But you know, you could actually make quite a couple of interesting shots, like you could make like a little perception of depth, especially here with the, the, the crab in the middle, I think like in the, in, again, in the front of the shot. The, the three different uh, lanterns here really like portray depth, like front, medium, back. There's also some cool stuff in the back, like uh, like the barrel and the more barrels and another lantern there. So I believe I made a couple of shots there. Normally, again, also this is just like a random place that I would just walk past just to get this over with and get the get Ginny stuff and get out of there. But you know, I just really start uh, got to appreciate this uh, this area while I was working on Triton. Also, you know, you can look for the barrel. Create an interesting, cool, through the barrel motion while this angry fire crab. I wanted to say head crab for some reason. The fire crab looks at you. And this little area is yet another wizard card. This is really easy to miss. Trust me, I've missed this one 100 times. Number 27, Mirabella and... Plunkett. Yeah, it just sucks because you know you really need to get all of the cards that you can get because either if sometimes you get the you get like a duplicate or something you can use them to uh, swap them with students in order to get the remaining ones. So here we got Mirabella Plunkett, fe famous for falling in love with a merman in Loch Lomond while on holiday. When her parents forbade her to marry him, she transfigured herself into a haddock and was never seen again. Like, it, 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 I just, like, whoa, you little bastard, that was, oh, come on, you just run and get rid, really, all right, do the barrel roll. Yeah, you could, you know, sneak between the crates, have a look at the barrels flying by, because, you know, this is a wine cellar after all. I just, like, want to know where all these crates keep coming from. But, you know, it's interesting to, like, create... Uh, like a little bit like this, move a little bit like this. <laughs> you can actually move along with the barrels. It's quite interesting. I just wish, you know, I knew where they were growing. More action. Wall sneak here. I 
I believe this is the last section for uh, for this. Are you feeling like a Legend of Zelda adventurer yet? Because this game is said to be heavily inspired by the Legend of Zelda. I really came to appreciate this particular room while I was uh, while I was uh, in production. Normally, I would just like this is one of those standard rooms where I just would go in, do the puzzle, get out, and move on with my life. But um, especially if you go a little bit wider here, not too wide because not everything is in RAM, but like really wide shots that like show you a great overview of here with all the lanterns and the wood and the and the stone and like all the different colors in here like the, the orange green tint that is like active here it, it really works well especially here like the you know like especially if you do it like this the volume metrics coming through the coming through the roof that really s like serve as some kind of like sky pan in this case with all your metrics which is really cool and you get this nice little gobo effect on the wall together with you know the still this green <laughs> this green shit coming from the sewer I still don't understand what it is but I did manage to actually create quite some a couple of interesting representations through here Time for some more beans because that bloody crap took them from me. I need all the beans in the world. There we go. Yep. Let's get out of here. This is kind of interesting because we enter the leaky cauldron through the leaky cauldron. <laughs> but that was a nice little touch here. I like that. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. It probably was. But uh, I really appreciate it. Bless you. I'm getting out of here. I'll be showing you like uh, like two or three examples with, uh, with shots inside of Diagon Alley in just a moment. I think it's best to just first progress the story just until the point before we actually have to leave Diagon Alley. Hello there, Harry. I found all your things, Ginny. <laughs> Shit. Oh, Harry, you're so wonderful. No, really, it was nothing. <laughs> you're such a kind boy, Harry. Here, have a chocolate frog for your efforts. Thanks, How Mrs. Weasley. much sugar does this Hilda boy eat in signing a day? copies of his latest book in Flourish and Blots. We were thinking of going in to see him. Would you like to come with us, Harry? No. Oh, uh, well, okay then. Thanks. This is actually Let's also foreshadowing fight. because Harry can't just say no. To, not to to Molly. He cannot say it to Ron. He cannot say it to Hermione. It's ridiculous. Okay, fine. So main quest completed. Let's go in here. Watch another cutscene. Great Scott! Is that... No, surely not. It is. It's Harry Potter! Yes, that's him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the perfect moment for me to make an important announcement. I have great pleasure in announcing that this term, I will be taking up the post of Defense Against the Dark Arts. Hi, Lucius. <laughs> I can see you all this time. <laughs> They're just waiting there, you know. Bet you loved that, didn't you, Potter? Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Potter's got a girlfriend. I suppose your parents will go hungry for a month to pay for all the books you're going to need at Hogwarts. Here, girl, take this one. 
It's the least I can do to help out the poor and needy. Let me give you some coaching, Harry. Fame is a fickle friend, and I would encourage you to be careful how you play the fame game, so to speak. Be sparing with your public appearances at first, and watch the company you keep. Harry! Why, I remember the time when I was writing my second bestseller, Gadding with Cools. Harry, we've missed the train! I believe the more exposure I got in the press, the better my career would progress. <laughs> Miss the train? Trouble was, I became overexposed. Yes! The Hogwarts Express left five minutes ago. And it wasn't until I went mysteriously missing for three weeks. Oh, no. What are we going to do? <laughs> Subsequently leaking the story really? to the prophet. <laughs> well, I know that Dad took the flying car to work this morning. It's parked in Charing Cross Road. This is like I an example of something the game of could really do a lot better. OK, it's our only chance of getting to school on time. That I managed to regain my like, form. Like, he stops talking every time they're talking. The they stop talking whenever Gilderoy Lockhart's quiet. Harry? Oh. It is kind of hilarious, but it, it's, uh, it could have been, like, executed a lot better. I'll meet you in the courtyard outside the Leaky Cauldron. Like, in the movie, they, they just missed the train on the train station here. They're still in Diagon Alley. Molly was with you not even one second ago. Like, how, how she doesn't know when does the train leave. Like, how come you actually miss the train? This is stupid. So we could leave for Hogwarts. There's just like a couple of, sh uh, like two or three examples that I want to do here. Oh great, it's actually a little bit faster now. Uh, let's do this. Zoom in a little bit. I I just I just really liked this like a uh, single witch keep walking about a uh, nocturne alley like in front of Borgen and Bergs, and I just really like, you know, to. I think it looks better if you put it in a wider shot like this, in a white shot. So it really, it really emphasizes the nothingness that is found inside of, of uh, Nocturne Alley. You only see her walking about in the same pattern, and you see this really creepy alleyway behind her with the with the Borgen and Burks logo like sign in the middle. Also, uh, you could do some cool looking interplays with like the Borgen and Burks logo and. like some windows or whatnot if you wanted to like so and of course you could like tremendously slow them down and then still you could implement like an interesting uh, like uh, interplay with that fulfilled in here I know it's a bit hard you know if you're making shots in this game To see the depth, you know, like seeing depth, like because there's no depth in this game at all. Uh, so you have to like see, like imagine the depth of field is there or how you're going to do it. It can be a bit hard at first, but once you actually like get the hang of it, it's really, really handy. Because, y you know, it makes it a lot easier for yourself during post-production to find out like w how do you want to like, what kind of depth you want to use and whatnot. Okay. Next up, Gringotts. I'm going to make a shot with Gringotts later as well, but I'm also going to use Gringotts. I'm, I'm going to do that by standing here. This, Yes, this is the Gringotts that we're actually going to visit inside, but we can only do that through Hogwarts for some reason. Let's uh, face the shopping street and plus press the D-pad down for uh, the, of course... Oh, that doesn't work. For uh, for the no clip mode, and I go up. Up, 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 up. And here we go. And now, if you go a little bit down and you zoom in a little bit, of course, I gotta adjust the height because uh, sometimes, you know, as you can see, the shadows keep moving and they keep freaking out. Unfortunately, that is just the limitation of the another limitation of the free camera mode unfortunately there's not much i can do about that this is just something that i got to work around like you don't really want like floating black masses going around but like this you could really make uh now you could make like a high-end overview of the shopping street here with uh like the magical menagerie in the background people looking in uh 
fur the windows, people talking, walking, and you know, being on and about their day. Last shot I want to show you is the example I used on my blog, and also you will see it like in the beginning, in like the pre uh, stream video. I always like to stand around this little corner, and I'm just going to like start up the no clip mode. The idea is here is that you create. It's like you, that you actually show green gods like this. You, because this is really interesting because you have like the really narrow shopping street on the left and right and you got all these people on and about. And it's a bit gloomy, it's a bit dark in the shopping street. But once outside of the shopping street, like green gods is a huge tall building, the white building, like it's a, extremely bright. So it's really easy to spot. And... You know, it's like a really colossal building in between of these really tiny buildings. And so when I zoom in even a little bit more, like I did le before, I can just uh, 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 slow down my camera and make a, make a rider shot. And I probably don't have to tell you like how cinematic this shot will be because you're using like the longer lens and combined with the 24 frames per second that you'll probably be using. And like this colossal building in the back that has all of the attention, like lighting wise, and you have like all of these gloomy but interesting, eerie but interesting shops in the front, and all of these, like, all of these people on and about on their day. This is just really like an example of like how to make a cinematic shot inside of inside of this game, and it's just all about the dynamics. Like all of the dynamics here are at play. You have the dynamics of light, and the front is dark, and the back is light. You got like the main focus because the Green God's Bank is the only thing you can read. Green God's Bank is like the only properly lit thing, and it's like a colossal building here. You got the you got the interplay and the dynamics of movement here and depth of not only the camera but also like the animal in there and the lights and also the the, the wizards walking on and about. And this is just really something that for me makes this shot so powerful. I really like it. All right. Um, yeah, that makes uh, and that actually makes Diagon Alley, I believe. Remember, let me check my notes. Oh yeah, I quickly want to check my wizard cards if I got all the wizard cards that I need. Let's quickly bring the textures back. Here's my folio magi. So I got uh, 28, yes, I got 32, yes, and I should have gotten 27, yes, okay, I got all three cards, great. Oh, and I need to, like, go out of, uh, whoa, oh my god, uh, oh, sorry. Damn. Okay, I think I used the. I think I've used this mode a bit too much. Oh boy. And now it's like freaking out. Not to worry. Whenever I uh, like, lo like I'll just go inside of the wizarding shop, and then it should be good again. This is a, like kind of a, so a side effect of. Uh, using no clip mode and using no clip mode like a lot of times in rapid succession then this can actually happen sometimes I've also had uh, my uh, like my first person view not working anymore and yeah, that's like good again I just but I found like in order to fix this you just gotta like enter like a room that like you got to enter a place that requires a loading screen so like everything gets reloaded again properly we're done here in Diagon Alley where it's uh, time to go to Hogwarts first I'm going to do a quick save and uh, let's move on to the next part ready to go to Hogwarts Harry you know, Ron, I'm really not sure about this. We've got to get to school, haven't we? 
and even underage wizards are allowed to use magic if it's a real emergency. Section 19 or something of the uh, re restriction thingy. You're sure you can fly it okay? What's it look like? I'm doing all right, aren't I? Yeah, I suppose. So far. Look, Harry! There's Hogwarts straight ahead! Uh oh! the burrow and we had Diagon Alley and now we actually have another huge at least for 2002 like measurements another huge level because this is also like two or three areas plus a boss battle against the Whomping Willow which is awesome I mean this is like one of the things what I really liked about the game when I was a kid you know you're not just directly like doing one or two things and you're directly going to Hogwarts and doing your shit and that's it you're really like, like, like working towards arriving at Hogwarts at like a pace where you have to do additional quests and whatnot. I really like that. Okay, so I'm going to no clip here right now. Uh, don't worry, uh, there is like. There are no wizard cards in this first section of, uh, of the game, so it doesn't really matter what I do. So interestingly, this is actually the spot where we will have our boss fight with the Whomping Willow. And as you can see, like his eye is like, non-existent, which is, which is kind of funny. But, uh, you know, it looks really small here right now, but this is actually like the, the door where we will be leaving through to Hogwarts. But uh, once we're here, this, this area will be bigger. He will still try to hit me, but he can't. I just I I just gotta give this area like a really good, great compliment, you know, because there's like so much atmosphere going on in here. Especially what I found really interesting to do is like to focus on the tree here and like just do a really slow rider towards the, towards the large branches of it and just watch them being lit up by the lightning like this. This is awesome together with the sound effects. I really, really enjoyed doing that. Now, there is like not much. Oh yeah, like there's another little asshole here. Like this is the first area, there's not really much going on here. There's just a lot of beans that we can get. And we just gotta, you know, get rid of these little assholes that keep, that keep like, hitting me. Like, for one or two, two of these trees, uh, let me see where were they, like, here. Let me move a little bit. Like so? Yeah. Like so. If you are like in no clip mode and you are like a bit too far away for these three monsters to attack you, they will just remain there. They will just stand here and they will just do their little idle animation. And that's also cool. So now I don't have to worry about being hit by them and I can just do my camera work. I can just do whatever I want. You know, I can just make a standoff shot like Harry is standing here with his wand. And that's basically what's going on here. 
shot twice. So let's go back and let's uh, let's start the game. What? What happened? I did. I did. I didn't even like touch the guy. Okay, and I lost the beam break due to my negligence. And I lost more beams break. See? Ah, oh, dude, come on! Am I gonna lose all of my beams? For fuck's sake, dude! At least I can get like a few back, but... But now I'm back at the same spot as I was before, so I'm not really too happy about that. Okay. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, that was a lucky one. So here's nothing left. Uh... Oh boy, I gotta go. There's another one of those bastards there. I'm aiming, basically what I'm aiming for is to max out my beans by the time I'm in Hogwarts. There's too many mushrooms here that actually give you a lot of beans. So it should be possible, but the point is just there's also just too many, too darn many enemies that will make you lose beans. So I don't really understand what's like the, the deal with this dude. Like, because I can't pass by him without losing beans, so that's already one thing. And this is really unfair because I will just lose beans. Oh, I won't. Okay, well that's that's a welcome change, I guess. No! This is gone. I'm already down to seven beans. This is uh, hilarious. Okay, I'm going to like let go. Can I let go? Alright, here we go. There's another tree monster I got right there. careful around here because oh my god like dodge walking here helps a lot really That was part number one. It's already quite hectic, this area. Trust me, it will only become more hectic. As you can see, down on the bottom on the bottom right, there is a uh, health bar for bow truckles. And bow truckles will be literally everywhere and they will cost you a lot of beans as well. Like, it's practically impo impossible at times to leave this place with a lot of beans. I just really want to get a lot of beans, but you know. Okay, so what I do is I spam the dick out of everything with the pendo because I absolutely hate 
bow truckles and save them. And later we gotta deal with them again. Oh! Beans. Let's get the uh, let's enjoy the fruits of her labor here. So now we're getting deeper inside the forest. Oh wait, yeah, there is this boat truckle right here. Now we're actually able to enjoy the fruit, the 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 like the the fruits of our labor. If we go up a little bit. This place looks extremely vast, but you know, the background is like a JPEG, so it kind of breaks immersion. But if you look from it from a distance, like especially here, it looks really, really, really pretty. Like all of the, the eerie dark clouds and the thunderstorms and the lightning, now it just makes way for just like the rain and the volumetrics and like these huge trees going on here. Like together with all of all of these mushrooms, because all of these mushrooms they, they give up such an eerie, awesome looking glow. And although I really find this level to be hectic at times, I just can't stop appreciating like what I see when I look at this. It just looks so awesome. Oh, I kind of lucked out here. Number four, Grogan Stump. Popular Minister for Magic appointed 1811. Uh, there was another wizard card here somewhere. If I can just figure out where it was. There it is. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. I get it, I get it. I remember how to get it. Um, so, like, wait, what? I'm probably now, yeah, I'm probably somewhere where I wasn't supposed to be. Okay. up to 30 beans you know it's really easy like I said it's really easy to accumulate beans in this area but it's also really easy to use them let's get some more beans and save that is really important I was here earlier. Okay, so I don't really have to go back here anymore. I need to be here. I'm just going to dodge walk again. Basically, dodge walking like really works. It allows you to walk more precisely, basically. It's, it's a lot better. up to 40 beans. I just hope I still have some left by the time I'm done with the guy trashes uh, down below. Hedwig. Hedwig! This time she gives me a note. Students are warned that the area surrounding the Whomping Willow and the Forbidden Forest on which it borders are out of bounds. Well, that's great. You just tell me now. 
This is due not in the least to the number of wild guy trashes that roam the forest. The students found themselves being approached. Lumos. Okay. Well, thanks, Dumbledore, or whoever gave this, like, information to me. I'm already well between my neck into the Forbidden Forest, but now you just tell me this. Okay. Here's another wizard card. Well hidden. Uh, this one should be Glanmore Peaks, number six. Number six. Glanmore Peaks. Famous slayer of the sea serpent of Cromer. See, this is this is a person that just needs his own card inside of the Folio Magi. Let's have another look from this side. Looks really awesome. You know, this whole sense of mystery and this is sense of mysterious the whole mysteriousness that is hanging over this, especially if you aim up here and you see this light coming through, it's really awesome. You could become really creative with this. just happened? Okay, here we go. Go, 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 go. I think it's impossible, like, to... Yeah, I thought so. Okay, I'm going to lose a lot of beans here. I can pick them up! I didn't know that. I never knew that. <laughs> I thought I was only able to flapendo them. Oh well. I just, I just, you know, I'm, I'm still learning new things about this game. Like ever, like it's been 20 years. I'm still doing this. I have to mentally prepare myself for the guy trashes because I'm going to lo lose a lot of beans. I'm up to 40 beans now, and I still want to keep them, but. Lumos is my only friend here. Let's go. There's just no good timing to do this, so let's just do it. Ah, you... That's it? That wasn't too bad. <laughs> I've had worse when it came to when it comes to guy trashes. I definitely had worse in the past. Almost maxed out, nice. Okay, so this was area two of the Whomping Willow, and now we're going to the final area, and guess what we've got to deal with, Botruckles, directly from the get-go, so if you directly see me spamming Flapendo when I get out of here, uh, you know why this is. <laughs> Hey, I see you there, I see you there. Oh, I got lucky there as well. And here. And here. And here. And here. Hey, buddy. Bye. Oh, I didn't even see that one in front of me, but I actually managed. Nice. 
what I always do, and what helps, is like keep pressing R so that the game will like auto will automatically target something. Oh, there's also another one. Apparently there was. Okay, here's the like once you get up here, it's not too hard. That's it. Just got gotta deal with this guy over here. There's another one. Yeah, okay, there was another one. Here you are. Here we go. Okay. Awesome. That was good. I actually managed to max out my beans once again, that's great. Awesome, 50 out of 50, great. That's exactly what I need. Let's get in here. I'm first going to get the last wizard card, so that one's actually here. You jump over the ledge. Here it is. It's also, once again, really easy to miss. You really don't want to know how many times I missed it Number while seven. I first played this game. Hesper Starkey. Hesper Starkey, which who studied the use of faces of the moon in potion making. Okay. There's actually another chest here, but there is not another wizard card, it's just, uh, I believe it's a potion item. Yeah, it's a potion item. And of course you've got like uh, the puffer pods here, but I don't really deal with them. Jump from one ledge to the other. If, if we turn on the camera a little bit, I just have to say that this area was probably the least interesting out of the three. Like, I mean, I just made like a bit of a total, like a wide shot here, or, or maybe you know you could go ahead and make a small POV from in between the root of the tree, you can see some, uh, you know, you can see the puff of pods going on and about. But further than that, I didn't really find this area to be interesting, it was kind of dull. We're also, we're about to fight the boss now, the Whomping Willow it itself. I also didn't do anything with the Whomping Willow. Also, I didn't record anything, you know, when you're fighting boat truckles and guy trashes, because I kind of wanted to make some sort of an alternative reality that you know that would take place after the events of the game like soon after the events of the game that's why i didn't really want to add the boss fight in there you know i just wanted to show the reality as it was like uh like like where if harry potter was not there if the boss fight was not initiated i just really wanted to show the environments as they were unfortunately there was not really another way you know to show the front of the the whomping willow without it actually keeps stomping in on you so that's why I decided to skip this and other parts of the game uh, in their entirety because they were just simply like not usable at all, for, at least for filmmaking that is. What kept you, Harry? I can't hang around here all night, you know. Very funny, Ron. Now how on earth am I going to release you? Is there some kind of weak spot on the tree you could cast a spell at? Uh, Boss fight time. Me. Let's go. So basically, we gotta stay away from the punches this tree gives. Here we go. That's one. And then you can hit his eye.
And now I believe it will also start using your car. Yeah, oh boy, it will start using your car. <laughs> it really makes it look like a like a children's toy car this way. I there is one thing that you really have to like be careful about. That is that if you are too far in the corner, you could actually like if you're too far inside the corner, like here, and uh, if his uh, arms come too close to you, you could actually like lock yourself into an into the corner, and then it could like punch you still. So you really have to keep an eye on that. And now it's going to keep throwing boulders. Stuff is going really crazy. But not this is not the hardest boss fight in any way in the game. This is like one of the easiest. It, it becomes agreed. You know, it is. It can become hectic quite quickly, but trust me, this is the easiest boss fight in the game. All right, here we go. That's all, folks. Oh no, I missed. Well, I guess I gotta eat some boulders then. You have to go a little bit more to the front, so you actually have space to walk to the back once he is, uh... I got him. Oof. Thanks, Harry. Much appreciated. Oh, it was nothing. Anyway, we better get a move on. We don't want Professor Snape catching us out so late. Why don't you try that door, Harry? It's the only door, you smartass. The only thing I'm not looking forward to this time is seeing Snape. Let's just hope he's left because he missed out on the defense against the Dark Arts job again. Or he might have been sacked. I mean, everyone hates him. Or maybe he's waiting to hear why you two didn't arrive on the Hogwarts Express. Professor Snape, we, uh, we In were... In my search of the grounds, I noticed that considerable damage seems to have been done to a very valuable Whomping Willow. I will be speaking with Professor McGonagall later. That tree did more damage to us than we... Silence! I would advise you both to make your way immediately to the Gryffindor common room. But Professor Snape, we... Go! And count yourselves lucky. If I should catch either of you out after tonight, I will <laughs> definitely I like deduct do house so points. Come on, Harry! I'll meet you outside the entrance hall! Yep, you heard the man. Let's go. And here we are. We're at Hogwarts. We've arrived. Best thing to do right now is to let the story unfold for this night and then uh, we'll do the stuff that we gotta do. For some reason, like, the audio is like this, and I've had this happen all the time, especially at night, so it looks like I've normally always played the European... On, Harry. <laughs> anyway, the, like, I'm, I used to play the European version, and I never actually had this, like, the, the right song would just play, so I'm not really sure if this is, like, a bug only set like only like happening on the North American version or something but it's kind of odd like the music keeps swapping why if it isn't young Potter how are you glad to be back at Hogwarts well, well I was almost killed I by a giant tree if Professor Snape hadn't caught me outside well I suppose that rules are there for a reason the Snape is like his biggest the concern right me. Now. yes you shouldn't be up this late you know better get back to the Gryffindor common room before Professor Snape catches you again goodbye bye Nick Bye. Yes, I was talking to my friend, Ronald Weasley, do you mind? I can't 
can't get into the common room, Harry. She wants the password. Of course I want the password. How am I to know that you two aren't Slytherins disguised as Gryffindors? Because we don't look like gorillas, that's how. That's a good point. Someone said you make scars and crush your slime car into the bloody willow. Well, we haven't been expelled. Look, just tell us the new password, Hermione. Oh, sorry, well. It's so reluctant inside, to give Harry. me the password. How else am I going to sleep? <laughs> Wattle bird. And here we are in a graph in Gryffindor common room. Hey Harry, Fred and George have set up a shop. You can trade all kinds of things with them for spells and really wicked stuff. Wow, I must go and see them. Where are they? Go through that door and through the reading room. There's a portrait on the other side. What's the password? Liberty Gibbet. Oh, and uh, watch out for Percy. He hates being disturbed when he's studying. Let's spend our hard-earned beans on some cool stuff that we need. So there's not really a strategy to this. Come here. Because... If you if you just run to the portrait as soon as you enter, you will always make it. Ah, Potter! You finally made it then. Heard about the Ford Anglia. Mum's gonna kill Ron when she finds out. I bet it was worth it to see Snape's face when you landed. Sort of. Anyway, welcome to our shop, Harry. Yes. Feel free to browse our extensive range of wizard weezers and magical merchandise. Everything priced at reasonable rates and the only currency universally accepted throughout Hogwarts. Thirty bots, every flavor beans. We're sure there's something here you'll like. There is certainly a lot of things, so this is all like all the stuff that we gotta buy. Uh, this one, the stink pellets, and there's stink another pellets one. Stink pellets are a great way to stop prefects catching you. The non-luminous balloons, you these that. two are the only items that will actually respawn. The rest is just single purchase only. So for now, the only thing I wanna buy is the Bertie Bot's beanbag. Not explode. How much is this Bertie Bot's beanbag? 20 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Now we can carry 100 beans and we can actually buy the You can Alan now Morris carry cover. more Bertie Bots every flavor beans, Harry. Wonderful. There's actually a secret area here. Get through the Lumos. Fortunately, there's nothing interesting here. We can just crawl through here and then we're at the beginning of the reading room so we don't have to deal with Percy. Little shy. Okay Harry, it's been a long day. Really tired and I'm off to bed. So there's a couple of things that we could do. Of course, we could do all of the like the missing items already, but I'm not. I'm going to do that tomorrow morning, during the first day of term, because it's easier to do that during the day. First thing, first things first. There is quite some stuff that we still have to do tonight. We have to get the Alohomora Spellbook, we have to go to Gringotts, because believe it or not, there's actually Gringotts stuff already the first night. We also have to check out the hints in the library. And of course, you know, I want to do some uh, examples of shot making. Actually, I found the perfect place to, uh, to like, get more beans. I got like a really, I got like a secret spot or something like that, you know, where I can just go. It's right here. And there's probably, there we go, a little asshole. <laughs> You're not gonna get me another time. This little room right here has like a lot of these boxes and they give out a lot of beans, like a lot. Like sometimes they give out like 10 beans per time. They just keep throwing out beans. 
and every time he just exit out, every time he, he just exit out the room, they would just respawn. So it's really easy to get beats this way. And I believe there's like, uh, yeah, there's like one more. So let's just go ahead and spam the pendo on this thing. Oh, I got 60 beans. Let's get out of here. Open it again. But basically, this little room right here is going to be our main area to farm beans every single time. So we'll, we will actually be returning here quite a lot, like really a lot, like multiple times every school day. Because we need like a lot of beans. Not only to purchase stuff from Fred and George, but also to uh, you know, pay for all the games because all of the games cost beans as well. We need to go in and out one more time. Fire crab is. I just got lucky, I guess. Yes. I need eleven more. I'm one bean short. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Doesn't matter. I can get it like from other places. I don't need to get it from here. Oh, okay. I'll just go to the third floor. And just like flipendo like one of these things. What? No beans for me here? Oh, okay. That one, the one bean was the only thing I needed. Okay. <laughs> Great. So we got 100 beans. Time to go back to Fred and George, get the Elohomora spell book. And then we've basically bought everything that we need to get for tonight. It's also good to... Uh, what I personally do is to always buy things from Fred and George and to make sure that I spend all of my beans before I actually do things because you know with all these hazards in the castle like flying books and ghosts and whatever you will like always lose beans and it's just a waste of time and money. I'll show you again that there's really no strategy to this. Come here. So if you just run there and keep spamming A, as soon as you're near the portrait, you'll get in there. I've never been caught by Percy. Party people, I want the Alamora spellbook. How spell much book. is the Alamora spellbook? 100 Bertie Vots every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. The Alamora spell allows you to unlock mechanical locks. There are all sorts of places you'll be able to go now. Yeah, that's a big fat lie because the only thing, the only thing that it does is open a couple of doors. And if I, if you also look at this chapter, it kind of tells you like it, it, if you cast on certain locked doors, it will unlock them, giving access to the room or passage beyond. So something is telling me that they actually were planning to to allow you to be able to do more of this spell. Now it is time to go to the library, check out the hints. Oh. Flopendo Percy. Oh! <laughs> You sneaky bastard, I saw what you were doing there. He actually tried to locomotive mortis me. Wait, what? 
That was hilarious. <laughs> I never had that happen before. That was awesome. That is also like something that I really, really love about this game. You know, all of the different places that you can go in Hogwarts. You know, the the oh, oh I gotta go. <laughs> uh, all of the all of the ghosts wandering about. The eerie music, you know, the, the really threatening music, the sound effects, the ambience, the, the lighting, um, the hazards that are everywhere. It's, it's just really something that really makes this game such a blast and such a joy to explore during both day and night. Because, you know, you have all these, these uh, like, ghosts that keep, like, making noise and creaking stairs. And you know, and, and here you are, you know, you're being Harry Potter and you're like sneaking through the castle and like, it, it is really a powerful thing in this game. It's really well executed. Even after 20 years, I still think like this still looks like exactly the same. And this is just one of those key things that I just really love so much about this game. It's really awesome. Having said that, Let's go to the library. We don't really need to go to the library, but I just want to get this out of the way because there are actually uh, books that contain hints. That contain hints about the game. And it doesn't really matter when you do this, but since it's the, this is the first night, let's just get this stuff out of the way. I mean, why not? This is the only time that I'm actually going to use the no clip mode in the library annex. Because technically this is night zero, I don't even need to be here and it's not related to the game. Also, you know, Cool, cool thing, all, all of these books, you know, flying around in the library. Trust me, when we get further into the game and when we go to the more darker sides of the library, there will be like so many more books flying around. It's such an awesome sight. Let's go look at the books. So these hints, these there are a couple of books on uh, in the library that contain hints, and these hints will, unlike the Green Gods ones, will not change. So we just read these once and then we're done. We don't need to deal with this anymore. Not only on a broomstick, but mounted on the back of a hippogriff, these kinds of races are very different to the kind of competitions found at Hogwarts. A race around the castle grounds against another student may result in a winner gaining a famous witches and wizards cards. The use of a Vitamix potion is strictly against the rules. Okay, so basically this hints at us that, you know, we can actually race other students and we can actually win wizard cards this way. And that is exactly what we will be doing tomorrow. This one is about gnome throwing. Can evolve into a fascinating and rewarding pastime. Yes, for the wizard, but not for the gnome. You're literally like throwing him away. At Hogwarts, beating the gnome flinging records will result in the result in the reward of a famous witches and wizards card. So this is telling us if we go ahead and, um, you know, participate in these games, we will get a wizard card. Well, we're here. <laughs> Let's just break all of these, uh, break all of these jars, why not? Stink pellets, I got too many already. Okay, so we got the books here. There are not, like, books here, right? I don't think so. Okay, let's go to the other side. The gnomes infesting the banks of the lake should be thrown. Okay, this is about gnome throwing. And you can also, uh, you can also basically get a famous witches and wizards card.
this is not really a hint. I'm not really sure like as to what is this supposed to be. If all incendio braziers in a specific location are lit at the same time, a famous witches and wizards cards can be gained. This neat little trick is especially beneficial to collectors of these fine cards, but the point is there's nowhere in the game where this actually happens. Because incendio, we only use it like during the challenge and like once or twice afterwards. There's not really there there is no like way to use incendio to get more cards. Like except for like one of these uh braziers 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 whatever they're called uh there's like one in the library that you can get like into a restricted area like a restricted room you can get one one card like one single card so there's not really to this hint this is kind of useless hint and that's it the, these are all the hints uh found inside the library these will not change so we don't need to come back for them before we leave, uh, loving the, the library music. It's just really calming, soothing, especially like at night, it looks a bit weird. It sounds a bit weird, you know, you have this, this really serene music, but it kind of looks eerie in here. But especially during the day, you know, when there's like books and students and there's a guide like standing here by the counter, it's just really awesome. Let's get out of here. Next up is Gringotts. We gotta check out the books. Check out what's going on. What are the hints for tonight? Uh. Uh, so, by the way, this is Alohomora. But there are currently not any chests available right now that we can use. Uh, chests will basically only like be spawned during the day and they will despawn during the night for some reason like the ones in classrooms and whatnot, so Yeah, it's kind of weird A lot of ghosts here and also random jars. Here is the Gringotts portrait and the cheat should be on. Yeah, GBA link up is on. If I turn it off, I'll show you. It will not work. That's locked. When I turn it on, now I'll be able to go to Gringotts. This is like only one of the, the only like the only one cheat that really works. Open! That's got it! And it saves me the trouble of actually, you know, opening MGBA and doing a link this way because it's kind of annoying. And now we're actually inside Gringotts where we were like uh, checking out the exterior earlier. Every day when you come here, there will be like a, a, a chocolate frog waiting for you because it's kind of nice. There are four chests. This is Alamora chest. This is the Findo chest. We got a Scourge and an Incendio chest. So let's go ahead and open up Alamora. I've, I've got no clue which card this is. Number 77. Norval Twonk. Died saving a non magical child from a runaway Manticore. Post humorously awarded the Order of Merlin first class. Like, this is like. This is like deep shit, man. This guy does definitely. This guy doesn't only deserve like a folio magic card. He also deserves a statue, really. The books are here. Like they're like scattered all over these like stands so to speak and you can read them and these change every morning and every night at least for the first four days and four nights so let's check the first one stink pellets um, the stench of a single pellet will only stun those in range however and the effects can only last for a brief period of time that is basically the most important thing this, this one tells us about 
this one tells us about stink pellets. Like, isn't there another one? Am I overlooking things? I mean, I'm playing for a really tiny screen, so... I, I could be missing things here. Let me go, here's nothing, here's nothing. There's only one. So there's only the stink pellet one. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. So only one book, like normally there will be like two or three books, sometimes even four, depending like how crowded your night is. I got the beanbag, I got the spell book, I got the green gods, I, got, I went to the library. Get out of here before the before the jars hit me. And there's also like a lot of oh, a lot of ghosts here. The last thing that I kind of want to do is like show you guys. Did I save? Whatever. I'll just save one more time. I just kind of want to uh, show you like one or two examples of classrooms, and like how awesome they are at night, especially with you know this this really creepy and eerie ambient playing in the background. Especially now there's also like ghosts everywhere and all that stuff, it's really cool. Let's just go to Transfiguration. Hey man, what's up? So this is an example of a classroom. And as you can probably tell, like this pesky hand is back. He is like present in a lot of classrooms. At night only during the day he won't be there but you know like if you just keep walking in a dodgeful kind of way there shouldn't be a problem okay how am I supposed to get this bean and yeah just like sometimes yeah no cameras not working boom just use this so some of the issues in classrooms is that sometimes like one chandelier is properly lit and some is not because you know the back one is loaded properly into the ram and this one is not because if you can see you know it doesn't work like that okay so go up yeah better not like even when I go up you know it's not properly loaded only the one in the back Sometimes you can work around it, sometimes you can't. Uh, it's just, you know, the whole idea is that you get everything loaded into RAM. You could also just use no clip and then just no clip up so that, you know, everything, so that both chandeliers are actually inside of Harry's field of view, so to speak. And now, I could go ahead now, of course, as you can see, the shadow is like misformed here. So if I just go like this. Oh my man, come on. Fine, like this is fine. Now, unfortunately, there's another unfortunate thing like a camera limitation. We can slow down. Hold, hold on, I'm, yeah, my keyboard's good again. You can't, we can slow down like movement as you can see here, but we cannot slow down rotation. I don't know why, I don't know why this is not like, this is one of the limitations, like a really hard limitation of this, of, of the camera, of, of the camera, free camera tool inside of Dolphin. I really don't like it. This is why I mainly just don't do these like kind of shots with rolls and jaws and whatever. And I just mainly like add these inside of post-production because it's easier to do. And I can also like adhere to my own tempo that way because I just really hope they will fix it like in an update so that you can also like make this go slower and whatnot because at the moment the only thing that we can slow down like see it goes even slower and now oh, hold on. and now it goes faster and yada 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 I just find you know the, the classrooms are just really interesting places you know to make like really wide shots with 
Also, a uh, point of view that I really enjoyed doing, that I enjoyed probably more than I thought I would, was actually the teacher perspective. Like, I'm just going to make a... Oh. Like, if I just do it like this, and then I go down so that everything is loaded into RAM, and I just go sit here, and I look up, <laughs> zoom in a bit, and here we go. <laughs> Now you got the teacher perspective from the teacher's desk and you can slow it down a little bit. You can even like add a little bit more depth. Or of course, you know, you could like create height, uh, like add height and go forward at the same time like this or go back and lower the height, like combining, combining multiple parameters to do this. So yeah. Kind of interesting. The majority of all the classrooms are actually different. Uh, like most of them don't look the same. This one's locked like this. I'll get through there. A ghost. Yeah, like for example, I'll just no clip right here because otherwise I'll lose a lot of beans. Like this one is smaller. Like in in hindsight, it is pretty much the same uh, because it has the same desks the same chandeliers uh, sometimes it has like different uh, textures and, and little objects you know and there, here there's also ghosts it's smaller so there is quite some variation in classrooms of course not amazingly so if I have to add it like that But, uh, yeah. It's just, uh... I'm just kind of, like, positive... I'm, I'm kind of really positively surprised as to, like, how much... Ver ver like, variation they could add to all of the classrooms. Like, especially with all the ghosts going back and forth. Now, don't worry, these ghosts won't be here during the day. It will be a lot friendlier during the day. So let's just get out of here. And let's um, maybe do the third room, the third floor classroom, maybe. There's actually another third, third floor classroom besides uh, Dada. Here is the here is the hand again. Now we got a bookcase. Let's go up. But you know, just imagine all of these like classrooms. Especially this one is kind of interesting to make like a nice wide, wide angle shot here. I really like this. Let's hide the heads up display for a moment. Go a little bit higher. And you could really, like, also, you know, add the bookcase in here a little bit. And all together with all of these eerie sound effects and, like, the ambience and and the blue volumetrics coming through the window, you could really create such a tense atmosphere, even in, in like, even if all of these, like, classrooms are just basically dead. They're just basically empty. Like, nothing's happening in, in here. Which, which I find a really, really cool little thing to do. I do have to say, I actually, I spent quite some time in all of the classrooms making shots. I think I, I spent like a day doing it. Because believe it or not, there's actually quite a few classrooms. So here's a classroom. We also got the defense against the dark arts classroom. We got like those two on the first floor. The fourth floor has like one or two. Fifth floor as well. Sixth floor has at least one or two. Seventh floor has one. So yeah, it's really, really cool. Well, let's just go to the seventh floor one, two, for a final comparison. Here it is. I'll just uh, turn on. Here we go, because otherwise I was going to lose my beans. So this one is more lit. Uh, it has like the chandelier. 
It seems like there's another light source coming from somewhere because it's, it's more light than it's supposed to be. But here it has like some posters and some stuff. You know, all of the classrooms are like kind of like this. But you know, I've, I've actually I've had a lot, quite a lot of uh, a lot of fun with uh, with exploring them all. Wattle bird. I think it's time now to uh, end night zero, so to speak, because this is the night of arrival, and it's uh, probably time to move on to day one. So day one is going to be. The first day of term at Hogwarts is going to be extremely busy. Uh, we're going to get flying classes. We're going to have to do all of the lost and found. And we have to do also all of the mini games. And of course, there is also a lot of additional cards that we can fix uh, now, that we, uh, now that we're doing the day because all of the, the chests with cards in there will actually spawn inside of the classrooms and other places on the grounds during the day. So let's go ahead and... And... Oh, that's the wrong menu. Let's end the day right here. Like, we did a lot today. Look at our to-do list. This is probably the longest to-do list in the game. Let's end it. We're currently at day one. Uh, I kind of forgot something to show you. And now my question is, did I save? Yes or no? I believe I did. I believe I did. Yes, I'm going to reload the game because there's one more thing that I really want to show you during night zero. Here we are. Okay, awesome. For this, we need to go to the grounds. Let me unlock your mind. Uh, because this is actually, remember that we had like our argument with Snape just now. This is actually the only night during uh, the entire game that Snape is actually outside. Outside the grounds. And with the help of uh, no clip, basically, like so, we can actually go to him. Okay, you can already see him walking there. We can actually go to him and we can talk to him. So let's just do that. Hey, what's up? Get to your common room, Potter. To your Why? common room. Now. And he will just keep talking to you, basically. Get to your common room, Potter. Get to your common room, Potter. Mr. Potter, you are testing my patience. Go to your common room immediately. Get to your common room, Potter. <laughs> this is just to funny. your common room. Now. Mr. Potter, you are testing my patience. Go to your common room immediately. To your common room. Now. To your common room. Now. Okay, I, I guess you get the get point. Get to your common right, room, right, 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 Potter. Right. Basically, the, if you want to explore, like, and he will just keep on, like, moving around. So normally... Normally, you would not be able to actually uh, explore the grounds like this because uh, this game uses some kind of a teleport system. So now, you, technically speaking, you would be able to actually walk everywhere on the grounds, but they just implemented the, the transport system to make it a bit easier. Okay, let's uh, say hi to Hagrid here. You want to be careful out here, Harry. Guy trashes sometimes roam the grounds at night. Big, horrible dog spirits. You better oh. have your Luma spell handy to scare him off. <clears throat> this is kind of interesting that, that Hagrid is actually saying this because I've never heard him say this, first of all. And secondly, there are no guy trashes here. I'm sorry. I mean, I've played this game for so long. I've never seen a single guy trash 
on the grounds. So this is probably what I'm thinking. This is probably a line that he would say in the PS2 version because in the PS2 version you're able to actually roam the entire grounds like without the teleporting and there's also like guy trashes around here. So it's kind of interesting to hear like this line made it into the GameCube version. If I were you, Harry, I'd be running along to the Let's Gryffindor Cauldron. Let's see if he has anything, in, anything else interesting. If I were you, Harry, I'd be running along to the Gryffindor Common Room. If I were you, Harry, okay, I'd be running along okay. to the Gryffindor Common Room. And now when we go back, uh, it will say Hogwarts main entrance. And for some reason, Ron is back, which is weird. Uh, that should not happen. So when I go to Herbology Greenhouse... Oh yeah, okay, so... If you go to the Herbology Greenhouse, you can actually see Snape roam the grounds as well. But then you would not be able to, in most cases I guess, to talk to him. And this is the only night that Snape will be roaming the grounds, because this is night zero. One final thing, I have to go a bit higher so I'm actually not being teleported. This looks extremely cool, you know, you actually have the castle and you can actually see this at night. Unfortunately, if I remember correctly, like later on in the game, if you get like your Nimbus 2000 and you can fly around the grounds, I believe you can only do this during the day, I'm not really sure, but I've never really been able to get this to where I've never really like went into this at night. So. At this moment, the only thing we can do at night is just, you know, to fly around in no clip. And from here, you know, from the front, the castle looks actually pretty, really cool, like really pretty cool. But if you go further, like half of it is not even loaded into RAM. And that is also for like a really simple reason, because we are not supposed to be here at this time in the game. And so half of the castle is not even loaded into the like into the game's memory. I kind of thought it was like an interesting fact to show you. So let's see, can I like... Okay, and so now I can also kind of free roam like I would on the PS2 version. What's up? To your common room. Now. I'm gonna unlock your mind. And then later, once I get like close to the gate, uh, it will teleport me back, I believe. Or not. Oh, it actually doesn't. Okay. That's kind of cool. Oh, it does. What? Make up your mind, game. <laughs> have yeah okay so Ron is not here to or is he here no okay so I don't know why Ron was outside but it was just like a one-time thing now we're really going to uh, end the night or end the day in this case and go to day one the first day of term and here we are the Gryffindor common room. Also, a nice little detail here that you really never actually get to see with the regular game camera is like this, this detail to the roof, all this wooden detail in here. It really looks cool, like especially if you look up. The nice combination of like uh, all these different kinds of stone with wood, you know, it just really, it just really looks great. Also, here is uh, Harry's uh, Harry suitcase because it has HP on here. Morning, Ron. Do you know what class we've got first? I heard there's flying. You heard right. I'll meet you downstairs in the entrance hall. Okay. It's the first day of term, and we actually have to do a lot, like I said before. We have to do all the lost and found, we have to uh, uh, go to class, we have to do mini games, we have to... Uh, I, of course, there's a lot of different 
shot related things that I gotta show you guys. At this moment, I'm just going to... I'm just going to stick with the lost and found. So this way we can actually uh, already basically finish our first goal, which is awesome. Let's just get all of the, the wizard cards that we can get right now. The first one is the potions kit bag. Lost potion file case. Last seen in the vicinity of the herbology greenhouses. Okay. Let's go. Basically, you go to the notice board. You... Um, you read what you have to get, and where that person might have lost it, you go there, you pick it up, you bring it back to the notice board, you get 10 house points and a wizard card. Ah, feels good to be back and to see, you know, all those uh, students on and about. So, why are you as a slitter and why are you, like, next to here? Now the first one shouldn't be too hard. Uh, the potion kit is in fact inside of the herbology greenhouse. Hello, Nick. What's the matter? Uh, a matter of no importance. It's just that Sir Properly Decapitated Podmore won't let me join the Headless Hunt. Apparently, they only accept huntsmen whose heads have completely parted company with their bodies. I'm sorry to hear that. Not to worry, young Potter. As I said, it's a matter of no importance. Then why bring it up, then, if it's a matter of no importance? We have to go to Herbology Greenhouse, and this will be a nice little link to the events that will take place there during uh, night one at Hogwarts. So I will not be really focusing on any of the shots right now inside of the greenhouse. Uh, I'll just quickly show you around there, but the main uh, shots and the main, you know, the main events will take place there actually tonight. Like now is day one, so and those will happen during night one. Sorry, Ron, you gotta wait. <laughs> I just always find it kind of fascinating how everybody waits for Harry to show up to class in order for class to start. <laughs> like sometimes I'm... Most of the time I'm just doing all of the like Lost and Found and the games, uh, the Neville's games and uh, getting, uh, you know, all of the, the beans and stuff like that. I'm doing all of those stuff before class, so I always just find it kind of funny. Like they're all waiting impatiently for Harry to show up. Like, where's Harry? And he's like, oh yeah, whatever, he's just looking for beans again. So this is uh, the big greenhouse, Herbology Greenhouse Free. It looks pretty cool, especially, you know, the dragon statues up here. I really like those. You can probably tell already. Now we cannot enter uh, the greenhouse yet because of the four clumps here. Four clumps. Uh, that will be here for there tonight. And look what's here. Potion skip back. So that's the first lost item we got. We gotta go all the way up there. In order to uh, to get our wizard card. Up. I think Gilderoy Lockhart is an absolute witch magnet. Whoa, is the word witch magnet even a real real word? Let me find out. Let me bring one. So what do you gotta say? I don't care what the other girls say. I think Lockhart is far too full of himself. I totally agree. Good that we agree on that. Is a slittering boy. Dude, why are you like here? Are you trying to. You're literally like not even a meter away from the fat lady, and what? You want to know the password? State your purpose. 
wattle bird. Now we bring it back. Boom. The next one is the Gryffindor merit badge dropped while wandering around the grand staircase. Okay, this one is actually pretty close by, so we don't have to go that far. Number 45, Dunbar Oglethorpe. Chief of Quabble Quidditch Union for the administration and betterment of the British League in its endeavors. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Because it's right here. <laughs> Literally across the portrait. Here we go. Let's go back. Now it just uh, only costs us like one single loading screen, so that's great. Wattle bird. Here we go. Telescope dropped walking from astronomy tower somewhere around the staircase. If found, please return. Number 46, Miranda Goshawk. Famous spellbook writer. Actually, the writer of the spellbook that we use right now. Oh, I can't go to bed. I just got off. Starting to get on my nerves, man, really. Stop it! Nope. I will not not stop. Alright, for the next one we need to go to the first floor. So at least we don't need to go to the grounds. Oh yeah, remember this? some magic I can do some magic of my own boom <laughs> we got custom paintings remember oh, here's first floor okay here we go I got the telescope Now we gotta go all the way up again to the seventh floor. Bird. And that's free down. Now we gotta find Neville's Toad. Trevor. Again, Hybrology Greenhouses. Okay. <laughs> Number 48. Salazar Slytherin. Co-founder of Hogwarts gave his name to one of the four Hogwarts houses. Okay. Uh, I gotta bite the bullet here and I gotta go back to the Hogwarts greenhouse. What are you guys looking at? Why aren't you not wear why aren't you wearing like your yellow robes? Um Hi. <laughs> Kinda getting on my nerves here. So you probably have guessed it by now, but there's another thing that I absolutely hate about this game. I absolutely hate it to bits, and those are the loading screens. I got used to them, of course, after 20 years of playing this game, but 
Trust me, I mean, I don't even want to know for how many loading screens I've went uh, ever since we started. The chest is here, by the way. It's really easy to miss. Number 14, Fool But The Fearful. Famous for being so cowardly, he never ventured out of his house, died when a defensive charm backfired and the roof fell in. Like, remind me again, why does this guy got a Folio Magi card, really? We got people who protected muggles from, from dragon attacks, and then we got a guy who just died because a spell backfired on him, his own spell. But yeah, the loading screens, they're, uh, they're a pain. They're really a pain. They last, again, like 5 to 10 seconds. That's not the problem. It's just the amount. Like, if I want to go from Gryffindor Tower... Oh, here's the tote. Whatever. There we go. Don't worry, I actually had to flip in the whim in order before I was able to get him. Just like a chocolate frog. So first, you go get a loading screen when you get out of the Gryffindor common room. Then, when you want to walk from the grand staircase to the main hall, then if you want to go to from the main hall to the grounds, and then you will get a fourth loading screen if you want to go to the Quidditch Stadium. So you actually get four loading screens. That's ridiculous. It's just you know I I understand. It is two is a 2002 game, and I mean it already looks extremely magnificent you know for 2002 i mean the, the graphics hold up extremely well even to this day it's not like i'm playing this I'm, it's not like i'm playing this and i'm looking at it and i'm like oh boy this age this didn't age well no it aged like a fine wine this game i'm mean, seriously but it's just the amount of loading screens is uh it's just annoying and yes, I know, hardware limitations of the GameCube and all, but... Uh, what can you do? It's, you, you can't have everything, I know, it's just annoying. So if you thought that you that we actually had Not like uh, an easygoing remaining list, uh, like an easy list of the remaining items, we'll think again because next, for the next item we gotta go to Hagrid's hut, so we have to go outside again. But that is actually the last time we need to go outside to the grounds. So let's get on with it. Measuring skills. Number 49, Eladora Ketteridge. Witch who discovered the use of gillyweed when she nearly suffocated after eating it and recovered only when she stuck her head into a bucket of water. Let's just also just get all of the other wizard cards that we can already get right now, like the ones in classrooms and whatnot. Since we're now here on the seventh floor, we can just start here and just go lower. That should be okay. So there's one on the sixth floor. I thought so. Uh, there's a scourge uh, chest. So this one wasn't here like last night, but they only spawn like during the day for some reason. Here's the Defindo chest, that one will be for tomorrow, and here's the regular one. Number 31, Balfour Blaine. Es establish the Committee on Experimental Charms. Okay. What? Like, you guys really, like, what? I'm gonna 
I'll more your ass if you don't like to speak up. There should be two cards on this floor. No way through there. Nope. I can agree to that. Ah, here's an Alohomora chest. So this is one of the few chests that we can open with Alohomora. Oh, no. Number 79, Oswald Beamish. Pioneer Goblin Rights. And here's the other one. <laughs> oh, they're actually both in the same, they're, they're both in the same classroom. That's interesting. Number 88, Celestina Warbeck. Popular singing sorceress. Okay, so pop stars also get their cards. Okay, I understand. Now we should go to the secret passage. Can I crawl into here? Yeah. Okay, so this is like a tricky little thing because, wait, wait. Okay, so there's nothing here, okay. Here, here is it, here it is, okay. Here's another one, like what the hell man? And he, he's actually guarding the chest, how cool is that? Number 43, Cyprian Yowdle. Only Quidditch referee ever to be killed during the match. The originator of the curse was never caught but believed to have been a member of the crowd. Wow, damn, that's really... Ow! And that was a sneak, that was a, a cheap shot, bro. Really, seriously. Hey, bro, what's up? Is there anything else here? No, nope. all right, I'm getting out of here. So I went through here. Here's another chest. Another wizard card. Number 92. Xavier Rastrick. Xavier Rastrick. Flamboyant wizard entertainer who vanished unexpectedly while tap dancing to a crowd of 300 in Painswick. It was never seen again. Well, that was... That is the most random stuff I've, like, read all day. What's here? Oh, here's the bean room. Okay. Here is a... a Defindo chest. So I probably can't open it yet. That's for tomorrow. Okie dokie then. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry about that. Third floor time. Uh. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here's another card. Number 98, Dymphna Firmage. Dymphna Firmage, this is actually our first duplicate card, so that's great. We can actually use that at the end of the game to swap for something we don't have yet. That's awesome. Let's go to the same classroom where we were earlier. Should be, uh, here it is, hidden in the corner. Number 73, Mopsus. Soothsayer vanquished the Seer culture. what the Seer cultures in a contest of the powers. Okay, I, I've got no clue, I'm at a loss.
we're making quite a big dent in our uh, wi famous Witches and Wizards cards collection. There's two more to get here on this floor. And then there is one more downstairs. And then basically the remaining cards that we can get for today are just the ones that we can get from the, re the, the missing items. Can't get through there. That one's locked. Alright, so here's a Scourge one. Is there anything else? Yeah, this is... This is Incendio, I cannot use it yet. Nothing here. Well, then there's only... One classroom left. Or two. Hello, Mora. We meet again. Number 87, Thaddeus Thurkel. Famous for producing seven squib sons and turning them all into hedgehogs in disgust. Okay. That's just random, man. That's just so random. There's another one. Number 91, Wilfred Elphick. First wizard to be gored by an African irrumpent. We got a nice little link to Green Gods because the final card that we can find for now is actually in the Green Gods portrait room. And then why don't we just go ahead and go to Green Gods because there's new hints waiting for us. I'm not, you know that. Here we go. That's great aim, Harry. Number 76, Myron Wagtail. Lead singer of the popular wizarding band, the Scissor Sisters. I mean, the Weird Sisters. Open! That's got it! As, yep, there is another chocolate frog here. So we open up the Alamora already. Is there any book here? No. There are like two books right here. Like one over here. And there's one over there. So now there's actually one more compared to last night. So this is the first one. When swerving a broom with high velocities, a certain loss of control may be experienced. A small reduction in speed when entering tighter turns reduces the chances of hitting any obstructions. Okay, so these are some of the hints, some useful hints for us during our flying practice later. As Madame Hooch has always encouraged the pupils at Hogwarts to return to her flying lessons at any time of the day. Okay. That was not really like a hint, like a necessary hint at all, but okay. But that one was, uh, the one they gave about the tight corners was really, it was really a good one. I like that. What is it with you guys, really? You want more coin? <laughs> They're just looking at me like, where did you come from? Where did you disappear off to? Oh. Stop it! Nope. Can't get through there. 
Let's go see Hagrid. Apparently, he's not there. Here it is. If you can, like, look through here, you can see it in the bush. I can't, but here you go. Measuring scales. It just sucks, you know, that you can't go inside, like, and, and visit Hagrid. Like, you can only see him sometimes during the night standing near his house. That's the only time you can see him. Now I gotta go away, all the way back to return that thing to his rightful owner. It's your fault. Oh, stop it! I feel like I'm like a really abused, like Harry is becoming abusive only and it's only been the first day of school. I hate Harry! That's my name. Right? Hi. What's up? Wattle bird. Go, here we go. Another item to its rightful owner. Measuring of a wizard's hat while taking a shortcut in the grand staircase. Well, okay, that means it can only be like in the secret passage. Number 50. Musa Dora Barkwith. Composer of the unfinished wizarding suit, which features. Sweet. Composer of the unfinished wizarding suite, which features an exploding tuba. An exploding tuba. Its performance has been banned since its last performance in 1902, when it blew the roof out of Eckley Town Hall. So we got a brave woman who nearly suffocated after eating gillyweed, and we got some jackass who thought it was cool to make an exploding tuba. And this dude, seriously, this is, this is so, this is so beautifully random sometimes at times. But that's also like the charm of this game, you know. You also really gotta appreciate that, of course. I really like that. So apparently, I'm not the only one who actually found out about this little shortcut here. Should be here. Yep, here we go. Wizard's hat. You were probably too busy getting beans, like getting too many beans for free, and then you forgot your hat. That's normal, my man. That's normal. So that's item number six. Four more to go. Luckily, we don't have to go outside anymore. They're all in the castle from now on. Oh! Wattle bird! I can't believe we're actually already at it for like at least four, four and a half hours. <laughs> I thought like I I thought like I was I I said like ah oh, yeah it's probably going to be around like eight to nine hours the entire stream and now we're almost at like four and a half hours and we're not even like past day one yet <laughs> so can you imagine how long this stream is going to be eventually one pair of dragon hide gloves last known location entrance hall okay number fifty one. Ethelred the Ever Ready. Famous for taking offense at nothing and cursing innocent bystanders. So it just sounds like just sounds like me. It's just like me, this guy. Died in Gal. Gal Gal? Gal? I don't know what that means, but okay. He sounds like he could be like my uh, great great grandfather.
normally I'd say like maybe it's an interesting thing to take the shortcut, but you know the shortcut doesn't really take me anywhere. It takes more time to actually take the shortcut than the time it would, you know, just to take the stairs. So it doesn't really matter. Guess what? Loading screen. I'm just going to save for the heck of it because we've done a lot of progress and I don't want to lose it. I'm still here, I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> if that's what you're thinking. Uh, yeah. Getting with ghouls could be anywhere in a classroom, okay? Number 52, Felix Summerby. Inventor of cheering charms. Whatever, dude, whatever. just automatically go to the left classroom so and then I always hope that it's in there but it's turns out I was right so wattle bird Holidays with hacks. Fell out of an L package. All right. Number 54, Gaspard Shingleton. Celebrated inventor of the self-stirring cauldron. By the way, where are my... Oh, okay, I did get house points. Okay, great. I was just wondering, like, normally I would also get, like, a little badge, you know, that would show me, like, the house points. I thought, like, maybe I didn't get them yet because I officially haven't gone to class. Like, maybe I first need to go to flying class in order to get the points, but probably I first need to go to flying class and, and, and then if I, you know, did this kind of stuff, I would probably get, like, the little badge showing up, but... It works at least, you know, I got all of the house points, so it's not for nothing. So don't worry, we'll be coming back here.
at the library during uh, during the day during day one to you know to to experiment and to do some live camera manipulation. There is a lot of places uh, in the castle where I actually want to do some camera manipulation tests later on after we uh, after we finish all of the remaining stuff that we need to take care of. So the book should be yeah book should be here. It just kind of sucks, you know, that I can't I can't just take on all of the quests like all at once and then just go around and just collect them all and get like 100 points and 10 cards at once. Like I've been on the second floor so many times today already. Those people are looking at me like, what the hell is this problem? <laughs> Bird. Last one, Lee Jordan's giant tarantula, also in the library, okay. Number 55, Honoria Nutco. Founded the Society for the Reformation of Hags. One more lost and found in order for us to, <laughs> to finish our first goal. I'm really excited. But before we can do that, we have to sit through five more loading screens. <laughs> Oh my man, it's ridiculous. Six, because we also got to save. Hey guys, bye guys. I know exactly where that little bastard is. I found him so many times. That I, I don't like, here it is, here you are. I just find it kind of interesting, you know, that for the, for the frog, like for Neville's frog, it actually kept jumping around. But for the giant spider, for the giant tarantula, you're actually just having like a static uh, spider here. You're just using a static spider, while later in the game you're actually using animated spider, so why not? Like, do it like that. Okay, I can understand that maybe people are afraid of spiders. That must probably be it. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense if it was, you know. Apparently it's already 12.45 in the, in the wizarding world. Because I probably took that long. <clears throat> For some reason, the clock is always at 12.45. For, I, I don't really know what the reason to that is. Could be random, could be like a, a reason sitting behind it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, Harry, I know you're tired. I know you're tired. Bird. With that, we have completed our first goal. We have also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've also gotten like an additional twenty, twenty, a whopping twenty famous witches and wizards cards. And we also got our first 100 house points, so we really made a lot of progress. I'm really, I'm really happy with Gideon how it all turned Crumb. out. It's really great. Plays bagpipes with the popular wizarding band, the Scissor Sisters. Okay. So now we should have 100 points. Yeah, great. 100 points. Awesome. That is wonderful. Let's get out of here. And of course we got a safe. This 
save one more time to be sure. All right. With that said, boom. See that? We've actually, now we've also marked our first goal to be complete, which is awesome. It feels really good to actually have it completed. <laughs> now with uh, like, with a calm mind, we can move on to the nest to the to the rest of the game. We really got to go to class. That's what we got to do right now. But for some reason, my um, why is this not working? All right. Here we go again. <laughs> Bit of a false start, actually, but. Uh, it turned out that I used the wrong input, and now my left Joy-Con wasn't working. If Harry. Yes, now it's working. Yes, it's working now. Awesome. I think it's uh, really time to go to class. I think everybody's like waiting for me. I spent so much time finding wizard cards and uh, returning lost items that a lot of people are probably like, where did Harry go? Why is he not in class with us? So the first class we have this term is flying with Madam Hooch. Um, really underrated teacher, in my opinion. Good morning, furballs. Anything uh, interesting happen? No. All right. Bye. <laughs> I just, I just like, I just love it sometimes. You know how, how like emotionless they're just looking at you, like, <laughs> like, yep. You're Harry Potter, I know who you are, like, what's up, Harry? Why you keep standing in front of me? Just keep walking. Hi, Ron. Come on, Harry. Let's go outside. Okay, let's do that. We gotta go to flying, cl to flying class. We need to actually, you know, we need to uh, learn how to fly, because apparently we can't do that yet. <laughs> but uh, a refresher course is always good. It's always nice to have. So on our right, we we got Neville, who is hosting all of the games, but uh, that's for later. We first go to flying. Although you all apparently learned to fly last year, the apparently is directed at you, Mr. Longbottom. <laughs> a brief refresher course is in order. Potter, let's see if you still have that natural flying ability. First of all, I want to test your broom control. Fly up and hover a few feet from the ground. All right, let's do that. Now, fly back down to the ground and hover above it. Oh, my... what? My broom has now been configured. Like, brooms need configuration. <laughs> All right. If you want to alter the configuration at any time, you can do this from the options menu. Okay. Excellent. You seem to have lost none of your natural flying ability. Let's move on to something a little more difficult. You see before you a course comprised of enchanted rings. What you must do is to fly through as many of these rings as possible in the correct order. Are you ready, Potter? I am ready. Again. Let's go. Flying. Let's see if I can actually still do this. Damn. I'm going pretty fast, actually. Nice. Right. I got house points. Now for the examination. Ten house points. Where a grade will be awarded depending on how well you complete the course. You must fly through as many rings as you can in a set time. I've created several new enchantments for the rings, causing some to move and others to shrink as you approach them. When you're ready, Mr. Potter, you may begin. All right, examination time. Here we go. 
My personal record has been at 38 rings. I've never actually been able to get up to 40, so let's try to break the record now. I really want to g give it a try, but apparently I was always stuck at 38 rings because some of these assholes keep moving like this, and then I miss other rings. Like, see, here we go, I already miss a ring. I probably didn't, but I don't know. These moving rings are really annoying. Okay, so far so good. 25. Stop moving. See, uh, I, I didn't miss anyone. That's, that's really good. And, yeah, I thought so. I'm losing rings here. Alright, come on. I missed another one. 37. 38! Oh, I just made it. <laughs> display, Mr. Potter. You receive the highest grade, a distinction. Well done. If you want to practice flying, Mr. Potter, come over here. That was exhausting, Harry. I'm off to bed. See you later. Ron, you fucking asshole, you didn't even do anything. Every time Harry breathes, Ron is like, oh my god, I'm so tired, I need to go to bed. You know? <laughs> this is this 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 is like really a running gag in the game. Like every time, end of the day, oh, I'm exhausted, I'm going to sleep. Okay. 38 rings. I was close to 40. I still have not uh, improved my uh, my high score. I, I, I always get 38, I can never seem to get higher than 38, but at least we got the distinction, so that's good. That's the highest grade that we can get for flying. I need beans, I desperately need beans. So let's go ahead and let's get some, because we need beans in order to play Neville's games. Hope you, hope you have some more beans for me because <laughs> I surely need them. Alright, I got 30 beans, let's get out of here, do this one more time, then I got around like 60 beans, and then I should should have enough for, especially like during the first day of term, like they shouldn't really charge too many beans for the games, so we should, we should be more than safe, in theory that is of course, with 60 beans, I just hope that that really is enough. But at least, like in the worst case, if I were to miss a couple of, uh, of stuff, or like I, uh, I would fail a couple of games, I would be easily able to, you know, just restart it without having to go back and get more beans, which in my opinion is really annoying. We got 60 beans, that should be more than enough. Let's go, uh, let's go gamble our money away. Hello, my name is Harry, and I'm a gambler. Long bottom. What do you got for me today? Gnome dunking, gnome tossing, and racing. First I'll just do gnome dunking because that one is actually for free. Here we are. So I gotta beat Fred's record of 200, that shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh my god, 514, that is number like a new 18, record for me. Uruk the Oddball. So we got number 18, Uruk the Oddball, highly eccentric wizard who's famed, among other things, for wearing a jellyfish for a hat. 
Okay, I need to, do I need to say more? No. I also want to have a jellyfish hat. All right, guys. No, that was it. See you tomorrow. <laughs> that was the first game already. That's great. Let's go to the next one. Let's do the hardest one first, gnome tossing, because I really suck at that one. It's also really cool that every time you're, you're playing a couple of these games, you actually spawn in different places on the castle. Like, for example, now we're here, above the flying courtyard. And, you know, technically... These places are also kind of interesting, you know, for uh, for making machinima in the... Um, in this game in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Seekers because these games are actually often like forgotten about because you know you're just here to get the wizard cards and move on but considering since you always spawn on different places during every day you can actually just go here and you can have here you can actually also have a look inside the inner courtyard here which is really nice I like it like I really like this change of pace that they have every day the gnomes wearing records here to be beaten Harry why don't you have a try? It'll cost 10 beans. 10 beans, okay, that's uh, that's okay. Let's go, I need to get a score of 100. So, let's go. Let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, that's 20. Not bad, not bad. Because normally, I it always takes me until like at least a second try to actually hit something. Ah, no. <laughs> this is what I mean. Okay. I'm gonna lose so much beans. I'm not kidding. Okay. Okay. I need to hit the jackpot with this one because otherwise I'm not going to make it. I have to redo it again. Ah, uh, never mind. Never mind. I'm that afraid sucked. you didn't beat the gnome throwing record, Potter. Try again, Potter. This time you might break the gnome throwing record. It'll cost 10 beans. All right, let's gamble again because I don't know when to stop. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Are you headbutting me? I don't accept that. Boom. 20? Why not? Why didn't it go through the, through the blue one? This is exactly what I mean, like, with the depth sometimes. Like, it's really hard to see when when I hit it and when not. Yeah, never mind. Oh, man. Well, guys, this is going to be a long stream. <laughs> I can tell you right now. Boom. Oh, come on, man. Okay, I need to have a, a banger. I need to go out with a banger here. Oh, I did it. Always. Always. At the, at the last gnome, I always manage it for some reason. <laughs> Number 15. Paracelsus. Paracelsus. Very little... Very little is known of this mysterious wizard, and why did you give him his own Folio Magi card? Awesome. Now, let's go. Uh, racing time. We got free races per day, so also an additional free cards to get. What's up? Fancy race, Harry. Sure. It'll cost five, five beans. beans. Okay, that's fine. I can spare that. That's no problem. Let's go. Let's do this. Luckily, these rings don't move. I really don't like the, f the moving rings because especially sometimes the corners that I have to take are really extremely sharp and then, you know, then they just kind of screw me over. I don't like it. Here we go. 
on it first. Holy shit, it's going fast, it's going too fast. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I didn't expect, I didn't remember the, the race is going this fast. My broom is out of control, what do I do? Oh my god, this is hilarious. This is going way too fast. I don't even need roller coasters anymore. I got, I just got, I just have a broom, you know? We won! Number 22, Sirs. Sirs. Lived on island of Aia, expert at turning lost sailors into pigs. Nice. I won another I'm race. I'm confident I'll beat you this time, Harry. Let's have another race. It'll cost 10 beans. 10 beans, okay. And then probably the next race you'll charge 15, so I got enough. That should be fine. Let's go. At this point in the game, you know, any anybody's broom seems like faster than mine. It's just hilarious. Did you just hit me with, well, with well, your broom? Potter, have this wizard card. Number 24, Adalbert Waffling. Famous magical mathematician. Well, let's go ahead and do the final race as well. I'm confident I'll beat you this time, Harry. Let's have another race. It'll cost 15 beans. 15 beans. beans. Sure, let's do it. Oh, this is probably the hardcore race, like it goes really, really fast. Oh my god, because all of the rings are so close to each other. This is like the sprint. I like to call this race like the sprint, because all of these rings are so close to each other. Whoa, 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 whoa. Roller coaster. But I made it. Okay, luckily. Well done, Harry. Here's a wizard card. Thank you. Number 25, Perpetua Fancourt. Which who invented the Lunascope? Can anybody tell me what the Lunascope is? I don't know. So, that's great. We also beat all of the games for today. And that means that gameplay-wise, like quest story-wise, we're actually done with day one already. But I want to go ahead and... Um, I want to do a couple of uh, camera manips here now that it's actually during the day. So the first thing I wanted, to, uh, I wanna, uh, first thing I kind of wanted to like discuss is the lack of flying shots, basically. So if you if you've watched, uh, if you like, if you were, were to watch Trigon, then you would probably see that there's rarely like any flying shots, like Harry flying, maybe a couple. But uh, there's, there are no shots of like the flying practice and of Quidditch. And that is, first of all, it is really difficult to film right. Although I could do camera manipulation, you know, if I could just do this and, and whatnot. It doesn't really matter, I can just do this. And I can move the camera a little bit and then it looks like a first person. But uh, I cannot get rid of the rings because they're game objects. Especially if you have to fly through those rings, um, you will see them. Also, during Quidditch, uh, which uh, you will most likely see later in the game when we have Quidditch practice and matches and all that good stuff. 
it's really hard to make shots because the, your broom will just constantly keep moving, no matter what you do. That means like it's really impossible to make static, good-looking shots here. And also, you know, you got uh, beaters keep beating you up. So although I really wanted to implement Quidditch, it was just basically mad, imp mad impossible at this point. Also, the second reason why I didn't record uh, uh, anything like broom related, like uh, like flying and Quidditch, is because of the alternative reality that I wanted to make. I wanted to I wanted this, this reality to take place shortly after the events of the game, so the ring shouldn't be there. And the, the Quidditch should also like Quidditch was a bit hard. Of course, Quidditch is part of that, but it was just impossible to do. Uh, eventually, you know, like we like I said, we we will get our own broom, and we can actually cycle around the the grounds, and we can make some shots of our own. So that is actually perfectly usable. That's no problem. But you know, because of because of how unfit the flying classes and Quidditch classes were. Uh, I decided not to uh, use these for, basically, for machinima making. Okay, let's start off with the grounds. We're already at the grounds. I'm not going to the Herbology Greenhouse just yet. The Herbology Greenhouse is here because uh, we will actually need to go there pretty soon. And then I'll just uh, give it, you know, the, the, the attention it deserves. Let's just turn on the custom textures real quick and slow down the camera holy crap it goes really really fast so of course you know i made a couple of shots here and you know this this place is like awesome for making extreme wide shots like you could just go here you could add the bush if you wanted to for a little bit of depth of field interplay and you could even that's not zooming in this is zooming in you could even zoom in a little to make really really long shots and while slowing down the camera you could actually also make a rider or like a back rider past this hedge while you're actually looking at Hogwarts. This this place is really like the perfect place to make shots like this, the Herbology Greenhouse. Also, sincerely, because there's no there's so much space where you can walk here. There's just so, so much space. <clears throat> of course, there's like a lot of shots that you can make. Uh, there's also shots that I made at flying practice, but I'm not really going to cover those. Um, Let's just go to Quidditch pre the Quidditch Stadium real quick. If I were to go here, like for example, I could technically, oh, I couldn't. Maybe I need to go higher. Like, you know, you, could, you can't actually see the, the Quidditch Stadium here, but sometimes, yeah, I just I just can't go there because then it will just teleport me back to the entrance. Later, if we get our own broom, we cannot actually fly there because uh, there will be an invisible wall and Harry will say I'm not supposed to go there or something like that. Here you get a really beautiful lakeside view. So if I go here in first person mode here, especially you have like the lakeside view. Here's where we actually were throwing the gnomes earlier. And here you have a beautiful view of the castle. I could technically like, you know, go ahead like this, speed up the camera a little bit. I actually, I made this shot as well. Like, go up a little bit, uh, look up, zoom in. And now you have the same kind of shot like before. You got the, ed the, the, the edges, like the top of the trees against the top of the Hogwarts Towers. I thought it was really like a nice visual uh, <laughs> joke here. You know, like you got all of these... All of these, uh, all of all of the highest points of the trees against the highest points of the towers. I thought it was an interesting thing to do. Especially also, you know, at night when you are uh, when you are doing this, when the lights are on inside of the castle, it's uh, it really makes for a really beautiful shot. Really interesting as well. Let's go quickly to Hagrid's hut, to the Forbidden Forest. Here, there are a couple of things, like you could, you know, you could focus on Hagrid's garden. Apparently he has radishes. Those are radishes, right? And carrots. He's so self-sufficient, I like it. Oh, I, and it's not properly loaded into RAM. Let's me, let me move here. You know, because of his the location where his house is at, you 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 can 
if you move it a little bit like this. This is actually one of the shots that you've probably seen in the pre-stream video. Like I just move it, I, I just move the camera really, really slowly towards this house. And, and that's it. Further than that, there is not really a lot to uh, go on and about here. Because, you know, we cannot, we cannot go to like that, this, this door over there for some reason. I could if I no clipped, like if I just go like this. And then when I uh, get out and I just uh, drop, I can like do some things. I'm not really sure how far I can go. Maybe I can go there. Oh, this is actually the Quidditch. Uh, is this the, yeah, this is the Quidditch stadium. Oh, here was the door. I highly doubt that this door will actually do anything, but... This is probably some weird entrance door. Yeah, it doesn't even do anything. Is there anything in here? No, it's just <laughs> it's just void and darkness here. So technically, you could actually go out of bounds and you could like make additional shots here. The like I said, the texture of the teleporting, the teleport system inside of the game is optional. It's uh, like they impl implemented that so you don't really actually have to walk that far. But if you if you use like the this kind of system, you can actually just walk past it with no problem. Here you will even get a more wider shot of the of the castle. Unfortunately, like that's ma mainly and mostly what you're getting if you're taking shots from the grounds towards the castle because like Hagrid's hut is like there's only so much that you can see. Like if you just go here, you could like do a little sneaky point of view like you're looking through through, through this uh, fence over here, like you go through here and you go to there, but it's, it doesn't really have a lot of depth. It kind of makes it look for us like a flat shot, except if maybe you go here. But there's not really a lot of interesting stuff going on here. The main, the main attraction uh, on the grounds, I have to say, is the castle and also the herbology greenhouse. Um, but again, I will go over the herbology greenhouse in just a bit, like uh, tonight, because we there is uh, work we, that needs to be done here. Now, the closer we get to the castle, of course, I can make a couple of... Uh, I, I can actually go a little bit closer with my camera as well. If I activate the camera here. You can, um, you can go closer to here. You can actually see this. You can go in between here which also makes for a really, really dynamic representation of the castle. Which is awesome. This looks really, really cool. I like it. Um, of course, you've probably already seen it and guessed it, but like we're only able to actually go, like uh, venture the grounds from one side of the castle and from the front of the castle. We actually cannot really like reach the back of the castle yet. And that's also something really interesting. If you go out of bounds and you go here, like half of the castle is not even loaded into the ram. It's all just black mass and void. <laughs> it doesn't even work because it's not, you know, we're not supposed to see it at this point. And later on when we get our own broom, we can actually like venture these places and actually take better shots also from the back side of the castle. So for now it's a bit lackluster because you know we can we can like we already have some stuff to do like we can we we could like make some great looking extremely beautiful wide shots of the of the grounds here which also work in their own right like I made a couple of these like this one this is this is really awesome I like this especially if you add a little bit of tilt to it like so maybe I maybe have to go a little bit here because otherwise you see out of bounds this this works like this this absolutely works this works also really really well but you know you want to see more and you want to be able to actually go really crazy with the angles and that's uh, of course the broom is not going to give you more angles 
but it is going to give us more places where we can venture to. But more on that later, of course. So that's the grounds. Uh, I also wanted to go over some uh, camera manips inside of the, the entrance hall for a bit, because there's also some interesting stuff that we made here. What's up? Okay, now that I got all of these cool looking wizard cards, I better go ahead and save. This this entrance hall is like pretty vast. Like, look at how high the ceiling is and everything. Now there's there's like not much to do. That's of course a completely different thing, but there's like a couple of things that you can do here. Uh, the most notably, actually one of the very first test, test shots that I made with the game, with Harry Potter and Chamber Secrets, that was really like, I made that like, uh, I made that specific test shot like a year ago or a year and a half ago. This is actually the first one that I make and that is like, if you, like the, uh, the shot over the railing, so to speak, like if you go like this and if you slow the camera down like really by a lot, like so. If you go a little bit more like this, you can actually like have a beautiful looking over the railing shot where you can where you can see like uh, like the entrance hall in a really really dynamic fashion, or you could like go even like be, be more creative and you could just go uh, like do another. I don't know what it is with peeping tom shots today, but apparently I seem to like these. Like you just go through here, if you also like slow down the camera again, like so. You just go through here, and then boom. Let me go up a little bit because let's try this again one more time. The main idea, you know, behind the shots, behind these shots is of course first that you make it look uh, creative, experimental and cinematic, but also dynamic because we're also working, like I said in the previous stream, um, we're also working with depth of field. And although that this game does not contain depth of field, we will need to be adding it later. Like, of course, if you want to make a complete cinematic representation, then of course you will just need to add a depth of field as well. And you need to be able to actually do that. And then you also kind of need to know like what kind of shot you want to make and you know, like uh, where do you want your depth to be and whatnot. Also, this, this, this window here, beautiful window. There's like so much cool stuff that you can do with the window. Let's uh, fly over here. So I got it like in my sight up here uh, move up a little bit. It's, it's a really beautiful window, really, especially like when you like venture the castle at night and then you see this thing, it's like, it's like so freaking beautiful. Especially if you like going a bit crazy here, you add some, some tilt, you create some depth here with the pillar. Like you could technically just keep zooming in, keep coming closer and, and moving away from the pillar. Or you could, uh, you know, move away from it, go down, and then you're actually inside of all of these beautiful light rays. Talking about light rays, there is also like, you can also just make shots inside of the light ray, which is also beautiful. I've actually made a couple of shots where you're actually inside of the light rays. And they're kind of interesting. Like so, let me like be in front of it. Okay, just ignore Harry for now, but like this, you know, especially you could technically experiment a bit with, uh, with rotation. And uh, that makes it look really, really cool. Oh boy, what's going on? Here we go. <laughs> I, I forgot that if I use the tilt too much, then it can actually like go crazy sometimes. And of course the four hourglasses being here, you could like try something here. Um, like so, so that I have all four of them in sight. Move a little bit towards here. Go down a little bit. 
It's a bit of a long shot, literally, because it's uh, kind of hard to have all of them, like, properly in here. But you could. Yeah, it's, it's hard to actually have all of them in one shot, in one frame. But, you know, that's also really something worth experimenting with. I tried, I couldn't really get anything interesting here. But uh, I'd reckon, you know, like this, of course, you, you won't be able to see the Gryffindor line. You will see the Badger from Hufflepuff and you will see Ravenclaw and Slytherin. But this is like an ex a perfect example of, you know, of, uh, of a shot where you can like fool around with some cool looking depth of field interplay. To, you know, to really steer the focus of your viewer to that specific subject that you want them, uh, want them to look at. All right, uh, I'll uh, release you, Harry, <laughs> from from your prison, so to speak. And um, let's go to the grand staircase here. Grand staircase looks absolutely gorgeous during the day, during the night as well. But I just like it a bit more uh, during during the day because of all of the daylight, the beautiful yellow orange hue, tintish like daylight that is kind of is getting through. Okay, so I kind of have to like remember how did I make this shot again because I was standing here. This is uh, also a shot that you've seen in the pre-stream video. I think I, I'm trying to recreate it now. Let me open up the, let me turn on the custom textures. And I have to like combine uh, the, of course, the free look camera and also, yes, here we go. And also like the, this, this was a bit hard of a hard of a shot to like pull off because I have to press R to open a uh, first person view. I have to go down so that Harry actually looks up and then I have to manipulate the camera. See, it doesn't, it's really hard. I have to like, no, oh boy. For some reason it is kind of hard to do it. And then like so. And then I can just manipulate the camera even for more a little bit. And here you have it. Here you have like a perfect overview shot of the grand staircase. And what makes this really look cool and dynamic is, you know, of course, the all of the all of the volumetrics coming through all of the windows. There's so many windows here. Like there's uh, four over there, and there's like four more over there, and there's like uh, I think there's uh, three, six, like twelve or so, all the way up there. So that makes it look really, really cool and for a really cool effect. Of course, on the grand staircase itself, you could uh, go ahead and you know fully focused on the paintings because there are quite a few of these. But then the point is you actually need to make sure that you're able to see them. So these shots don't really give you a lot of depth, like maybe a little bit. But like if I were to do it from here, you rarely see the contents of the paintings and it all looks a bit weird. You also kind of want to see who's on the painting. But then of course the shot will become a bit flatter. But you could go ahead and let me go back a little bit, like so. And you could just slowly move up a little bit. And you know, and have like a beautiful crane shot showing all of the paintings on the wall in the grand staircase. Because I believe this is like the only real, the only real, real place in the castle where there are so many paintings in like in a close vicinity. You know, I, what I did a lot on the Grand Staircase was just to press R for the um, for the first person mode. And I would just, you know, record and stand still and just look around like this, like I'm doing right now. I'm just literally standing and I already have like an interesting uh, thing that I can record. Or, you know, just look down because there's also a lot of cool stuff. We actually came from here. <laughs> this actually looks like um, this actually looks like the, the the loading screen shot. You know, if you go if you go to the grand staircase, 
I've been trying to recreate it like for a really long time already. I really want to recreate it. I think this is like pretty close. But I'm probably on the wrong floor. <laughs> because here it's a bit darker. Now I could go ahead, I could show you a couple of classrooms again. There is not much to them. I'm not really going to do a lot of camera manipulation in here. But uh, you know, these also look different during the day. Uh, for starters, the hand is not there anymore, but you've probably seen that already while we were uh, while we were looking for uh, famous witches and wizards cards. So now at least during the day, we can like feed our gambling addiction in peace without the hand, you know, interrupting us and keep kicking our asses every time we run around the classroom. Beans are like everything in this game, man. If I don't if I don't need them for my gambling addiction, then I need them to buy stuff from Fred and George. This classroom actually has quite a few beans in here. Why is there like a like a magician's hat in here? <laughs> like ta-da, I'm going to What? Is that a what? Is that a rabbit, like, coming from a hat? You're literally teaching these poor bastards how to get a rabbit out of, like, how to magically take a rabbit out of a hat? I thought this was, the, this, I thought this was, like, defense against the dark arts, like... Of course, this is a different classroom, but, I mean, you, you guys are just not doing this basic stuff, right? That's stupid. So, this is defense against the dark arts. Oh, locked. We can't go in there yet. We will be able to in a short bit, but not now. So yeah, I'm not really going to bother a lot with the classrooms anymore because you know, you, you've seen them, you know what they're like and you know what you can do there. There is one thing that I wanna go to next and that is uh, the library annex. And also I wanna show you a bit of a hidden, a little bit of a secret in there actually that uh, not a lot of people know about. So here we have it, you know, here, we, here, here we've got the library annex. So I've always kind of thought that this was a really interesting place, you know, for filmmaking, for machinima and stuff like that. Especially when I was working on Trigon, I've spent quite some time trying to figure out, you know, what kind of shots could I make. But, and you would probably think like, you know, there's so many of these desks, so you could probably make some really cool... Uh, stuff in here and uh, you know and edit it and make it look all crazy but it was actually pretty meh it was not as cool as I thought it would be because if you let's just go here and if you zoom in here like quickly really really quickly you if you look at it you already start to lose your sense of direction like what the hell am I looking at you know especially like this like this is not too bad but Although it's really experimental, you know, and, and my project is supposed to be experimental, but it really is not, it's like at least not somewhat visible like what this is. This looks like some kind of tr like throne or something. And it, it's really hard to figure out what it is. I've always also tried to look at a bit of the details, but there's only like, like one book on here. Or like a candle. So it was not really that interesting to do anything with. And also the spaces here are pretty narrow. So that's why I kind of ended up going with like the wider shots in here, like making it look like, then I kind of, instead of that, I put emphasis on like how big it was here and how much stuff, how many people could study here. Also the clock is still at 12.45, like for some reason it's what it is. I, I kind of want to focus on this door. Oh, locked. And it is locked. The door is locked. And something tells me that this this door was not supposed to be uh, like it was never not always supposed to be locked, but they just did it. This door uh, will lead us to the quest that we need to do later in the game, and this is that is the only time that this door will be open, and it's only open during the night. But if we go into no clip mode and we go through here, we're actually not supposed to be in here right now. But you can actually see that this area, although we're only able to ever visit it normally in the game, like during the night, this actually this area actually also has like a day cycle, 
which is kind of cool. I never knew that, and it's, it's really a waste that... Uh, actually, I didn't really, like, figure this out until I started to do some digging in the game of my own. It's, it's really a shame, you know, that you're not able to go to this part of the library during the day. Which just really sucks. Okay, so this actually leads us to the library restricted section. I'm not going in there because I might screw over my game. Actually, if you were to go in there right now, the game would automatically turn to night because that area only has like a night, a uh, little night area where you can go to. But this is like, this is like really, really cool, really awesome because you have this whole extra place, this whole extra room the second annex, basically, so to speak. That's what this is. And you're actually never able to see this during the day, like in this kind of perspective. And that is why it's, uh, that is why I thought it was, that is why I thought, really thought it was a must, you know, it was a must for me to add this to Trigon because the majority of people would actually never see this. There is also a couple of other places where you can go uh, during the day instead of only the night. Like for example, Fred and George's shop at the end of the game at day six. Normally Fred and George are only open during the night. If you go during the day, the, the portrait will just not let you in. But on the last day of term, uh, that is the only time that Fred and George's shop is also open during the day. So you can actually also see what their shop looks like during the day. It does look really cool, especially, you know, if you, if you focus. Let's uh, go up a little bit so things actually get loaded into memory. So. It looks like a maze. It really looks like a maze. Like so. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So. Can I stand on here? Oh, I can't, okay. Can I get through here? That door's locked. That door is locked. Oh no, I'm locked in. Okay, then I'll just do this. And now I'm out again. So that was a nice little detail that I kind of wanted to show you guys. Now what we got to do is get beans. We need a lot of beans for tonight. I really recommend, you know, to just go ahead and max out your beans during the day. It's, it's just a lot easier and you don't have to deal with all of these hazards all the time that, that, that can like screw over your plan like ghosts and books and all that whatnot. Like I never really knew that this room would give me so many beans. And I and I didn't know that until like probably like a, a couple of weeks ago when I recorded like when I wanted to do the pre-recorded version of Epic Slater Point of View Talk. That is actually when I figured this out, like when this that this room just can, can give you that many beans so easily. Because in the past I was always like going through all the classrooms and flying on my broom and flippending all the objects and whatnot. But this just makes it a whole lot easier. Like this is a whole new level. Hey bro, I need more beans. There we go. There we go. 100 out of 100. Awesome. Well, that's that. We actually completed our very first day of term here at Hogwarts, which is uh, awesome. Worked out pretty well. We did the games. We went to Gringotts. We got all the beans that we need. Yes, right? I got 100 beans, 100 beans. We already, we already went ahead and we have 190 house points, which is ridiculous. I think that's also like the max that, I, that we can get right now. Because I got 100 points with uh, with the like 10 points each with the with the missing items, I got 10 points. I think I got 10 points for like the first flying thing, and the rest of the points are like for my examination. So then it's time. Let me check one more time. There's really nothing else. No. Okay. Then we're gonna end the day and watch the house point ceremony unfold. Gryffindor. Oh. 
Hufflepuff. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Ravenclaw. Ooh, they're getting pretty close already. Slytherin. Yeah, Slytherin. Look, look at that meter go, man. How fast it goes. Oh, I'm still in front, luckily. I got four, four more points than Slytherin, so that's great. Let's trigger our first night quest. Why? What's new? And I suppose you want me to get him out. Okay, so I kind of don't really like Hermione in this game because she's really passive aggressive. Like she's like she always like lets Harry talk first, and then Harry with his big mouth just keeps saying like. Oh yeah, maybe I should, well, if we did this or if, if I did this, then we would be able to achieve the goal. And she say, oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's why go ahead and fuck off and do it. You know, that's just, I just, I don't like this passive aggressive style that she's like doing. Neville? How did you end up back there? <laughs> but I just got you your toad. <laughs> well, can't you get him out of Yes, Hermione. <laughs> And where am I going to find one of those at this time of night? The Bunnage Greenhouse 3 in the grounds. Except, to get him, you're going to have to find out how to pull up four plants. If you go to the library, there's an excellent book by Professor Lockhart. That will tell you how to do it. Okay, so I've got to go into the library on the second floor and get a copy of Lockhart's book, and then go out into the grounds and find my way into the Herbology Greenhouse to get the Severing Charm. Yes! <sighs> what did he say? So, let me get this straight, Hermione Granger. You know what spell we need? You said you tried everything, and you know what charm we need. And apparently you can't go, you know where the spell book is, but apparently you can't go and I have to go. Therefore, this flippendo has your name on it. And by the way, Neville, seriously, I got you your tote like an hour ago. I literally found it in the Herbology Greenhouse. And like you lost him again. Hey, hey what's up? Time to spend those well-earned beans at Fred and George's shop. Tonight we're going to get the stink pellet holster and the balloon holster so we can carry more balloons and stink pellets. How much is this stink pellet bag? 20, 30 bucks. Oh stink every pellet bag, beans. sorry. I'd like to buy that. I said please. stink pellet holster. Now you can carry more stink pellets, Harry. Yep. I can collect, I can like carry like 30 stink pellets now like instead it. of 15. And then a balloon, balloon holster. holster. What does this cost? 20, 30 bots, every flavor beans. Sure, I'd sure, like I'll buy, buy that. that. Please. With the balloon holster, you can carry loads more non explodable luminous balloons. Awesome. So. Okay, so I've I actually got the holster so the holster for this one and the bag for the, of the holster for this one and the bag for this one. So now I can just go ahead and buy more additional balloons and stink pellets. How much is a pack of stink pellets? 20, 30 bots, every flavor beans. What? In Diagon Alley, they were like four sickles. I'd like to buy that, please. You can use stink pellets to get out of all kinds of nasty situations, Harry. Stink pellets are a great way to stop prefects catching you. But I didn't tell you that. But... what? Like, literally, in Diagon Alley, there were only like four sickles for a pack of ten, and now there are like 20 beans for a pack of ten. I, 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 I don't really think that's, a, that's like that of a big deal. Non-explodable luminous balloons! What do they cost? 20, 30 bots, every flavor beans. Sure. I'd like to buy that, please. Let's just buy everything. Non-explodable luminous balloons are great for distracting people. 
Oh, so I get like 10. Okay, I'll just get another pack of balloons. I'd like to buy that, please. And after we finish the quest for tonight, I'll just go ahead and get people. some more beans so we can buy, so we can max out the stuff. Like to know about, just ask. Yes, when will you guys shut up? That's what I want to know. La la la, I'm Harry Potter. Look at me making magic. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, never mind. Non-explodable luminous balloons are a great way to distract the prefects. Leave it out, Harry. Leave it out, Harry. Okay, I just wrote down that I have to get more beans. We have to find the Horror Club book, we have to find the Severing Charm, and we have to rescue Neville from behind the tapestry. Now let's go ahead and do that. So technically we could go to Gringotts right now, but I think I'm just going to get go ahead and get the book first before uh, before going to Gringotts because it's more, you know, on our route, so to speak. Come. Oh, what's Come this? To me. was that that Harry boy is a basilisk hello there young Harry where are you off to in such a hurry hello Nick I'm just doing something for Hermione it's urgent so I'm afraid I can't chat for long not to worry young Harry you cut along now and I'll see you some other time good night was there like a typo in the subtitles I thought it said he said like hello Harry instead of hello Harry I'm not really sure. Maybe I will have a look at that again later, but I, I could have sworn I saw that. All right, let's go into the library and then I'm going to create a safe state because I can't really lose house points here. Then let's go ahead, hit full screen. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to use balloons. I'm sure there's someone sneaking around here. I must have been hearing things. Yep, you're just hearing things. <laughs> ah. You know, you're just hearing things. That's normal. All right, the book we need is right here. Marauding with Monsters with by Gilderoy Lockhart. This is about the Horror Clump. Basically, this is telling you how to do the horror clump thing. This is uh, gnomes, these are imps, fire crabs, guy trashes, and that's it. This is, those are basically the majority of the enemies that we get here. So we, we found the horror clump book. Now it's time to go to the herbology greenhouse. So there's actually a little bit of herbology in this game. <laughs> and that is really something that I don't like about this game at all. I really don't like it that Herbology was pushed so far to the background in this game. Like the only thing you do is just, you know, just a simple little quest and that's it. Huh? So I thought like by the time that he's able to turn around and actually like like cast his spell on me, I would already be out. So that works. Awesome.
Oh, actually, did I have to refill my potion vial? No, it is uh, it is still completely full. And in the worst case, you know, there's also like a, a cauldron with Wigan oh, with Wigan well potion in the herbology greenhouse, so it doesn't really matter. Hey, that's not nice. Let's go to Green Gods. Open. That's got it. Tell that portrait who's the boss. Of course, we get a chalky frog, a chocolate frog here. There is one book over there, there's one book over there, and another one there. So actually, tonight we got three books. Let's start with this one. I've always used the Flipendo knockback jinx to progress through a field of puffer pots while always keeping a safe distance. Okay, so basically this hint tells us to use Flipendo on the puffer pods and we should be okay. Technically, we could open this chest later because we've got the Findo now, so we'll we'll actually do that later on after we get the spell. The Divindo Severing Charm can also be used on large pieces of material such as tapestries. Simply cast the spell at the tapestry and it will be severed at its connections and fall to the ground. Okay. That's good to know. This technique involves the utilizing the Flipendo knockback jinx to stun the creature long enough to pick it up. Unlike Puffer Pots, Horror Clubs do not, not explode when hit by Flipendo. Okay, so kind of generic hints here. But uh, especially, you know, the fact that we had to stun the whore clumps and then we were able to get it out is actually uh, pretty helpful if we had if we didn't read the book, of course. I just hope the uh, I just wanted to say I hope the, the ghosts won't hit me, but <laughs> Four, you're four points behind. Welcome to the Herbology Greenhouse. This is actually, in my opinion, this is one of like the prettiest areas of whole of Hogwarts. Also, you can just really see like the amount of care that was put in here. Like all of the different plants that are going here. And there's actually like a couple of greenhouses that we can explore. Here there's nothing much, but let's just go in here. Like, you know, you got the gardening material standing here, you got all of the plants, the beautiful plants growing from the walls. The, the, these different colorful, like really eerie or and sometimes, you know, exotic looking plants growing from here like, you know, it would in the movie. So I just really think they did a really a great job on creating the Herbology Greenhouse. If I have to say like something that was really good about the grounds, then Herbology greenhouse is really it. It's, it's really that good. Oh, there's like three free greenhouses that we can explore besides the main one. So this one has like uh, this looks like the, 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 the white plant that you can buy at Ikea. <laughs> I've actually had this plant before. Some giant plants over here. Of course, you can already see, like, if you take a quick look at all of the stuff that is here, you can already see, like, what, what you can do here with camera-wise. we got mushrooms here. There's not much going on around here, but, you know, there's still... Uh, we got a cauldron with Wigan Well over here, so if we didn't... If, like, if we ran out, we could have also just go here. There's also one in the library. It doesn't really matter. I'll just show you like one or two camera manips while we're here. It is uh, obvious, it's really obvious that there's like a lot of stuff that you can do over here. There's the spell book that we need. But uh, one I particularly liked, I actually I make, made that one inside of here. Let me turn on custom textures real quick. And uh, go into no clip mode here. Now I'm inside the plant, that's not what I need to do. 
Actually, I made a bit of a rider shot from inside the greenhouse while looking into the main greenhouse like this. And I just probably should zoom in a little bit so you actually have more, it's a bit more experimental. Like we know you can actually see we're in some kind of a greenhouse because we have plants in the foreground. But it makes it look like a lot more interesting if we bring it a little bit closer. This is really something that I tried to do while I was uh, inside of here. You know, like, s s normally, if you were to just regular play this game, like regularly, this would just be a small place where you would just go inside quickly, have a look around, and go out of there. You know, because this is just basically set dressing for the main greenhouse. However, um, you know, it can be really, really useful for filmmaking. So things that are not useful to, like, for, uh, from the gaming perspective can actually still be really, really useful for machinima perspectives. And this is one example of them. Because we're inside one of these extra greenhouses that don't really serve a lot of purpose. But, you know, l this way we can actually, like, really give them a, an interesting, like, role within our projects. Also like the little set dressing here, like with, uh, if I can just get it right, like here. Like if you move a little bit like so, the set dressing here in the, in the, on the bottom left really, really works. It just really helps you to get that fiber. This is a greenhouse with the, with the, with the pots and, uh, and all of the gardening stuff that is around here. All with all of these additional objects, you could really like go ahead and, uh, Focus on them, like for example, I could like, you know, you could really make interesting compositions with these, especially if you move a little bit down, you move up and you go to the right. In fact, you could still make like this kind of composition, and you still have some plants in the background, really selling the idea that this is an ombology greenhouse. Of course, the main bread and butter is like the herbology greenhouse free. Uh, but before we go there, I also, the last example that I wanted to give are these dragons on top, especially if it works. Yep, yeah, here we are. Uh, let's go up. Especially these dragons, because they are such a great little detail to the greenhouse. But they don't really, like, serve a lot of purpose, because you're just here to get the book, and that's the only purpose that the greenhouse serves. I mean, you can... Of course you can go here during the day and during every other night and you can just explore to your heart's content. But, you know, th this, although this, this thing really adds to the aesthetic here, th it's also like something you would just literally look over. Especially if you just like go like this, slow down the camera by a lot and maybe add a little bit of uh, like tilt here. And this is also like a perfect shot to use with, uh, with depth of field interplays. And this is also really one of those perfect examples where game objects that you would normally not use and normally not really care about, except for saying, oh, that looks pretty, you can actually use these in machinima. Really beautiful. Okay, let's go, um, let's go do the main quest here. Let's get rid of these four clumps. Luckily these, uh, these whore clumps don't grow back, like the puffer pots would grow back if I flippendo them, but this one, they won't come back, luckily. And that's it. So technically, so the funny part is like, I believe here or in the back there was like a broken window, I believe it was here. Like there's a broken window, and in the PlayStation 2 version of the game you actually get inside the greenhouse by... Um, here it is, actually by uh, by crawling through a broken window, I believe, in the PlayStation 2 version. But in the Xbox and GameCube version, you actually go through the door. That's kind of cool. Welcome to Herbology Greenhouse Free. 
There is quite some cool things going on here. Like we've got this huge tree which branches like go in and outside of the greenhouse, just like in the movie. So I thought it was like a really nice little detail here. Like the Herbology greenhouse in the Harry Potter film also had like a branch sticking out of the out of the out of the roof. I always did like this really colorful plant here. I, I implemented it in quite a few shots. But um, yeah, like in terms of let's just go with the, the hard route this time. These are puff pods. And now we can go here and get the spell book. These plants over here are actually venomous tentaculas that we have to deal with later once we actually get the spell. There's also some cool interesting things happening with these later. But yeah, this is the Herbology Greenhouse. I initially thought that I kind of wanted to focus on, you know, on the tree that was going out of here, that was growing out of here. But it didn't, it didn't really like turn out to be that interesting when I did that initially. Like this, because it was kind of weird for some reason, it didn't really add anything, it looks kind of flat and weird and dull. So I just kind of focused on the entire, like on the entire greenhouse instead, like so. I just went ahead and mainly what I did was creating like wide overview shots of this, especially later on with the venomous tentacular now being active. Uh, you know, there's a, a really a lot of cool stuff that you can capture with a wide shot. And I went ahead and kind of changed that. Where the hell are, is the tentacular actually? Oh, here he is again. Actually, you can also like change it with uh, with close-ups of the various beautiful plants that are in here. Like for example, this tree, and you've you've got you've, of course you got the IKEA plant again. Uh, you can also like make a great shot. Like let me show you real quick. Like covering a multitude of plants, you could actually go a little bit wider, like so. This is maybe too wide. I don't know. I, of course, you always gotta adjust the FOV manually, so it's not always that good. And now you just have, this is also r looking really nice, like you got the venomous tentacula on the right, you've got this weird purple plant on the left, you got like two bigger trees, then you've got the puffer pots here, and then you could actually move like this. Having that said, let's go ahead and uh, get the book. Here it is, spell number three officially, but for us it's spell number four, if in dope. Severing severely, severely severing successfully, <laughs> severely severing successfully, I don't know, <laughs> I'm trying to create like longer sentences with this. Anyway, this is, uh, this is the fin though severs ropes and tapestries for example can be cast on certain tapestries and uh, also students of herbology can also use the findo to sever plant stems and roots this is important that we know that actually for years when i played this game i read this and i just kept thinking like it was not interesting it's like oh yeah whatever you know for the herbology but there's no real herbology in this game actually we, are, we have to do a little bit of herbology right now in order to get a wizard card. Because what most people would do right now, like now that the venomous tentacula becomes active, and you can see you know, all of its tentacles, that's also one of the, one of the shots that I like, made for the pre-stream video. Like especially if you move to here, and you go a little bit in, towards the tentacles here, 
and you zoom in pre that's uh, zooming out if you zoom in really far like so you get like a really cool creepy looking shot you know with all of the ten with the tentacles moving waving on and about all right so what do we got to do actually I've never really even realized this, but we're actually doing Herbology now. In in the game, like when I was playing this for so many times, this part, I was just like, oh yeah, whatever, I'm just doing this. And just cutting, you know, cutting his tentacles and that's it. But no, we're actually doing a bit of Herbology. And all, unfortunately, this is the only Herbology that we, will, that we will be doing inside of the game. Okay, so now we've stunned him. And now we can actually pick him up. And we can throw him out. Okay, so he will keep uh, the doing it. Alright, so now he's stunned. Grab him as well. And throw him away. And here you go. You actually get a wizard card. And interestingly enough, this is number 72, Helga Hufflepuff. Number 72. Helga Hufflepuff. Co-founder of Hogwarts gave her name to one of the four Hogwarts houses. Interestingly, because, of course, Professor Sprout being the headmaster of Hufflepuff, and she is the main teacher of Herbology. So I thought that was a cool little link here to Hufflepuff. Also, we got, like, another ten cards, so our stamina increased. But a lot of people, actually, after getting the spell card of the, the spell book, you know, myself included, for a really long time, you know, I just, like... I just, uh, you know, just cut the cut the tentacles, you know, because I thought like I had to cut them in order to make a way for me to the door. But actually, you had to like cut all of these to get a wizard card, and I never really realized that until recently, like a couple of years ago. But that was a really nice little touch. Like there was not really a lot of room for herbology in this game, but this was like the only herbology-related thing. And what we did was kind of cool. So Herbology was much more involved than the other games, like in Philosopher's Stone, for example, you actually have like an entire spell challenge revolving around the Findo. And I thought, although I like Chamber of Secrets better in most cases than uh, Philosopher's Stone, I do have to admit that, uh, that Philosopher's Stone is a better game in that regard, like in the spell challenge department, because the spell challenges are much more involved. They, like you have to replay them. And Defindo actually has its own like complete spell challenge. You have to do like uh, you also have to fight uh, bigger tentaculars and whatnot. So that's really cool. Mushrooms? Oh hi. Because now that we've got this beautiful spell, the Findo, we can uh, open up the Defindo chest that is found inside of there. But first I'm going to quickly save. Ow. Oh, I didn't pay attention there, I'm sorry. Here we go. Open! That's got it! You tell him, Harry. You tell him. Unfortunately, we only get one chocolate frog per day, so of, uh, per day and night. Let's open this chest. Number fifty-eight, Glover Hitworth, inventor of the pepper up potion cure for the common cold. If that thing works like a charm, then really give me a couple of bottles because I could always use it. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Okay, we're done with Gringotts. Let's, uh... Let's get out of here. For some reason, like, the camera is acting a bit weird like this. Like, it just won't center behind me. I don't like it. Let's get back to the common room and free Neville. Come. Come to me. Let me rip you. Let me tear you. What was that? Oh no! 
true. Mr. Potter, what on earth is... Oh! What's happened here? I don't know. I found him like this. Follow me, Potter. Harry was taken to Professor Dumbledore's office. But we office. didn't even Professor, do anything. I swear I didn't. Interestingly, Dumbledore's office has a day version and a night night. version of the map. You've been wondering whether I put you in the right house. Of course, we can also you manipulate it. Difficult to place, but I he's stand he's by daydreaming I right now. You and we could also, like, move around in his office. And he also discovered Forks, Professor Dumbledore's pet phoenix. Fascinating creatures, phoenixes. They can carry like for example, here are all his books. heavy loads. Their tears have healing powers, and they make highly faithful. Like we could look at his paintings. And of course, Professor Dumbledore himself. I know you're not the attacker, Harry, but I must ask so you. So he, he's got like a scribble you'd like thing here. <laughs> You have to think about it for that long. <laughs> Let me rip you. Nah. I'm just a he hearing things. No need. Anything at all? No. There isn't anything, Professor. Very well. If you're sure. Good night, Harry. Night, Professor. Alright, so now we're back on the third floor. So what I wanted to say is that uh, Professor Dumbledore's office is no way through there. out of bounds, like throughout the entire game. We, you cannot get in there. The only time you can get in there is now during a night cutscene. So you see his office during the night and at the end of the game where you see his cuts, his office during the day. They are still levels. And you can still actually you know, manipulate the camera in there, but it's just annoying because every couple of seconds the the camera will just move. Wattle bird. Caput Draconis. Oh wait, that was last year. Hermione Granger. This is the spell that you couldn't find. Phew. Thanks, Harry. I thought I was never gonna get out of there. Nice one, Harry. Well, all this excitement has worn me out. What excitement? You didn't do anything. Oh, Hermione! Nearly had this nick has been attacked, and I... I'll... I'll tell you in the morning. It's, I think it's time to find some new friends, Harry, because Hermione doesn't give a shit about you, really. What is this? I didn't know that I can ask cheeseburgers also on Hogwarts. So for our efforts, we get a third uh, wizard card. It's number 65, Gondoline Oliphant. Number 65, Gondoline Oliphant. Famous for studies of life and habits of trolls, clubbed to death. <laughs> My God. In the Cotswolds while sketching. Wow. Before we end the night, I want to go ahead, like, how much do I need? Okay, I need 40 beans. So we're going back to the magic bean place. I would like, from now on, I'll just call it the bean bonus room. Like, like, like it was in the PC version of uh, Chamber Secrets, like the Harry Potter games. Like, if you did something or if you did something, excelled in something, you actually get, like, a... Uh, Entrance to the bean bonus room and within a specific time frame you had to get as many beans as possible I still remember that Probably it had something to do with all the challenge shields or something. I don't really remember, but It was cool. I like the bean bonus room. I really missed if, if, if I still need something to bitch about this game Where is the bean bonus room? But for that matter, you know, I could also bitch about all of the Harry Potter games for the GameCube and like for for 2000 home consoles because None of these seem to, like, have it. Alright, there's probably a fire crab in there. 
Yep. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's good. He just went the other way. Oh, I can. Uh, oh no, the the ca the the Findo chest is not here during the night. <laughs> Okay, that's the first 10. Oh. That fucking bastard! I just need like... Yeah, like this. This is fine. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, Bastard is back! Oh, this time I'm lucky. Like, I don't understand what kind of class you have to make studies like this, but okay. Come here. Uh, no thanks, I'm good. Hello there. I need some more balloons and steam pellets. Explodable luminous balloons. What do they cost? 20, 30 bots, every flavor beans. Oh, did I did I have to did I get too many beans? I'd like to buy that, please. Oh, I can actually buy some more. Luminous balloons are great for distracting people. Like I maxed out my balloons, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. So I can actually buy a wizard card tonight already. So we're, we're in front of schedule. How much is a pack of stink pellets? 20, 30 bots, every flavor beans. Awesome, let's go. I'd like to buy that, please. You can use stink pellets to get out of all kinds of nasty situations, Harry. All right, uh, let's get this card as well. This Beatrix Bloxham card. How much is it? 30, 30 bots, every ah, flavor beans. Ah, it's 30. Okay, I don't have enough. Okay. I was celebrating too soon. I, f I could have sworn that this was like 20 or something. But the rest... Feel free to spend as long as you yeah. like it. So I maxed all of this out. Um, the only thing left is like refills for the balloons and for the stink pellets. The potion vial is 100 beans, right? How much is this Wigan Well potion vial? 130 yeah. bots every flavor beans. All right, 100. So, okay, I'm, I'm, I don't have enough beans, whatever. Then let's go ahead and end the night right here. Let's go to day two. Gryffindor. Yep. Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw. You guys did a good job. You want a pat on the back? Slytherin. Jesus Christ. Everybody's at 189. My god, they're all one point behind me. What, for being good boys, you just get random house points? Seriously, that's how the world works. Time for another class. But before we go to class, of course, there's a lot of stuff we gotta do. Hello, Hermione. Do you know what lesson we've got first thing? If the fact is the dark hearts, Harry, the girl will look hot. I can't wait. Hmm, me neither. I'll make sure the third floor acts on the defense against the Dark Hearts class. Calm your horses, Hermione. It's just Gilderoy Lockhart, really. So, we have defense against the Dark Hearts class on the third floor. Well, we'll just arrive late in style, of course, <laughs> by first going to do other things. There are a total of five additional famous witches and wizards cards that we can get right now now that we've got the defindo uh, charm and now all of these uh, chests are available to us so five additional ones i don't think i need to refill my potion vial no that's all good so we should be able to just go inside the class without any fear let's uh, quickly make a save here and let's go reel in those cards first one is on the sixth floor And is it here? No. Oh, here it is. <laughs> it was hidden. It's uh, behind uh, the desk.
Number 70, Leopoldina Smethwick. Leopoldina Smethwick, first British witch to referee a Quidditch match. Another one. Number 83, Roderick <clears throat> Plumpton. Seeker for England Quidditch team holds British record for fastest capture of snitch during game. Three and a half seconds, man. How can you possibly do that? How can you like have um, three and a half seconds? Like what kind of magic broom? If my Nimbus 2000 already needs like five software updates, in a reboot into save mode before it actually ma matches his top speed. Like, how can this guy get it in three and a half seconds? Fireballs didn't even exist. But nonetheless, it's really goddamn impressive. Like, you can't... F I can never catch it in three and a half seconds. That is really insane. There's actually two here. First, uh, first, the first one is of course in the bean bonus room. Uh, we've seen that one yesterday, so now we can finally open it. Let's go ahead and open it up. Number seventy-four, Montague Knightley. Montague Knightley, Wizard Chess Champion. So it's kind of funny. I've been watching, you know, those. Australian Harry Potter videos on YouTube recently like those cursed Harry Potter PlayStation 1 videos Where everybody talks with an Australian accent. I'm just like I'm dying every time I see those really and like Ron talks with the fattest Australian accent. It's absolutely hilarious and Every time I see Ron in this game, although I know this is not the same game like this is GameCube and it was on PS1 but every time when I see Ron talking, I just like assume like any moment now he's going to switch to that Australian accent. And then he's going to say like, uh, what, what have I done now? <laughs> I killed a bloody Horcrux. Oh. <laughs> Tuck that thing under your belt, mate. There's children present. <laughs> but especially like the, oh. <laughs> <coughs> it's really not good for my voice, so I will refrain from doing that again, but it's just hilarious. Every time I see Ron in this game, I just keep thinking, like any moment he's gonna say, Oh! <laughs> Number 75. There is literally nothing here, let's just go to... No, okay, there is like also nothing here. I just always found it was a bit useless that this tapestry was hanging there. Here's a door that we can enter now. Here's another wizard card. Number 11, Herpo the Fowl. Herpo the Fowl, first known creator of the basilisk. Like, how do you create a basilisk? But he's like, maybe he is like the true antagonist of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets because, you know, the Basilisk and all. Let's get out of here. Of course, you know, I, I, one thing I just wanted to say, like, there's a million ways of making shots in this game. And, you know, if you're, uh, if eventually when Trigon gets released, you will actually see what I mean because there's like a lot of different, uh, a lot of a variety of shots uh, going on. But of course, you know, I can't really show you them all because it would literally take me like days, even more days to actually uh, like finish the stream. So fun fact, if you go through this door, there's actually, this, this area is pretty useless because like all these doors are locked and there's like literally nothing in here. But we, we do get another Defendo chest, which is interesting. That one should be uh, Hengist of Woodcroft. Number 96, 
Hengist of Woodcroft. Hengist of Woodcroft. Driven away from his home by non-magical persecutors, Hengist is supposed to have settled in Scotland where he founded the village of Hogsmeade. Okay. The, gr- the, free broomstick, the, blah, the Free Broomsticks Inn is alleged to be, to be Hengist's old home. That's pretty cool. I like that. Actually, like a little fun thing, if you stand here, um, the, 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 the stair will actually come to this side instead of the other one. And now you can actually go down. That's pretty cool. So now we can actually uh, enter. Like now we can't go here. But now we can go up from here. That's kind of cool. Also, you know, if we're still talking about shots, uh, hold up. Have to click one time for my camera to be active, like so. You know, you can also make an interesting shot. You know, where you go for past these bars and uh, have a look from a different. Have a look at the grand staircase from a different perspective. I thought uh, that was kind of neat. But for uh, else that, you know, uh, this little area doesn't serve like any purpose at all. All right, bean time. So what do you got to say? Do you want to swap famous witches and wizards cards? I'll give you card number 23, Glenda Chittock, for number 27, Mirabella Plunkett. I don't have that card. What's up? Hello. Hello. Whoa. Why I can't talk with her? Okay, whatever. <clears throat> Howdy ho. Nice day for a broomstick, right? Yep, it sure is. Heard about nearly headless Nick Potter. Terrible thing to happen to a house ghost. Hey, thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Hufflepuff's, Hufflepuff's best house, you know? Besides Gryffindor, of course. Nah. <laughs> so... Now you just want to stare at me, okay. Let's get some beans. Like I said, we'll be returning here quite a lot because, you know, during the day we will need beans to feed our gambling addiction. We need beans at the end of the day before we go to the night uh, in order to buy things from Fred and George. So, yeah, we're we'll, we'll coming here quite often. think I'll be able to carry many more beans. Well said, Harry. Let's go to Neville. Uh, Neville. Yeah. Yeah, literally everybody. Wow, I've never seen this happening before. 189, 189. Like, I got 190. Hufflepuff's got 189. And Ravenclaw and Slytherin also got this exact same points. Hello, Neville. Let's do the easy one, gnome dunking. 220 this time, okay. If I can if I can make another ringer like the one I did before, like another home run, then I should be just fine. <laughs> I don't think you will hoo 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 after a while. Jesus Christ. Number 13. Andros the Invincible. Alleged to have been the only known wizard to produce a Patronus the size of a giant. My god. How? <laughs> this, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds pretty cool. Bye guys, see you tomorrow. I'll be back for some more Gnome for home. I'll just go ahead and do Gnome Tossing, because it's hard for me. See, now we're in a different area today. Now we're on a different little tower. I believe this is more like the back side of the... Oh, this is actually, we're looking on the main entrance here. So like yesterday we were far away over there and now we're on this side.
I think we were there on, on that little thing. Wait, if let me zoom in. Let me zoom in real quick. Then you can see it. Like this, that little tower. I think we were on that little tower yesterday. All right, where you are? Oh, here. Hey man, can you give me a good, good like price? I'm really low on the beans. The nine grain record's there to be beaten, Harry. Why don't you have a try? It'll cost fifteen beans. Ah, oh, fifteen beans. So we went, we went from like ten for like five or ten beans to fifteen beans at once. Oh boy. Don't be stupid. Okay. Ah. Okay, can I like look at it? Yeah, here we go. Ah, uh, I'm off again. So, okay, I got four gnomes, that's good. Okay, okay, not bad. 50, 50 points. Now we just really need to get a ringer here. Ah, oh, 20 points you short. Break the record this time, Potter. So this is exactly what, what I mean, like Last how long the games actually take. Record, <laughs> but this time you might. It'll cost 15 beans. Okay, I'm an addict. I can't help it. And stay down. Oh! I just don't understand this. I just really don't understand this. Like, how is this even possible? Like, the first... The first throw, first try, on uh, in the first, like, first try, nothing works, and now, like, the first throw on the second try, everything is just okie dokie. I have no clue what's going on. What? Where did he go? That was hilarious. What? What's going on? You beat the record. Have a wizard card, Harry. Okay, well, at least I beat it, but this is like a glitch or something. That was weird. Number 16, Cleodney. Cleodney, Irish Drudus of the who Irish Drudus who discovered properties of Moondew. Please spare me some slack, dude. I'm low on beans. Hi. What do you say to a race? It'll cost five beans. Five beans, okay, great. So that's Ravenclaw this time. Yesterday I was uh, racing against Slytherin. Now we're actually going the other way, that's kind of cool. Going pretty fast. Whoa, roller coaster. You won this time, Potter. Here's a famous witches and wizards card. Number 26, Elmerick Sawbridge. Famous for conquering the river troll that was terrorizing those trying to cross the Y River. River troll in question, believed to be one of the largest ever to exist with a weight of one ton. That is, that I'm not even mad, that's just amazing, really. And I got another 10 cards, so our stamina increased. And just look at this beautiful view. Nice. Second race, let's, let's go. Race, Harry. I won't lose this time. It'll cost ten beans. Okay, that's fine. I got I got that much. I just hope I can beat him in one try.
think I missed a brain jar. Doesn't matter. And that's two. Well done for winning, Harry. Have a wizard card. Number 27, ah. Mirabella Plunkett. Here is uh, our, another uh, duplicate of Mirabella Plunkett. Uh, yeah, she fell in love with the merman and she transfigured herself. Okay. Let's go for the last race. Let's race, Harry. I won't 15 lose beans? This time. It'll cost 10 beans. <clears throat> oh, 10 beans. Great. So I actually have uh, a bit of slack here. This is probably another sprint race. Yep, just look at how close these rings are to, like, to one another. Like, here's four in one go. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Here we go. Like, I'm even going faster than the rings can spawn, people. What's going on here? What the hell? Here we go. Okay, I have one. <laughs> well done for winning, Harry. Have a wizard card. Number 30. Artemisia Lufkin. First witch to become Minister for Magic. Awesome. And that's Neville's games for today. Let's uh, go ahead and go to Gringotts. Check out what Gringotts has in store for us. I swear to God, if, if this was like if this was like 2023, then Hogwarts would be would be cancelled because they were they were like feeding too much sugar to their students, really. Okay, so how many books have we got? I don't even see that one book. One. Only two. Okay, so there's two books today. Flying too fast when attempting to corner can lead to a crash and a great deal of time can be lost recovering from a hefty impact. Well, that's a good hint. That's actually what I, uh, what I experienced uh, earlier, you know, when during one of the races when there was like a really sharp turn and I actually, that was during flying actually, like a really sharp turn and I had to like stop and I lost momentum there. This is about wizarding, wizard dueling, can be a satisfying and rewarding art. The best technique is to return the opponent's spells with Expelliarmus, yet in itself it's not enough. A quick sidestep every now and then helps immensely. Okay. So uh, we can also dodge things sometimes. So basically it's also telling us that we should expect a wizarding duel coming up later. And uh, yeah. That you, uh, we should basically expect that coming up soon. All right, what's up? I think I've fallen in love with the landlady of the three broomsticks. Calm your balls, you're 12 years old. Let's go to Defense Against the Dark Arts. Now we actually get to see that classroom that we couldn't enter yesterday. And look who's here, as eager as ever. Come on, Harry. Professor Hookcrum's waiting. Calm your horses. Professor Hookcrum's waiting. You can just hear it, like, 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 really. Oh my goodness. So what do you got to say about it? Sorry to hear about nearly headless Nick Potter. What do you got to say for it? I think that Ginny Weasley really likes you, Harry. Thanks. <laughs> I think that Ginny Weasley really likes you, Harry. 
Yeah, is that so? I think that Ginny Weasley really How come likes everybody Harry. how come everybody says the same thing? They all know Ginny likes me. So what do you gotta say? <laughs> okay, 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 fine. Why is there no seat for this poor guy? <laughs> Can everyone see me? Can you all hear me? Excellent! This term I shall be teaching dueling. Let me introduce you to my assistant, Professor Snape. Now, Looking as happy Harry as Potter, ever. If you'd like to come forward, the Expelliarmus spell challenge is through here. What you have to do is to find the Expelliarmus spellbook somewhere beyond the portrait. Once you have the spellbook in your possession, the Expelliarmus spell will be yours to use as you see fit. The disgust in Snape's face was real, my god. <laughs> Spell challenges. The first one. I suppose that Expelliarmus spellbook is down those stairs. <laughs> That's overkill. Every time I see this, I just have to laugh because it's so overkill. Like, this is already like the first sign of a toxic relationship with Gilderoy Lockhart. He wants to kill me. <laughs> spell challenges. Part one, this is the first out of three spell challenges actually that we uh, get to do. So this is Expelliarmus. And uh, my first thoughts about Expelliarmus, the first thoughts that I had when I first exited, like entered this room a lot, a lot, a lot of years ago is just how pretty it looks here. I don't know about you guys, but this room is absolutely gorgeous. Like, I really love, I really dig this uh, highly reflective floor for some reason. And you can also use this, like we did in the Herbology Greenhouse, as like some sort of an asset uh, in terms of filmmaking. Like, if we just go here to, uh, to the Flapendo sign, you could technically create like a kind of interesting little shot here, like with, two, with the two things here, like with its reflection and with... Uh, with the hand itself, of course, you could zoom in a little bit. You could, you could even go higher and even lower, like so. Like this. Especially if you add some tail to it, like it really becomes quite freaky and experimental pretty quickly. That's what I really like about this. Also, um... Like in the in the preview of the stream, I also made a, a, this kind of shot, you know, where we primarily focus on on the reflection, like where we only primarily focus on what we see inside of the reflection inside of the inside of the the, the floor. So this also really makes for some like kind of interesting composition because as we move through the highly reflective floor, you can just see. You know all of the reflections of, of the fl of the fire and of uh, the greenish hue on the ceiling and the pillar and whatnot. While we still you know have that beautiful floor in there. Another thing that I did, of course, you know the good old standard. It's a bit standard now at this point, but you know the good old like wide angle shot. Why not? I mean. Don't go too wide angle because otherwise you'll go out of bounds. It's just like, you know, this... I just really like it that this way we're actually able to show different types of perspectives of all of these video game worlds that we really thought that we knew inside out, you know? That's also really something that I really like doing. I just really like to shed new perspectives on like video game worlds that we've been in so many times and we're almost like we can almost dream them in our dreams like oh yeah this is uh, here is the spell book and here is uh, then we do this and then we do that like you can almost dream the entire game but I just kind of want to shake it up a bit you know with 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 mods and with uh, development tools and all that stuff so 
I can actually still show you guys some cool inspirational perspectives on the game. Is there anything else that I want to show here? I think not. Except that I really like this room. Uh, let's move on with the quest. Ah yes, balls of steel. <laughs> So, wait up. Uh, no, I still have to go that way. I want to see what's in there. I kind of already know what's in there, but whatever. I'll just show you guys anyway. This shouldn't take long. Oh, okay. Uh, apparently, yeah, just jump, dude, seriously. I thought that was actually the way where I had to go, so I thought I wanted to first go to the other one, but if that's the case, I'll just uh, go ahead and open this, this door here. Nothing much going on here. There's actually it's just a cauldron with uh, wig and weld, but that's why we have like a full vial. Also, I don't really understand like the placement of these crates and these barrels because they don't really serve any purpose. And I just it just really makes makes me think like there's some kind of chest here while there's not. So, but yeah, it's kind of cool that in the first challenge it actually offer you a wig and weld cauldron because um, this is the only time you'll ever see it during a spell challenge. Let's move on, get out of this room. <sighs> Alright. Also, yet another pretty cool room here. We got these four giant spiky... <sighs> what? I, I'm not going to say it. We have these four spikes hanging here. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the satisfaction, I'm not going to say it. Okay, fine. Spiky balls. Happy now? So we got we got them hanging here, and of course we, they need a good old Defendo to the face. But also, you know, it's just really cool if I go into no clip mode here real quick. Make sure they're loaded into RAM. If we move around. You could also make like a like like a square kind of tra a square kind of um, a composition here. If you go up a little bit, you actually see the holes where they originate from. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on? Slow down, slow down. Like so. You actually can make a quite an interesting composition with them. You can actually go a little bit closer. And like uh, do it in a bit more experimental manner where, where you don't see the full, the full ball basically, so to speak. Of course, um, you could, the other thing that I found kind of interesting here is just stand in the door opening basically, move to 
uh, and just move to the no clip mode and go like this. Just go up a little bit and then okay, go up a little bit so that everything is loaded. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. Uh, like so, yes. Now everything should be loaded. Here we go. Except for this boy, but we'll just... Uh, especially if you go ahead... You should probably make it a bit wider, like so. Let's just pretend that Harry's not here, but if you were to go, like, if you were standing in a door opening, you know, it would also look pretty cool that you're slowly sliding out of the door opening and you would see, you, you would see them hanging there. That's cool. Let's turn on my heads-up display, otherwise I don't know where the window is. I always gotta say that I find it quite interesting that teachers know what kind of spells you have. Like, for example, Nobody taught me Defindo during lectures, and I just found the spell because I had to free Neville. Like so, like so, who told Gilderoy Lockhart that I have Defindo? Like, did Professor Sprout tell anybody? Like, the Defindo spellbook is gone or whatever. I always find it quite interesting. Like, how how does how do the teachers know what kind of spells I have and don't have? Like, so that they can implement it in their spell challenges. Like, not even two, not even eight hours later. This kind of sucks, because the game really wants to make you think like it's really involved and you have to get rid of all of the imps, but you can just literally run past them. This thing, a cool, it's a, you can make a cool, uh, like, high-speed shot here, especially like this if you zoom in a little bit, technically. Like you could do something like this, but I didn't really find it all that interesting, to be honest. So I kind of skipped much over this room. There's not much to go here. Like this is empty, and this is here. Like except except the windows look like really pretty, but that's kind of all. I see you. Stop throwing shit at me. Okay, I'll throw you in. See ya, buddy. And that's it. Now we can get past. Let's get the health item here. Pumpkin, pa uh, pumpkin pasty. Like, can I, like, push him? No, okay, I can't push him. Let's then go into uh, no clip mode here. So, now we're currently, I, it's safe to say, we're currently in my favorite area of the Expelliarmus challenge. And that is just how epic this looks. I mean, this thing looks like it can go on forever. And especially if you go here, like, this looks like parts of the castle. Like, you're in some kind of castle inside of the castle. Oh boy, where am I now? Crap, what did I do? Here we go, okay. <laughs> like, it looks really, really cool. Especially the green U here, although I don't, like... Although it's a bit thick sometimes, but it looks really, really epic. And you got all of these, like, broken Roman Romanian, like, statues, like, uh, 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 pillars here. And you got all of these marble... Uh, constructions here of all of the uh, the fire spitting dragon uh, statues. Actually, here's also where I w made one of those interesting shots. Like, I'm not really sure where it was. I believe it was here. Yeah, like so. Like, you can really make really interesting compositions here because this looks just to me. It just looks so awesome because you have this really vast castle inside of the castle with this greenish hue uh, with the beautiful marble in the background and you've got all of these like cool 
stone hog statues that will eventually spit fire and then when you go closer to them you can really see the detail in them and you know you have a little bit of a playful uh, free shot because you have one on the left you have one on the right and you have one in the back so if you wanted to you could actually still play around with depth of field let's get rid of the fire crab <laughs> I hate fire crabs there's another one over there there's nothing here all right let's get up there and now the fun begins I still, after all these years, I still don't really understand like what, what helps and what not. Like, if I flippendo them, will they like stop breathing fire or something? Or will they like quit, like quit earlier? Like, see, like it doesn't really make any sense to me personally. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it almost looks like. Luckily, there's a lot of health items here. I don't like the camera here, like it's fixed and it's really weird. Especially if you're playing the game for a really long time. What? Like especially if you're playing the game for a really long time and you have the freedom of the camera revolving around you. Okay, come on. Okay, go. That was random. Okay, go, 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 go. Just go. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Let me just get another pumpkin pasty. this okay and all of a sudden you know the control is given back to me here as well uh, the camera looks really weird I cannot really see anything you know I know the ball is there but I can't really like aim so I just have to like assume that I know what I'm doing Right, so now we can get inside of this room behind there and guess what's here the spell book bit of a foreshadowing there there's a gargoyle on the statue there on like a pillar uh, that one will become really more imp really important later all right just to uh, for good measure I'll give you one more example of like shots that I made so now you can actually also see me doing it more it's except for my keyboard input, of course, but uh, what I really liked was, you know, trying to get everything in its totality in this room because this room looks kind of epic. That's why I went with a shot like when you're still standing in the doorway, it almost looks like, and you're slowly moving towards the front. There's not, uh, especially like the, the torches hanging, like the large torches hanging from the ceiling really help a lot and also like the volumetric rays that are coming from there plus the gargoyle in the background so newsflash we got a duel this oh I almost got a heart attack I felt like what's going on but I'm still in no clip mode <laughs> so we got a duel this boy over here the gargoyle oh, I don't see him anymore but can I see him now like this this dude over here we got a duel him it's time to do 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 and I'm in the wrong side, so I just have to go back here. And uh, we need to use Expelliarmus in order to do that. But where do I... Oh, it's here. Okay. I keep going to the wrong area. I'm, I'm, I, I just got like so used to the other spell challenges because then the, this little bridge is on the other side. Also, I don't really want to fall down there. So, the moment I get the Expelliarmus spellbook, basically, um, he will come down and we need to duel him. 
and there's a couple of interesting facts about the about the Expelliarmus spell, basically. Uh, like, for example, you are able to steer the spell in any direction that you want. And this can actually help you to win duels. Probably make this a bit bigger. Because you probably cannot really see this really well. Let's go ahead and make this... Well, that was stupid. Why the hell did I even do that? I kind of had an idea. I kind of wanted to implement like a controller overlay where uh, where you could actually see my controller input and I did that with the main reason that, uh, that is because the Expelliarmus spell, once you're using it, you can actually steer the spell in any direction. Like for example, if you just press the button to cast the spell, you will directly send it back to the opponent but if you uh, hold also hold like the if you also use like the left control stick and for example you move it to the left you actually have, will see that the spell will move to the left and, and, and stuff like that i wanted to show you that uh, with some controller input but unfortunately it just doesn't work whatever i try so we'll do it without here we go expelliarmus The Expelliarmus Dueling Charm lies at the heart of good dueling technique. Expelliarmus allows the duelist to rebound an opponent's spell. Okay. Here we go. Our first, uh, that's, uh, that's the second duel. The washing machine was the first duel. So, here I'm just using the spell. I just only pressed the button, and as you can see, uh, it went directly to him. Now when I use it, and I do to the left... Oh, I don't know what happened there. I go to the left, as you can see, the spell is actually steered to the left. Now I just go to the right. See? See what happens when I use the analog, of the, the analog stick to actually... Uh, I use it in combination with the spell. So now I, I just use the spell to cast the spell. Nothing happens. But when I use the, the sticks, I can basically steer it into any direction. Here you go. But for this opponent, it's not really that useful, so I'm not going to do it. Now we can get out of here. And with that, the first spell challenge of the game is in the bag. There wasn't anything like particularly wrong with the controller input as I had it right now, but um, it just didn't show like the most important button. It didn't show like the left analog stick. If if uh, that was the main thing that I wanted to show you guys, but that was the only button that he didn't like properly map for some reason, so that's why I didn't use it. Sucks, but you know what can you do? Well done, Potter! Forty house points for Gryffindor! Now I'd like you to use the Expelliarmus spell you've just acquired in a real duel. Mr. Malfoy, come over here. Let's see what you can make of the famous Potter. First duelist to gain five points wins the duel. Very well then. 
One's at the ready. When I count to three... Scared, Potter. You wish. One, two, three. Okay, so now I'm just going to repel it right directly at him. See, it just directly goes to him. And now I'll just do it to the left bottom. Boom. And it will hit him indirectly. And it also deducts a point. So that's why steering the Expelliarmus charm can actually be quite interesting. See? He already lost two points. Let's just do right side now. Oh. Boom. Oh, he got lucky this time. See, he cannot deflect most of these. Boom. <laughs> Boom, I got him. or something. But I'm not. You must find that hard to prove. You lived about a thousand years ago. For all we know, you could be. Anyway, we've got Quidditch practice next at the Quidditch Stadium. I'll meet you in the entrance hall, Harry. We gotta go to the Quidditch Stadium. We got Quidditch practice there. But uh, first of all, I kind of want to, you know, admire over the details a little bit. Like all of the, <laughs> all of the Guild War Lockhart paintings are interesting, you know. So here's another chest which we can't unfortunately open until uh, tomorrow. But for some reason, he has like a portrait of Dumbledore in his classroom, which is kind of interesting. There's also like a portrait of uh, Lockhart and Dumbledore, if I remember correctly. There's even a portrait of McGonagall in here, which I also don't really understand. Like, <laughs> it's quite interesting, but... This is uh, also him, like, he, he's got a lot of... Uh... Where was it? I could have sworn there was like a painting of him and Dumbledore in there. Was it here? Oh, uh, this is the guy who was a troll. Here we go, here we go, there it is. See? Dumbledore with Gilderoy Lockhart. <laughs> I thought it was a little, neat little, uh, like, uh, interesting detail. Okay, I gotta switch back to Alamora for a bit because there's an Alamora chest inside of the classroom. So it's good that we got the spell. Number 95, Yard the Plant. <laughs> Serial Goblin Killer. <laughs> okay. Oh, another, uh, another, I, I don't, I just want to say I don't have space for that, but okay. Of course, can I raid all of these? Yeah, I can raid all of these as well. I'm not going to. So this is, I think, the prettiest, like, classroom in entire Hogwarts. This is like, it really looks like, just looks like the real Defense Against the Dark Arts class, you know? I never really realized how big it really is. Yeah, like, this shot, basically what I'm doing now is kind of what I call the teacher point of view. I'm just going to stand here. And I'm just going to be a little bit higher than this. And I'm just going to stand here. And now you actually have like the same point of view as the teachers would. Like this is basically the point of view that Gilderoy Lockhart would have during uh, that shot, you know, where he actually entered from, from the door and then he stood on the balcony. Like that was this door and that is in fact this balcony. And now you actually kind of have the same POV as he had. 
Second. With this wonderful skeleton here, like you could go kind of crazy. Like for example, you could literally zoom in crazily on him and show like all the details that this magnificent thing has to offer. You know, like uh, like this, and you could slowly move. Or you could, you know, just like st directly stand under him and have like a really, this kind of looks like the, what, what is it? The little uh, Christmas skeleton. <laughs> but this also looks kind of threatening because, you know, they have him um, from this kind of angle, he looks kind of angry. You could make it a bit more twisted like so. And then just zoom in on him. You have the shadow behind him, like the light from underneath. And you got his face, or you could even go a little bit like more experimental this way. I just really like that. Let's get out of here for now. Because we've got Quidditch practice, so this is like the in-between, I just call it the in-between room, I don't really know what else to call it. Let's, let's uh, raid some more closets with stuff I already have. Let's turn up more stuff. There is, however, another wizard card here that we can get. Number 57, Gifford Allerton. Number 57, Gifford Ollerton. Famous giant slayer, another slayer. What's going on, man? Why is like uh, why are serial killers like part of the folio magi? Killed the giants, the giant hangist of Upper Barnton. Okay. Let's. We actually, we actually are getting quite an interesting, uh, like, uh, collection of folio magi cards already. Damn. Nice. We're getting there. We're getting there. For real. Okay, let me ch have a quick look. So we did the Defindo chests. We played Neville's games. Uh, we went to Gringotts. We did uh, the Defense Against the Dark Arts class. So, yes. We need to... <clears throat> we can just go to quick Quidditch practice right now. Quidditch Stadium is this way. Let's go in, Harry. Oh! <laughs> Every time he talks, it reminds me of Australian Ron. Really, this is hilarious. <laughs> Listen up, you lot. We're going to make sure we win the Quidditch Cup this year. And the way we're going to do that is practice, practice, practice. First, a quick recap of what we learned last year. I'll start with the Seeker. I love this music. Here, I really like the, the Quidditch music. It, it's so epic. Now watch carefully. That's good, Harry. Flying through each ring makes you go faster and increases the magical charge in your broom. Faster, you'll see the magical charge in your broom has increased too. You can see this in the trail the broom is leaving in the air behind you. The magical charge in your broom is at maximum. You can now get that extra boost of speed. Whoa, that's Don't close. Hit you or it will reduce the magical charge in your broom. The heart too. Time your grab at the snitch and you'll catch it. I guess I have to do it again, right? There's like two two catching sessions during Quidditch of practice. Okay, you know the score. One opposing seeker, two bludgers, and two opposing beaters to contend with. All you have to do is catch the snitch. 
So basically for distinction, I gotta catch the snitch in like one minute. Or less, I think. I think less than a minute, I gotta catch him. I'm not gonna m meet, you know, the free second record that that guy has, but... crashed into the towers. Come on. Here we go. Now I gotta catch it. Boom. Is this within a minute? Please let it be. I don't think so, but I need a good score. That was perfect, Yes! Mike. You received the highest grade, a distinction. And because of that excellent performance, Harry, here's a brand new Nimbus 2000 to take with you. You'll be able awesome. to fly anywhere around the Second grounds, distinction. but try not to crash into too many of the towers. If you want to try your hand at Quidditch practice, Harry, just come over here. I got a distinction. One, one minute and seven seconds. Okay, not too shabby at all, not too shabby. I'm really glad that I got the distinction because otherwise at the end of the game I would actually have to spend a lot of time, you know, redoing this this Quidditch practice because I believe that once you redo the practice you you have to do both sessions, which is annoying. It's just going to take a lot of time. And now we also got our own Nimbus 2000. Hello there. Hermione. What's the matter? Malfoy showed up while you were practicing in the Quidditch stadium. He's been made seeker after his dad brought his way onto the team with a whole set of Nimbus 2001s. Hermione said something about it and he called her a filthy mudblood. A what? A mudblood? It's a really disgusting name for someone who was born of non-magical parents. There are some wizards, like Malfoy's family, who think they're better than everyone else. Anyway, it's a horrible thing to say. If it hadn't been for Hagrid showing up, I'd have cursed him. I suppose you're right. And nothing more had to be said about that. Bye, guys. Technically speaking, this was day two. We're not quite done here yet because we... Of course, we need to max out our beans, and look, now we can actually fly around. There is, this also enables us to uh, collect beans in a different way, because now we can just fly through these rings. And these rings will also get us beans. So, a yellow one will only give one, I think. So that should be her, probably be 21. Yeah. So there are yellow rings, green rings, red rings of death, and blue rings. Blue rings give you like the really rare. I think I've only like seen them twice or so during the last playthrough that I did. But uh, they actually give you like 10, 10 beans each. That's pretty insane. Here's a red one. Let's have a look what the red one does. I'm kind of wanna. I kind of wanna see if I can catch all of the rings in one, like all at once. So this one gives two, red ones give two. Here's a green one, let's see how much that gives. Five, okay, so you got uh, one, you got one for yellow, two for red, and uh, five for green, and then you got 10 for the blue one. I just hope I can find a blue one, that would be nice. So as you might have guessed already, after we are like flying over the grounds, everything is now properly loaded into RAM. And now so, so if I press R in order to go to the first person mode, that stuff actually will not work. So it's only like pure camera manipulation right here that we have to do. We can't use the first person mode. What's that over there? That's a ring. 
Let's get another one. Another five. Of course, I'm not going to get like the full 100 beans this way, but I just... What? It just didn't register. Oh, there's another green one. Wow, there's a lot of green ones, actually. I just kind of want to find a blue ring. You know? I just hope I can find it within the next few minutes during this uh, demonstration, otherwise, uh, screw it. But, you know, now that we actually have a Nimbus and we're supposed to fly through the air, um, all of the stuff is properly loaded into RAM, and now we can... This is like... Like, how close is it to here? <laughs> it's insane. But if I, for example, if I were to go here... This is a really cool little area, by the way. This is like around the edge of Hogwarts. This is probably a boathouse or something. And... Like, there's nothing in here right now, but I can certainly be here. And now when I go here, and I just quickly hide it, I go up. That looks interesting. Uh, I don't know. Oh, not everything is loaded into the room. Hold up. Like, I just have to do it like this. Like so. Now when I go down and I look up and I go through the front. Of course not everything can be shown right now, but just look at how epic this is already. Let's uh, make it a bit wider. Okay, let's just pretend, you know, that the sky maps are properly loaded, but you know, now you have also a really cool representation of like this stairs going up, you got like the castle, you got the boathouse here. So, with like with the with the broom. Oh, here's a blue one. Here we go. Great, I got them all in one go. Awesome. So this one should give ten. Fifty-six. Yeah, it should. It's like a form, you know, to make it easier for you to make shots of the castle and further down the grounds. Like, for example, this. You can get all of the multiple towers. You can even go uh, closer if you wanted to. Or here. Now, basically, the entire grounds and also the castle, like the exterior, it's like, it's like accessible to us. Of course, you can also, like, fly through here if you wanted to. Like here. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> also, uh, you could like technically go ahead and create some bit of a first person perspective. Now, of course, if you move, uh, this will happen, so you have to go quite to the front. You actually have to go quite more to the front with the camera. But now, when I get rid of the custom textures, here you go. Now we're actually, it looks like we're flying in first person, somewhat. Like so, like a bit wider, not too wide because otherwise things are not loaded into RAM anymore and they will start glitching out here as you can see. Oh, sorry about that. So we can fly over here, we can fly through the ring. Or not so it's a bit too wide as you can see like uh, textures are popping in and out so let's just put it back oh I didn't register it and then go like over the grounds like whoa Just make it look epic, and then we, we're soaring through the trees and over the castle, like this. Going over here. I like this. I just like this a lot. 
flying over the grounds on my Nimbus 2001 used to be like my favorite pastime to do. I just, after I completed the game, I just simply didn't want to go to the Great Hall. I just wanted to keep on flying the broom. It was just awesome. All right, let's just get this uh, green ring and then uh, I kind of made my point here with the flying, so then we'll just go back. We did make a nice dent in our bean collection, so that's already good. Only downside is is that you cannot like dismount your broom everywhere. You gotta go to only like set places. So we gotta go. To, let's just go to the Hogwarts entrance here. Here we go. Here's the Hogwarts entrance. Now we should be able to. That looks interesting. Yeah, everything looks interesting according to you. Let's get out. Okay. I really got to save because I don't want to lose that distinction. <laughs> really. If I if I lose that distinction, I'm going to be really upset. So I better save again. I'm going to be ultra upset. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> All right, I made my point. Let's uh, let's go to the bean bonus room, get some more beans, max it out, and then we're going to night two already. She is looking at me like so not impressed. She's like, why, are you, why do you keep flexing your spells in front of me? I don't like it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. I just feel like I'm, a, I'm, I'm here just way too often. Really. But it shouldn't take this long, luckily, because... <clears throat> Can you give me four more beans, please? One more, please. Please, come on. Don't be like this. Seriously, I, I have to, like, get out for one single bean? Oh, that sucks. I just don't like that. Fine, because I really need that one bean. There we go. 100 out of 100. Awesome. Well, that's it for day two. It's, uh, we're going to end the day. It's time for night two. Gryffindor. Damn, I went to 310 already. Hufflepuff. I didn't know I got that many. 200. <laughs> Whoa. Ravenclaw. Okay, 250. Now for Slytherin. Slytherin. Yeah, of course. They also got 300 probably. 
Three hundred. Okay. So I got three hundred and ten, and they got three hundred. Okay, that's good. I'm still in the lead. Now, night two. It's actually time for my second favorite level in the game. Like the Expelliarmus spell challenge was like one of my favorites and uh, this, the, this uh, mission for tonight is also my second favorite. We're going to the restricted section of the library. And uh, personally I think that this part of the game really shows what this game can do in terms of light, atmosphere, sound and gameplay. Sometimes it just really feels like you're in there, in the restricted section, and you have to try to get out, you know, and it kind of feels helpless at times. It's like really, they just really, uh, they just really did a good job on that. Like the atmosphere and everything, it's just awesome. And, and also the mission itself is also a lot of fun to play. Now about the wizard cards, uh, because last night we got some wizard cards, don't worry. There are no wizard cards available for tonight, so it's just literally... Uh, the only thing we got to do is threaten George, Gringotts, and do the mission, and that's it. Then go yourself. Of course. I suppose you want me to sneak out to the library again. Shut up, Harry. See, this is what I mean with the passive aggressiveness from Hermione. It's really annoying. How do you know the password? Really? Pass the library portrait. Got it. Thanks, Harry. I'll watch out for the prefects. Oh, Harry, watch out for prefects. Don't make us lose house points. Go give me some books from the restricted section. I hate you, really. Like, she also knows where the book is, and she knows how to get in there, and she still doesn't want to do it, and she's still so, like, uh... Yeah, that was what I was thinking, so that's why I wanted to go. Percy, good evening. Come here. No, I'm, I'm just busy. Okay, I think tonight it's a good idea to actually get that second potion vial. Because especially for tomorrow, we will need it. How much it. is this Wigan Well potion vial? 100 Bertie Vots every flavor beans. Well, we also got 100 beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Smart move, Harry. Now you can carry even more Wigan Well potion. All right, awesome. We got the Wigan Well cauldron. Feel free to spend as long as you like it. I just really think it's a smart move, you know, to get the way to get the second potion file tonight. Because tomorrow we will absolutely need it. And also, you know, we will most definitely lose all of our beans anyway, because there's so many hazards. So better just buy something that uses all 100 beans. Tonight is like the perfect timing just to get the second potion file. But before that, we're gonna, we're gonna do anything. We're going to green gods. I will probably, yeah, I will. Luckily, that's why I don't have beans anymore because I will just, just lose them anyway. Open. That's got it. Yes, more sugar. Always appreciated. So now... How many books are there? One, two, three. Okay, there's, so there's actually three books for tonight. Let's read the first one. Pushing oneself up against the wall can help. But there's also much to be said for a darting run from one hiding place to another. Keeping a careful watch on the surrounding environment is vital when moving into situations requiring stealth. Okay, so this is like a... 
a hint regarding stealth again. Let's check the second one. Duelists will often find that their environment is as much their enemy as the opposition. Forcing the enemy into the path of your return spells will often pay large dividends. Okay, I don't really understand why, like, how I can push them. But, you know, at least I know I can steer or expertly arm us into his direction. Ectoplasm can block access to areas or prevent the function of certain kinds of machinery. The best solution is with a well-aimed cast of the Scourge spell. So basically, that is the spell we're going to get later. I just don't like the the sneaking. Said that I had to go past the library to find the portrait to the restricted section. Okay, keep going. Holy shit! I made it in the first go. Right. Somewhere around here is a portrait. <sighs> I'm worried. I'm just really worried. And, you know, the fact that the camera is just absolute trash here doesn't really help. Like, I can't see anything. Like, where are they going? Here you are. Okay, so I gotta wait for him. Okay, you're not going there again, right? Oh, you're so annoying. God damn it. Okay, great. Huh? Locomotive Mortis! Shit! Locomotive Mortis! Get back to your dormitory! I just wish they fucking, like, fixed the camera on this thing. Ugh, he's going to the left. This is gonna take forever. Okay, just in time. And now he's going to the right, right? Okay, yes. Ah. How about I just make a run for it? Okay, so far so good, so far so good. There's someone around here. What Get am I doing? To your dormitory. Come on, move! Where are you going? Shit. Awesome, 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 awesome! Aha! The portrait! Bibliophile. This shot is bloody awesome. This is like so cool when you see the, the camera moving up slowly and then, you know, you see all of these books. Do you like start to understand now why I absolutely love this level? It just looks so awesome. Like all of the books flying on and about, like doing their thing. 
like, you know, you really get the feeling, as soon as you get in here, you just really get the feeling that, like, you're not supposed to be in here. You know, that's just like, oh, it's like really an eerie section of the library where dark magic is happening. Basically, in that, that spot where we just were with all of the prefects, we were also there, like, earlier during the day, you know, but now it's actually... that. W but that day section of the level, we were actually not supposed to see. And it's really, really easy to lose a lot of points there, so I'm still, like, so hyped, <laughs> basically, that, that I actually managed it. And I just love this. What I love about this part is just literally, you know, you have to climb alongside these dangerous books all the way up here. You know, you gotta f climb all the way up. You're actually climbing up, you're making progress, and, like, you're going higher. It's like adding a lot of danger to everything. It's just so awesome. So, footage related, of course, I mainly, I, like, there's a lot of times that I just really focused around the, about the books. Like, for example, if I just uh, stand here for a second, don't worry, I'll just put myself back later. So let's uh, add no clip. So I'm actually, like, properly centered. and then just open up the custom textures. And then especially if you go down just a little bit and you go up and you like zoom in and you just do a little bit of a shot like this, you know? And you fly, you're literally already flying for like 3D space and you have all of these books flying about. Like how cool is that? Man, I just like... It's been like 21 years and I still just love this area. Like, look, like all the books flying about. It's just awesome. This is kind of what I said earlier when we were like in the beginning of the game, when we were in Diagon Alley and we were in like Flourish and Blots, where they had much more variation in the bookshelves. Because here they all look so similar. They just have a little bit of a different texture and there's not really much to them. Of course, you could like go ahead and you could go like go here and you could like focus on the books here in the books in the bookshelf in the bookshelves. Go a little bit wider and make a really slow shot, you know, like this. And you're kind of following the books along as they get out. There's just so much, so much variety here. Okay, having that said, I'm gonna have to go back down. Oh, here's another thing. Like, it doesn't really matter if we miss any crates tonight because there is literally no wizard cards. There's just only health items, which we will need, of course. A cool representation of the entire library, that for that matter, would just be if to make it a bit, uh, like this, lower, and then go up, and then you know, you have like this shot from inside the door. And this is also pretty cool, although it doesn't really work because books are no clipping in and out because we're not supposed to actually have this wide angle. Uh, it does work really well, like we have got so many bookcases, books flying about, and all of these tables. All right, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and climb this big scary ladder and uh, I just hope that we can actually get past here. Okay, this boy has to go. Alright, I gotta wait for this book. They're pretty fast, actually. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I got you, I got you. Oh, I gotta go back. Like, this book next to me is like, in almost instantaneously getting out of there. Like, no, he has no chill, basically, my god. Chest. 
probably another health item, yeah. I'll just try to get all the health items, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so here I'm going to use my trick of uh, dodge walking again because I really don't want to fall off. I'm going to lose a lot of my health. One more, yeah, okay, go, go, go. <sighs> you should not have done that, but okay. Like this also, this 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 entire thing, like let's just wait because they're going in and out again. This entire sequence where you are wall sneaking above like I don't know how many how many how many floors of bookcases, you know, it's just so epic I don't know who thought of this, but this just works so well in the Harry Potter game Okay, so is this the final one? No, okay, there's uh, one more after this Pumpkin pasty. Can I climb through here? Oh boy, I have to like go here. Okay, here we go. I mean, it, w it wouldn't really matter because I could just use no clip anyway, but. I don't really want to use no clip during my gameplay, you know? I just only want to use no clip during the final moment. So here, here as well, great, great perspective here to, to work around with. Like you could definitely like zoom in here, slowly move up and about, see all of the, the books flying past you on screen. Oh my god, this is awesome. Also, a quick note about this level. This level only has like a night section because you're only able to actually get in here during the night. Uh, even if you hack into the game and you go back inside of here, even if you are doing so during the day, here will be night, so it doesn't matter. So this, like, yeah. Look at this, like how many books are there on screen? That's cool, so cool. Okay, I'm, I just feel like I'm rambling about the books all the time, but you get my point. <laughs> I gotta wait until he leaves. Okay, let's do it. Stop here. Uh, that was the final one. Now we're here. Let's get some more cauldron cakes for some reason. I don't really need it. <laughs> Only health items, not even beans. Is there anything else in here? There's like another thing I can raid. Sure. It would be awesome, you know, if you would be able to actually stock up all of these health items. Oh, locked. Uh, it's also directly locked. Like it would be nice if you can actually stock up health items so that when you lose health, it will automatically be used. Because now I got like five or six cauldron cakes and pumpkin, pumpkin pastries, and I just don't have any use for them. They're just useless. Oh, I just kind of feel like it, this area, it looks like people have been here all the time. And I've always kind of been wondering about, you know, the restricted section of the library. Who is allowed to go in here? Fourth years, fifth years?
six years, seven years, or only or only highly skilled students or only staff of Hogwarts is allowed in here because it just really looks like you know people are coming here all the time. Like there were there were books in the main room on the tables. Here is books on the tables. There's like a notice board here. I mean, if this stuff is really off limits for literally everybody, then what are we doing here? Okay. This is welcome to the main room. And this is like awesome. Like you got this little, this is really like a level that the map that requires, you know, some jumping and wall sneaking and whatnot. So it's really cool and it's so big. Like you got, a, you can stand above here. You got the big chandelier in the middle, but I just like, you know, the two floors with the Romanian pillars there, the Roman pillars there, and like all of the, 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 the doors up there with the candles. Of course, those doors don't do anything. I've tried, so that kind of sucks. Here is uh, somewhere where no clip actually works really, really well, because as soon as you set some foot inside of the room, the books will come to you and they will constantly attack you, like non-stop. They will non-stop attack you, like they're here. They're also like here and here, like in here as well. Like, let's just make a quick look. Here they are as well. Here they are. They will just constantly fly to you and try to attack you. It's ridiculous. Look, here's another place. Like, how many people come here every day? So this is where no clip also comes in handy because because of this, I can just do my thing without being without having to worry and that I will be disturbed by the books like now I can even go really close to them and I could technically you know I could just uh, add them in here slowly move towards them this ambient in in the restricted section of the library is just awesome Look, because now when I turn off the mode, they will instantly come to me, instantly. And, and then they, they will come as well. So it's really easy to lose a lot of like health here. So let's just uh, make it quick. I will do some more camera manip uh, after I finish, you know, the Hedwig! the quest here. Okay, here, here you go. go. Gotta go back again. Bye, guys. Bye bye. There's just so many chests and like so many health items as well. But I can understand because. I used to play this this uh, this level like a lot also back in the day, and I would lose a lot of health. Like I would be kick my ass would be kicked by those books all the time. So I can completely understand. But it would be a bit better, you know, if there were also like uh, uh, wizard cards to be found in here. I kind of missed the wizard cards tonight. This is like the only night where we can't find where we can find zero wizard cards. On the other hand, you know. It's nice, it's a pretty chill night. Once you get past the prefects, you can just breeze through it. And we did, so luckily. Let's go this way.
good that we sneaked out yesterday as well. So basically the moral of Harry Potter's story is like, if you sneak out every night, that's actually a good thing. Because you will get new spells and whatnot. Because this is the second spell we will be getting uh, while sneaking out. Like the Findo, and now we'll get Scourge. So here's nothing. Also, if you go in... Like, here's literally nothing. It's just above the entrance. It just doesn't do anything. Now here we've got like a beautiful oversight of like the main room of the restricted section of the library. And especially, let's just cut this boy here. Like, especially the huge window over there just gives such an amazing atmosphere. Of course, you know, they, like, you've probably seen by now they've gone full volume metrics with that effect, but, but it just works so well. And especially here, like, you could make a really beautiful rider shot just over the railing here, and you could see the entire area. Yeah, room in the main section of the restricted section of the library. You got the chandelier. It's really eerie, the eerie music. All of the lighting going on, like it's only being lit by candles in the chandelier. You, you see the books there ready to attack. It, this is exactly what I meant, you know, when, when I was talking about the atmosphere, lighting, sound, and the music. And now as we speak, you know, the sound, the epic sound is coming back. <laughs> This, this level is like the perfect rendition of all those things that make Harry, this game, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for GameCube and okay, also Xbox, uh, so great, really. Now don't worry, I will not keep kissing this game's ass because uh, soon we will be getting to the game breaking stuff. Not this night, but... Okay, so now we gotta get the book. Here it is. For some reason, it's on top of this bookcase. Basically, I don't really need to like tell you this. This is exactly the same as in the movie. The four founders of Hogwarts worked in harmony, and then Slytherin thought that only uh, only pure-blooded families should be accepted into uh, Hogwarts. And then there was like an argument, and then Slytherin left the school and built the Chamber of Secrets that only the uh, the heir of Slytherin can control and purge the school of those that were like in Slytherin's eyes and worthy to to like study magic. That is basically the legend of the Chamber of Secrets in like, uh, oh, see the books. <laughs> That's basically the legend of the Chamber of Secrets in like three lines. Yeah, all right, great. <laughs> you can already see the next fight that we got to do. This, uh, this bookcase, uh, don't worry, this bookcase is actually really simple. This is really like one of those fights that you really overthink. But it's just really simple. You just keep got to spam flipendo on him. <laughs> like this, basically. If you keep hitting flipendo in rapid succession, then this will happen. That's it. Now we got uh, two ghosts roaming the uh. platforms. And now basically we go, uh, what we gotta do, you kinda guessed it already, we gotta jump up the platforms, get rid of the books, and then get the Scourge spell book. Uh. Alright, this is fine. Uh. Now we're really getting into the sinister part of the library. Like, you get all these, uh, Weird little breaths everywhere, and like the ghost. I think you can hear it right now. 
Like you can hear the ghost saying shh and stuff like that. I, yeah, this is just, you know, also like a really classic room for me because not only do you get like here, the Scourge spell, the spell book is literally right here. I just don't understand what an ectoplasmic, ectoplasma, ecto, Jesus Christ, ectoplasm cleaning spell does in a restricted section of the library. But I guess, you know, they needed something to make this all worthwhile, so. You know, you got all of the chandeliers, you got all of the bookcases, and like the majority How of all. Earth of do I get out of here? Harry, I'm talking. The all of these, you know, beautiful windows, especially of these windows, like they they all, all they all show the moonlight shining in. It just makes it so eerie, and now together with all of the additional sound effects and ambience, it's just awesome. So one example of a shot, maybe one later after I get the book. Uh, I stood here and I just really made like the pr the most long the longest possible shot I could possibly make like so and I move a little bit and now we've actually like we got a really interesting shot going on here because we have uh, we've got all the books we got the bookcases we have the ghosts wandering about and they will actually like like they will move from really far away to the camera to really close by the camera. So it adds some dynamics and some really, some movement to the shot. Well, sorry, it adds some movement to the shot as well. And especially if you add some movement of your own together with all of the events that are currently happening on screen, it just makes it look so cool and cinematic with the lighting and all. And also you got, you know, you got the spell book in the background there. So, having said that, let's get up here. Let's see if I can still if I still know how to do this. position myself real quick it's just a little bit annoying that there's always like they're 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 not equally like next to each other like if you look here like there's always a bit of weird like one is more to the left and one not ah I failed the camera again is not your best friend here it's like it's fixed and it's really shit. This is what I really don't like. And my controller is sometimes not registering the input correctly. How on earth do I get out of here? Like the first three or four of these bookcases are fine. Uh, now, dude! Just in time. Here we go. Second time is the charm this time. Let's get the book. And spell number six. Scourge. Technically spell number five, but... We go scourge so the final uh, example that I wanted to give of the shot is actually when you're standing here this also give like how it works for a really beautiful overview shot you could you know you could go the stealthy way by go walk, looking at everything behind the bars like so or driving past the bars then you also actually get a bit of the book here 
which is cool. Like if you go here to the book, or you could do a rider back as the ghost book past you. But the the majority of the times I would just go for just like a overview shot. Like it looks like you're looking over the railing and you see what's what's happening right now. Again, you know, I know that I'm. Uh, Okay, yeah, it doesn't matter. We're, we're out of here. So here's the Scourge thing. Let's uh, get rid of it. So unfortunately, you know, like... Like I said in the presentation in the beginning... The, the camera... In the Dolphin emulator is a bit limited. Unfortunately, like we can't... We can't make camera puffs. We can't do extreme camera animation. I just really hope that one day they will actually open, they will actually give this feature. Like, so we can actually use it. Like, we can really make cool looking animations inside of GameCube games, like with a timeline and keyframes and whatnot. But until, until that day, we just have to make do with what we have. And that is uh, the basic camera, the basic free camera manipulator here. It's it's also not really for machinima purposes. It's just ma it was also mainly made you know just for level exploration. It was not necessarily also made for like machinima or anything. We're almost out of here. As you can see, uh, we have multiple rooms with scourge, and there's some sh some stuff that we need to take care of in all of them. Personally. Although this room looks kind of cool with all of the bookcases, it is really lackluster because as soon as you go up here, you can just see like there's nothing here. It's just all void. So although it looks pretty epic, uh, also it was not really worth it to make shots in here. So that's why there's barely shots of oh, oh, wrong spell of this area. And now they will try to attack you. Great, great stuff. How on earth do I get out of here? There's a book above my head. One more left. Where is it? Here we go. Now I need the Findo again. I'll just uh, get rid of Flapendo for now because I'm just going to, I'm just going to dodge stuff anyway. I don't really need it. And here we go. Here is just probably a chest anyway. I don't need it, so let's uh, let's just press the final button. Surprise, surprise! It's Goil. Here's Goil. Huh? That was hilarious. See, I'm using the same strategy again like using Expelliarmus and the and the analog sticks on my controller to steer the spell back to him in a specific direction
it, it almost always works. Now if I just press, it will just send it back to me. You know that you're dueling with your with like with the guys from Slytherin and then you see in these little rooms you see some ghosts wandering about. What's up? How are you doing? Look doesn't you don't look so hot, man. Like seriously. Like who's laughing now, bitch? Really, I really like all those tiny, you know, also those tiny little uh, rooms and stuff that they got here. Because of all of these additional rooms that are in the in the restricted section of the library, it just really makes the map look so fast and so big. Like it looks like there's just a whole nother part of the library out there. That's just so cool. Um, no, I still have to go there. Uh. Yeah. Luckily, the floor was made out of tiles, so I can actually uh. line them up. <laughs> that is a really neat little thing. Oh, and now I need now I need flipendo. That's how we get out of here. And you know, here's just, I guess, a storage room or something like that. Like, nobody cares. <laughs> just random things to store. More forbidden books that us second years can't read. And now, we're back here again. Did, did you just have to do that? I thought if I just run, the, he will leave me alone, but apparently he will not. So this is our new spell. It blows bubbles. That's all it does. Except for like a couple of levels, we'll not be using a lot. Like the majority of the of the spells that we'll be using are actually Flipendo, Defendo, Expelliarmus, and Incendio. I managed to get Hogwarts a history, but it wasn't easy. Next time, can you please go to the to the library, Hermione? Here you go. My goodness. There it is. I don't even get house points for this. Hogwarts was founded over a thousand years ago by the four greatest witches and wizards of the age: Roger Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw, and Salazar Slytherin. For a while, the four founders worked in harmony together, seeking out youngsters with magical abilities and bringing them to the castle to be educated. But a rift began to grow between Slytherin and the others. Slytherin believed that magical learning should be restricted to all magic families, and that no students of non magical parents should be admitted. Eventually, the spirit started and stopped the course. Hermione, I don't care. He built a secret chamber in the castle of which the other founders knew nothing. According to the legend, Slytherin sealed this chamber of secrets so that no one would be able to open it until his own true heir arrived at the school. The heir alone would be able to unseal the chamber, 
Place the horror within, and use it to purge us all of all of our burning study magic. Blimey! I always knew Salazar Slytherin was a twisted old loony, but I never knew he'd started all this pure blood mud blood stuff. It sounds to me that the horror within mentioned in the book is a monster that only the heir of Slytherin can control. But what kind of monster? The kind of monster that can petrify a ghost. All this talk of monsters has given me the creeps. I'm off to bed. Yeah, it's the only thing you can do, Ron. What, no thank you? Jesus Christ. Give me a second, I need to finish my snack. Technically, we could end it right here and move on to day three, but now that we got the Scourge spell, I kind of still want to go to Green Gods and get um, another card, basically. And I don't need to do this in the morning. First, of course, I'm going to save. Who needs a cleaning? <laughs> Sorry about that. And here we go. Open. That's got it. Hello, hello. I'm back again. And here is the Scourge chest we can open right now. Number 59. Gregory the Smarmy. And that's another duplicate of Gregory the Smarmy. We can actually use that to trade later on. So that's that. Let me check. There's like nothing left to do. So uh, I'm just going to end the day right here. I'm not even going back. Time for day three. Gryffindor. Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Hello Ron. Morning Ron. It's Transfiguration first thing, isn't it? Yeah, first floor. I'll meet you there. Transfiguration. So, uh, yeah, I will start my rant about how crappy this challenge is in just Hello, a bit. Harry. People are saying you're the heir of Slytherin. Is it true? And did you really order that snake to attack your classmates? None of it's true. Yeah, I did, you and dog. I didn't order the snake to attack my classmates. I told it to leave them alone. I'll believe you, Harry. Though thousands wouldn't. So again, we got a lot of stuff to do. Like I said before I was interrupted, I'm not necessarily happy about the about this uh, spell challenge that is coming up, the Eva, which is going to be the Evavor spell challenge. It's a, literally for a transfiguration spell that is absolutely fucking useless because besides 
uh, the spell challenge you will besides one or two spell challenges and one stone in the library you are literally not using it for anything so it was just literally put there because there was a transfiguration scene inside of uh, inside of the, the movie you know that they were like changing the 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 animals into water goblets that was the only and that was just because that that was kind of a big deal so that's why they put transfiguration in there so here's the scourge scourge chest number 71 queen maeve Legendary witch who trained young sorcerers in Ireland prior to the establishment of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Well, that's cool. So she is like the entire Hogwarts staff all in one before Hogwarts existed. That's cool. I like that. I always kind of like wonder, like, you know, what happened before Hogwarts? Because Hogwarts probably doesn't exist, never existed, like, till the dawn of time or something like that, you know? Can't get in there. It was probably, like... I don't know, but it's just you know that's kind of cool that there was a that there was something before Hogwarts. Here's another scourge chest. Daisy Dodderidge, number ninety nine. Number ninety nine, Daisy Dodderidge. First landlady of the Leaky Cauldron. I don't understand why that is relevant, but okay. Next up is probably the class, uh, you, know, you know it already, that was the classroom where we were yesterday. The Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. Because uh, on the podium where Gilderoy Lockhart was normally standing, there's actually another Scourge chest. Now we're coming back for it. But first, how about another loading screen? Hello. Have you ever thought about how much the word Slytherin actually sounds like what a snake does? Hold on. Oh, wait, I, uh... Oh. I'm going to... Hi. I don't feel very comfortable talking to you at the moment, Potter. Right in your face. Oh, look, now there's actually students here. Hey, what's up? You, you don't want to talk to me or not? I don't feel very comfortable talking to you at the moment, Potter. Did you oh, fuck off. I was just saying, Potter. You're, you're really fucking asking for it. I don't like. I'm, I don't know why I'm casting Alomora at him, but <laughs> it's just funny, you know, to to do that. Number ninety-three, Heathcote Barbary. Plays rhythm guitar with the popular wizarding band, the Scissor Sisters. I mean, the Weird Sisters. Yes, I'm gonna continue making that joke because I at least think it's funny. Bye, idiots. There's another chest. Here we go. Where is it? Here it is. An owl treat. Why do I need an owl treat? For what? Like... Burdock Muldoon. Chief of Wizards Council, 1448-50. I'm 
get out of here. There's too many ghosts here. Right, now that we're still here in the library, I gotta go ahead and fill up my potion vial. Because, you know, we got two now and one is empty. Because we're really going to need it. You're probably, you know, I'm like excessively hinting as to like how shit the upcoming spell challenge is going to be. And trust me, it's really going to be. But more about that later, once we're actually in there, because there is uh, two more cards that we need to get, and we also need to fix Neville's games, of course. We need to go one floor lower now. It should be in one of the classrooms. Hi, Ron, I know you want to say, oh, but the can't, you can't do it right now, because I am still doing my, I'm still doing Harry Potter stuff that you will not understand, so. Don't even try to comprehend Ron, really. No way through there. All right. Here we go. There he is. Number 84, Roland Kegg. Number 84, Roland Kegg. President of English Gobstones team, okay. And another 10 cards, so... My stamina has increased again. That's awesome. And the last one is right here. <laughs> I know that because I have opened this chest like hundreds of times and I also know that this is just as Pillywickle. <laughs> I opened the chest too many times. Number 67. Justice Pillywickle. Ah, number 67. I didn't know the number, but I didn't know it was Justice Pillywickle. Celebrated head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. So how many, how many beans do I got now? Zero. Okay. I need beans. I need a lot of beans. All right, I'm back. Uh, still hungry as ever. Dude, give me those four beans. One more. Here we go, 100. Okay, awesome. feeling really tired today maybe it's all those midnight feasts I don't look I don't really care what you guys do after bedtime you know that's that's up to you I will clean your conscience uh, nah, games every time I'm here I'm like what am I doing here hey Goyle what's up uh, mud blood. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho. Uh, library fight. Yeah, look what I got. Scourge. Three hundred, two fifty, two hundred, three ten. Okay, great. Hello, Neville. 
I'll just always start with gnome dunking because that was the easiest one. Number 21, Lord Stoddard Withers. Breeder of flying horses. Bye guys. See you tomorrow. This like gnome, gnome throwing is just literally like maxing out the throw and then just le letting it go at the right moment, that's all. Oh boy, gnome tossing. I am not really sure if I'm going to be able to do it, and it's probably going to be really expensive. The background for today is not really that interesting. You know, we're just here in some random... Here is an invisible wall that we can get into. Bet you can't beat the current gnome throwing record, Potter. Why don't you have a go? It'll cost 20 beans. 20 beans, my goodness. <laughs> I better make this happen then. So where are the rings? Here. I'm the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Boom! I am the Lord of the Rings. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> it, it, it only works once. <laughs> Let's see if I can uh, get a better high score. Nah. That's the last one? Okay. Let's see if I can maybe add like uh, 50 more. Here we go. You managed to beat the record, Harry, and win a wizard card. Yeah. Number 17, Morgan Le Fay. King Arthur's half-sister, dark sorcerer's enemy of Merlin. Wow, Neville, you just don't under, you don't you don't want to know what just happened. I just beat like gnome dunking in one go. Furry race is left. So is there any interesting... Ah, oh, okay. This kind of looks like the, the little point of view, like from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Like all the first years are having uh, their flying lessons here, and then uh, Neville loses his rememberal, and then Harry and Draco are like flying on their brooms through here. That's just, that's just kind of what it makes me look like. Makes me feel like... Fancy race, Harry. Sure. It'll cost 10 beans. 10 beans is fine. I don't care. I almost missed it here. <laughs> For winning the race, you get a wizard card. Number 31, Balfour Blaine. Oh, that's an, uh, another duplicate of Balfour Blaine, okay. I'm confident I'll beat you this time, Harry. Let's have another race. It'll cost 15 beans. Sure, let's do it. Oh, I don't like this perspective. Oh, whoa, she fell down her boom.
second race, second race. Well done for winning, Harry. Have a wizard card. Number 33, Bowman Marjorie Banks. The pioneer of herbology and collector of many rare and magical flowers discovered gillyweed. I'm confident I'll beat you this time, Harry. Let's have another race. It'll cost 15 beans. I managed. <laughs> Here's a wizard card. That's the most important. Number 34, Donahan Tremlett. Bass player with the popular wizarding band, the Scissor Sisters. And so with that, we have finished Neville's games yet again. Uh, let's see, the potion files are ready. First, I'm going to save. Let's make some space on my desk here. I thought you guys need more cleansing, so... Good morning. Today we shall learn the transfiguration spell known as Avifors. Avifors will allow you to transform small objects, such as the parts of this statue, into birds. This is achieved like Boring. so. Avifors! You will now see that a crawl space has been revealed in the wall. Beyond this is the Avifors challenge. Mr. Potter, come forward, please. Give that poor son of a bitch a chair. Yes, Professor? The Avifor spellbook is located on the other side of this crawl space. Find it, and the spell will be yours. You must then return here to the classroom. Yes, Professor. See, he's Up also done go. with all this shit. Like, you can hear it from his voice. He's so done. Now here we go, the Avifor spell challenge. Although it wouldn't look like it, but this is really a part in the game. This is an ugly part of the game, not in in terms of graphics, because this game is this map is absolutely gorgeous. I really love it, but th this level is just really where the game hits the the most awful spot imaginable. It's a beautiful environment, I mean, especially, you know, the purple combined with the emerald green. You know, the really, like, venomous colors in here is awesome. <clears throat> and also all the stone. But the spell, first of all, is just useless. Because, like I said, you just use it twice after this. And this was just put in here because uh, of the transfiguration scene in the film. Um. There is, uh, in the next room, the camera will be extremely broken. Like, it's extremely frustrating to get through that part of the game. It is... Like, the camera is not working, and you have to do so much effort to get this spell. And the spell is also so useless. So, I'm just like, why didn't you guys just use this environment and just put a different spell in there that is more usable? I suspect we're gonna we're going to die a lot, so that's why it's good that we actually got two potion vials. And I really always have to mentally charge myself to take on this level, which is once again I find that a shame because it's an incredibly 
beautiful map, but the gameplay here is broken and... I mean, it looks beautiful and then the experience is just absolutely trash. It's trash, really. This is the, the part in the game where I was stuck as a kid so many damn times that I got so frustrated and fed up with the game that I started to... Uh, that I just, you know, gave up and just started all over again. That's why I... that's why I, I'm so familiar with the borough, because every time I was stuck here, I would just quit. You know? That's just it. Oh, crap. So there's a couple of things here. Uh, there's two opening, like two chambers that we need to open with Scourge, which I also find weird. Like, how does McGonagall know that we went to the restricted section of the library and got Scourge? Like, who told her? And she just quickly implemented it into her... Uh, into her like a uh, little spell challenge here. I gotta say I absolutely love this skull. You know how they made the skull? It's just absolutely awesome. It's so well done. Let's uh, let's open this up and uh, open up the door. So if you think these ghosts are annoying, like I can tell you right now, there will be more ghosts and they will also be more, even more annoying. Number two. So, an example of a shot that I made. I'm just going to give you, like, I'm just going to give, like, one example here because um, I just really, you know, I, I really wanted to create a shot with, uh, with the skull, of course, because the skull is, like, so, like, cleverly fought, like, that I really wanted to do that. So, what you need to do is just literally put Harry here and like go up so everything is loaded into RAM. Then move down. I'm just gonna make the camera a bit faster like this. <clears throat> Look up and then zoom in. So you actually get like this, but you also get like all of the ghosts moving about like it, it really makes it so creepy like you got a bit a bit of the chain hanging there you got the skull you got the green flames in there you got the the stairs that look really gothic and really creepy and then you also have like here you got the the this the the ghosts moving on and about that's what i really wanted to do like this really in one nutshell just like tell like shows the the atmosphere of this map and of course I also want to have a look and you know made a shot with him but it's not really that important <clears throat> okay let's move on to the next room where things get interesting not Right, welcome to the mausoleum. That's what the level's called. You can probably see where this is going. Is you have to jump from ledge to ledge, or sometimes you got a wall sneak and stuff like that. I would just, I would literally like, I would be so happy if I could just use no clip and just go up here, you know, and call it a day. But I can't. <laughs> I can't. I have to play by my own rules, and I have to be a good. Uh, I have to be a good player. So that means I frustration is going to be part of our game today. 
So the mausoleum, this is basically a place, this is like a, a little chamber, a dark chamber that we go in there later and then uh, we push something out so we can actually get on here. You have to jump from here to here to here to here and shot wise. Of course, you know, the main, the main thing to show here is literally the mausoleum itself. So I just went ahead and like the only interesting shot here, literally, and also that makes it look really strong. Like it's a really, it's like just this, like showing the mausoleum in all of its glory and together with these chains hanging from the walls and with, with, with you know, the green, the emerald green and the pur dark purple influences and you know the light coming from here especially if you wanted you could go a little bit closer and then just you know move over the chains for like a stronger effect that just really emphasizes you know like where are we like we're it, we're just simply into some other creepy another creepy place again like with a mausoleum with chains you know we put the the emphasis on the chains right here but also all of the stuff in the background is also se severely helping. Okay, so having said that, let's go down. There are no ghosts yet, but there will be now. Three ghosts, and they made me lose my beans. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. I don't even know why why I'm still having beans anyway. Um, the previous one didn't have the previous spell challenge didn't have a, a, a wizard card. For this one, there is one. It's, it's right dark in here. here. Maybe I should use Lumos. In the dark, and it's so easy to miss, but you can probably not get this again if you don't get it now. Number 85, <clears throat> Blenheim Stork. Expert on the non-magical and author of many books, including people who notice a study and awareness of magic in the non-magical. Huh, so researcher, that's cool. And we gotta use Lumos again. Uh, I guess I can get rid of Alomora for one uh, for for a couple of seconds. So here is where things start to get frustrated because uh, not only are you losing energy, like health, because you have to jump from ledge to ledge and you will fail most likely, but also because of these bastards running it about which like often just really 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 just they're really like they're really really hardcore sometimes like even when you are wall sneaking they will sometimes just hit you oh jesus I see what you did there. Ah! How come? How is that even possible? Like. <sighs> Alright, bye. So stupid. Oh, Jesus. You fucking cunt. <sighs> oh, of course. I can literally make like an entire... Yeah, I'm going to fall. Why? Why am I back here? didn't register my uh, there's another one coming I guess not can you run dickweed okay okay we're back at the point where we were before so I have to jump to the right basically oh oh ah I, I almost missed both I gotta jump to the right stop ganging up on me 
I gotta jump to the right because the last time when I went to the left, it didn't work. Okay. I made it! Oh, that's a cheap shot, McGonagall, really. You had to do that. Oh. It's over. It's finally over. I made it. I made it, I made it, I made it. Oh my god. I was so afraid that this was going to be like uh, a five hour, like a, a three hour stream where I was trying to fix all of this. So I just want to get out of here. I'm going to get the spell. And I just want to get out. Most useless spell ever. Not even gonna read it. Okay, so where can I go now? Like, I'm literally not even doing anything useful with it. It's just for some puzzle bullshit to, you know, to... The only reason why these poor bastards are transfiguring is just simply because of some puzzles. It's just... Alright, so now we're here again, and once again, I mean, just look at this map, how gorgeous it is. It just looks the, the purple and this kind of stone, you know, and the green, the emerald green, like the really, like, almost Avada Kedavra green. It just works so well, but it's just, this spell challenge is technic gameplay-wise so broken that it's just no fun. What is on here? Transfiguration, okay. So I have to slide down. here as well because I kind of I basically I just have to wall sneak across the room and I'm vulnerable I cannot defend myself and this is just so cheap it's so extremely cheap I don't like it okay and that is one area now I gotta go back here. Oh, okay. She's ignoring me, that's good. Okay, I'm going to no clip on here. I'm not going back, really. Don't judge me, really. <laughs> I've had enough of this spell challenge. I wanna get out of here. Aim, Harry, aim. Oh, okay. She ignored me, that's great. That's nice, that's nice. So, don't get me wrong, like, it's not like there's not enough cool shots that you can make in this challenge. It's just that this challenge just gets on my nerve so much that I just don't, that gameplay wise, I just don't really want to deal with it. I just want to get this over, I want to get over with, like, that's all. Okay, so time for the final boss. 
Uh, I need Expelliarmus again. We need some. We need to play some gargoyle dueling, or if, or like if how other people call it. Like some people call it death tennis. So let's just uh, go play a game of death tennis then with this gargoyle. What? Where the fuck did it go? Send it back to another, whatever. Oh. <laughs> it went, it went, it just went completely past me. Can you? Aim, you twat. Yeah, I'm not going to fall for that again. And, oh, I'm dead, I wanted to say, but I'm not. I just need, we're both at our, like, our last piece of health. Can you just, like, play death tennis normally like any other gargoyle? What's up with you, really? can ever force this thing and now he sits on that little switch and then the door opens so like oh my god don't tell me I have to oh no I'm going to die while doing that you know that okay I'm already dead One last wall sneak, and we're out of here, finally. Except the Quidditch match against Slytherin the rest of the game, I don't have any problems with it. It's just that this this was something I was not looking forward to. Forty house points for Gryffindor. That is all for today. Class dismissed. Yeah, I had to do all the work. You guys were just chilling. Quidditch match? Like. There Her you are, Potter. Harry has to do everything. Got a very important match against Hufflepuff, have you? I'll meet you outside the stadium. Yeah, yeah. Things get rough against Hufflepuff. Three hundred and fifty house points. So I have three ten. I got forty extra. I do have to say, like, I'm not really sure, like, if this. If this uh, classroom actually rep represents the classroom as it was in the in the film, but it looks pretty damn cool.
it, I think it does a little bit. You know, it, it does represent it a little bit. And here, of course, you know, a really interesting perspective that you could do was, is, of course, the McGonagall perspective. Like, if you just, uh, like, if you just, what the hell is going on here? Like, if you just go here, like, to the height of this, and you go up a little bit and go down and you look up and this is this is basically the McGonagall perspective a little bit higher <laughs> and that's pretty cool I like it you know I've, I've used it also quite a bit in Trigon I made a couple of like rider shots over the table so you actually get like a wide overview of, uh, of the classroom because this classroom is really really nice like you can also make some cool it, like you can really focus on the details here with the books or uh, with this thing on the wall. Uh, where, where is it here? Like the thing on the wall, the light coming through, the candles. <laughs> Trust me, I don't want to go back in there ever again. Yeah, yeah, okay. There's actually another wizard card that we can get now in the library because we have this useless spell. Here we go. And now we can get in here. of Gorsmore. One-eyed humpbacked witch famous for developing a cure for dragon pox. Okay, let's get out of here. Oh, there's another thing here, but that is probably health oh. item. Oh, a chocolate frog. More sugar, that's exactly what I need. This school just understand, understands me so well. Hello. No, you don't want to talk? Okay, no, fuck off. What am I doing? I have to go to the Quidditch. <laughs> I have to go to the Quidditch Stadium. I really don't want to talk to you right now. Okay, then I'll transfigure you into a bird. Talking about transfiguration, I'm going to save right now. I must. I cannot deal with that again. Hello there and welcome to the first match of the season. Hufflepuff versus Gryffindor! Hufflepuff had their strongest lineup for years, and Gryffindor will be relying on the skills of their star seeker, Harry Potter! Nice catch there by the Gryffindor chaser. Wonderful catch by Alicia Spinett. That was a bone-breaking collision between the two players. Excellent passes to Gryffindor. That's a goal for Gryffindor! What a fantastic catch by Spinett. The passing's really accurate today. Great save! And Hufflepuff scores! The quaffle caught by Spinett. Okay, now it goes here. Alright, let's do this. Wow. I suppose you're worn out after that. 
I am. I'm going to bed. You... Ron Weasley. You are, like, you're really... Let's just keep it at that you're really something, really. The only thing you did was sit in a classroom and wait for me to get a spell. And you've been cheering me on and now you're tired. You didn't do anything. It is that you will save my ass later in the game because otherwise I would be so pissed at you. Otherwise you would win the prize for the most useless sidekick character in the game. I'm just gonna get tell you that right here. Okay, so how many house points do I have now? 390. Yes, I actually, you actually get house points for winning uh, Quidditch because I had 350. Because I now I have 310 plus 40 from Transfiguration plus another 40 for winning the Quidditch match. Let's just have a look. Wigan Weld Potion, okay. So this one, um, just go to the common room, notice board, you have, to, you can find the, the lost items, you get house points, I know that. I did that already. Okay, so, one book's there. There's two books here. Everforce is useful for adding weight where weight is required. Or for removing the downward pressure of certain smaller objects. That's a lie because I'm not using Everforce like that. So maybe they wanted to do that in development, in early development, but it just didn't turn out the way that was. And this is about Wig and Weld Potion to always carry several files. So that basically this is foreshadowing as to how hard this, the Everforce challenge was supposed to be. Speaking about potion vials, uh, the last two things that I gotta do, let me see. I went this, I got the wizard cards, I did Neville's games, I went to Gringotts now. I did the Everforce spell challenge, I got the card, I went to the library, I went to uh, the Quidditch stadium. Yes, okay. Like, now there's like five people. Yes, we're going to the library to refill all of our uh, uh, all of our Wigan Well potion vials, and then we're going to max out our beans. Get out of here and refill our potion vials.
So far, everything is maxed out with stink pellets and our potion vials. We actually only need one more spell. So we're done with day three and let's end the day and let's see how much house points we got and the damage we've done to our competitors. Gryffindor. Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw. Okay. Let me guess. Slytherin. What? Nothing. Okay, great. Great. <laughs> you don't hear me complaining about that. Let's first trigger the cutscene here. You're not going to believe this, Harry. Hermione wants you to meet her in the girls' bathroom on the second floor. Bow, she says she's bow, got a plan bow. to find out who the heir of Slytherin is. Really? Yes. Now hurry up. Girls' bathroom, second floor. Isn't that supposed to be haunted? Well, thanks for the heads up, Harry. So, it's time to go to uh, Fred and George. I got 90 beans, which equals to three Famous Witches and Wizards cards. Jazz music stops. Flibbity jibbit. <laughs> he doesn't even see me. How much is his Edgar Stroger card? 30 Bertie box every flavor beans. Okay. Albert Grunyon, the inventor of the Dung Bomb. How much is that? 30 Bertie box every flavor beans. I need these. The Archibald Alderton card. How much is that? 30 Bertie box every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Ah, Archibald Alderton. Now there's a man who knew about explosions. Kaboom. <laughs> Number 29, Archibald Alderton. Famous for blowing up the hamlet of Little Dropping in Hampshire whilst attempting to magically mix a birthday cake. What the hell, man? This is so random. <laughs> Uh, I re you really got. I really gotta love that. You know, Take a look so around, random. Potter. This Beatrix Bloxon card. How much is it? Thirty Bertie box every flavor beans. All right, let's I'd get like it. I'd like to buy that, please. Beatrix Bloxon. If only we had her talent. Apparently, one of her readers was continuously sick for three whole weeks. Nice, and another ten. Cards, so my stamina is improved. Author of the Toadstool Tales, a series of children's books since banned because they have been found to cause nausea and vomiting. Okay, so there should. Yes, here it is. There should be one last card for me to buy. The limited edition Bertie Bot card. What does that cost? 30 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Bertie Box, an excellent purchase, Harry. His real genius was in the invention of the unreleased dog spit flavored bean. Blah. Number 69, Bertie Bot. Nice. Inventor of Bertie Bot's every flavor beans. He, oh, he's still alive, actually. That's cool. I like that. Inventor of Bertie Bot's every flavor beans. Feel free to spend as long as you like it. Yeah, I did. I'm leaving. Huh? Huh? <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. got so many cards already we're really going strong here except for this page is a little bit empty this page as well but we're really getting there all right time to save
save completed. I uh, I still want to get like 60 more beans so that I can find I can buy the final two cards from Fred and George, and then we actually can complete another goal for our playthrough. So let's just go ahead and do that. I just thought like it's better to do the extra effort now and get like get like the 60 beans in order to you know to tick off one of our one of our many goals that we've set for this playthrough because that ends the stream a little bit better you know if you if you finish it with another goal completed so why not Edgar Stroger card. 30 Bertie box every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Edgar Stroger, eh, Harry? Inventor of the sneaker scope. What a genius. Number 47. Edgar Strugler. Inventor of the sneaker scope. Albert Grunion. The inventor of the dung bomb. How much is that? 30 Bertie box every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Ah, Elberic Grunion. Where would we be without his outstanding contribution to explosive dung? Number 97, Elberic Grunion. And here we go. Elberic Elber Grunion, inventor of the dung bomb. As you can see, I have uh, now successfully completed everything from Fred and George Feel except for this spend one. As long as you like it. Uh, for, for this one and for uh, the stink pellets because these are renewable. Basically, you can always buy these. They will never run out of stock. But for the rest of the stock, everything has been purchased. Luminous balloons are a great way to distract prefects and annoy Percy. Those are like multi-buy, so that's why you can just get them infinite, like infinitely, basically. So we've completed our second goal, and that is to buy everything from Fred and George. During the end of the previous stream, part one on Wednesday, we finished uh, all of the um, lost items. So we're on quite a roll here. Save one more time. Before we go to the girls' bathroom on the second floor, we need to go to Gringotts because we need to check, you know, what the books, what the hints have in store for us tonight. Notebooks here. Oh, there's another Froggy. And I believe there's another book here. So we got two books tonight. Right? Like there's no nothing else here. Yeah. Let's read the first one. If a distraction is required, one need only release a luminous balloon into a room and watch the occupants make a beeline for the noisily intrusive object. Okay, so this is basically telling us like we can use uh, luminous balloons if we want to. And this is book number two. The polyjuice potion has become a favorite with those seeking to change their appearance. Okay, this is not really a hint. This is just telling us that tonight we'll have to deal with a polyjuice potion. And that's it, there's nothing more. So yesterday we went ahead and we actually bought everything from Fred and George already. So uh, we actually completed like a second goal for the stream already by everything from Fred and George. So that's great. We don't really necessarily need to like save up 
beans for that uh, for for that purpose. But of course, we still need to get beans for uh, for all of the games because we still need to like play games like one or two days, I think. Basically, <laughs> wow. Well, it's not me, I hope. Do you think it could be Draco? Harry, shut up. One of us needs to get Malfoy to answer a few questions without him realizing it's us. That's what I was thinking, which is why I've been making a polyjuice potion. What's polyjuice potion? It transforms you into somebody else. One of us could change into a scenery, and Malfoy would probably tell us anything we want to know. I managed to sneak a bit of Goyle's hair during Transfiguration class and mix it into this. That's it, Harry, and you're just like Goyle. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, great. Exactly what we need right now. Oh. Harry, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Try and find Malfoy. He's usually lurking about the dungeons this time of night. Sure. Let's go. Anything you gotta say, Myrtle? You're not supposed to be in here. Oh. Oh. So there's only like one thing left to do right now, and that is, uh, since we're Slytherin now, and that is to make sure that Slytherin loses some house points <laughs> because they're getting close, dangerously close to us, and I don't really like that. We can't have that. We need to win the cup, so let's get rid of the competition. Hey, so, uh, There's hey, can I ask you something? Uh, Go back to the dungeons! Aww. Hey, excuse me, bro. 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 Oh, oh no. Get back to the dungeons! Like, they're not deducting house points from me or something, or what? Like... Is there something wrong with the game? Is this like some weird RNG going on right now? Hey, dude. Huh? Uh, I can't expel the arm, is it? You shouldn't be yes. up at night. Five points from Slytherin. Only five? Oh, you can do better than that. Ow. Oh. Locomotor Mortis. Go back to the dungeons. <gasps> How difficult how difficult is it to make Slytherin lose some house points? How about you? Huh? Get back to the dungeons! Why aren't you deducting house points? Hey! You! Go back to the dungeons! Yes, but you need to deduct house points from me. <laughs> Bro, deduct my house points. Maybe I just need to be further away. Go back to the dungeons! We need to go to the dungeons, and that's basically like a little place where we can only where we can only go tonight and also at the end of the game, then everything opens up and you can actually go there. So let's go. Time to go to the dungeons. Oh. Can I... <laughs> can I pass? Thanks. Here we are. We need to examine the prefects, like what they're doing right now. 
and we uh, need to get some uh, wizard cards here and I also need to show you around with some shots. So shot wise, uh, I am going to tell you this right now, it's a bit of a dull area. Like you can see the, the ceiling is just like a copy, a carbon copy of literally everything and there's just only like a couple, wait what? There's just like a couple of uh, stands here that kind of makes it look like a maze. Like if I go here and I'll just go up a little bit and I, uh, I put the custom textures on. Like, there's not really much going on here. In that case, you know, they really try to make the, the Slytherin stuff look as dull as possible. It's, it, there's really like nothing going on. Like I, I probably like went ahead and I just made a couple of shots in here because there's not a lot of stuff that you can do here. The, it's just one square room with a couple of like cloth, like uh, stands in here with stuff and just prefects. So basically, it's just supposed to be like a maze, a maze stealth mission. One thing um, that I did found in kind of interesting was to create a. Whoa, whoa. Here we go. One thing that kind of added a bit of uh, of mystery and like some kind of uh, tense, a bit of tense uh, tenseness to it was uh, this kind of shot, you know, that you are in front of the bars and then actually you can go ahead and just go through the bars, go in between the walls and you actually see this little lantern. Eventually, of course, there will be like a, pre a prefect walking past here. So this is also kind of an interesting shot that I ended up making. But other than that, also even in the place where Malfoy is, there's like, there's just literally nothing going on here. And instantly the camera becomes dog shit again. It's absolutely ridiculous. So we got to go ahead and we have to, first of all, we, we have to uh, get two wizard cards here and we really have to study these bastards as pattern. Actually, I have never had any house points deducted in this level, but I just My really says that only pure shut up. Like us should be at Hogwarts. Don't you agree? Your dad's an asshole. My father says that only pure bloods like us should be at Hogwarts. Don't you agree? Number 43, Cyprian Yaudel. Okay, this is another duplicate, this time of Cyprian Yaudel. And let's go ahead and find the other one. That one was actually around here. Yeah, here it is. That one should be Dorcas Wellbeloved, number 86. Number 86, Dorcas Wellbeloved. Founder of the Society for Distressed Witches. Okay, um, what I'm going to do right here is I'm actually going to, uh, I kind of want to just have a look at them, like what they're, what are they doing? I'll just go ahead and, so this dude is probably... He's going in here. Yeah, okay, so he's not a threat. Like, once he's gone, we should be all clear. This dude... This dude is the main issue. Like, we should be able to just... We should be able, once he is gone, we should actually be able to go here, because he will just, like, walk on and about here. So we should be good. So that dude is, like, the main issue. Okay. Draco's down here. Yes, you made your point, dude. You made your point. Keep leaving alone. All right, I just uh, we can just go in here, and now the camera is all good all of a sudden. So you know, Goyle, I'm surprised the Daily Prophet hasn't reported what's going on here. I suppose Dumbledore's trying to hush it all up. He'll be sacked if it doesn't stop soon. Father's 
always said old Dumbledore's the worst thing that ever happened to Hogwarts. He loves that non-magical lot. A decent headmaster would never have let that jumped-up Granger mudblood in. And as for Saint Potter, the mudblood's friend, he's another one with no proper wizard feeling. And people think he's the Slytherin heir. I wish I knew who it is. I could help them. Oh, you must have some idea who's behind it all. No, I <laughs> small no fairy, really How many small. times do I have to tell you? <laughs> but I know one thing. Last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a mudblood girl died. So I bet it's only a matter of time before one of them's killed this time. Anyway, uh, Draco, I'd best be going. Going where? Uh, to the hospital wing. Yes, that's it, the hospital wing. I've got a stomach ache, <laughs> and I need to get something. Smooth going. operator. Get going, Coyle, before your fat belly explodes. I'd better get out of here, and fast. Okay, he's going there, so that should be fine. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Wow. That was just plain easy. That was cool. Oh, sorry, my man. I'll transfigure you into a bird. Oh, it goes right through him, right? He's a ghost. Sorry about that. someone who was here at Hogwarts 50 years ago, when the chamber was last opened. Bye, Harry. Bye, bastards. Letting poor Harry do all the work again. Alright, so we're done. We can end the day. I just uh, So, look, what do you think about it? Leave me alone. So, that was night three. Uh, gameplay wise it's not really the longest of them all it's actually like probably the shortest night in the game but um, yeah that was night three time to go to day four let's see how much points we deducted from Slytherin it's only like five so it's kind of it probably it's gonna look kind of hilarious when they only deduct five points from them <laughs> Hufflepuff Ravenclaw Slytherin Huh? What is going on? Like, there is really something wrong with the game, it seems like, because they didn't want to deduct any points, and now they just deducted five, and the points are not deducted at all. Uh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We're like in front anyway, so we're we're currently full steam ahead to win the house cup anyway. So let's just get this over Hello, with. Ron. What class have we got first today? It's charms with Flitwick. I'll meet you on the second floor. Charms. The where we will learn the final spell. We will learn incendio. Actually get two additional cards right now and we can still get a lot of extra cards with uh, Neville's games what the hell are you looking at for some reason you make me really nervous Potter yeah because I can transfigure you into a bird and trust me I will <laughs> All right, better uh, did I save I don't know like you could really make a running gag of how many times I saved during a stream, and I just don't really want to lose my progress. Talk to my shields. Oh. 
Now we can go back to the girls' bathroom because uh, we can actually also go there during the day. And during the day there's also two additional uh, wizard cards that we can get. So let's just go there right now. We just saw how it looks like during the night, now we get to see it during the day. And here it is. Actually, it looks kind of similar to uh, to Fred and George's shop because it's also like a circular room. So there is one wizard card here. Number thirteen. Andros, Andros the Invincible. Invincible. It's uh, another duplicate card. That's great. We will need those to actually get the final cards. And the second card that we can get is right here. In the toilet for some reason. Number 41. Godric Gryffindor. <laughs> Co-founder of Hogwarts gave his name to one of the four Hogwarts houses. I just find it kind of interesting that uh, that the card for Godric Gryffindor can be found inside of a girl's bathroom. Yeah, let's let just you know let that sink in for a moment. <laughs> let's just uh, basically go ahead. Hi, Ron. I'm not. I'm not going to deal with you right now. I need to go gamble. I need to go gamble with my old buddy Neville. Let's just max it out again because I think it will only become more expensive right now. So let's just max everything out. This shouldn't be a problem. Did I actually fill the potion vault? Yeah, okay, I did. Great. Okay. I need two beans from you, my man. Okay, here we go. We're ready to go. We're ready to gamble. I just went to my secret stash. Do you guys have a problem with me or what? That Ginny Weasley's been behaving very strangely. Uh, Gnome Dunking. Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> 270. Okay, let's see if I can beat that. Here we go. No, okay, there's no new cards anymore for gnome bunking. On gnome tossing and on broom racing, so let's just go with racing first. Interesting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Since we're currently in day four, uh, all of the games will be actually starting from here. And the cool part is, is that we can actually venture quite, you know, quite far. Like, we can walk all the way here, like normally during other days we were kind of limited in our movement, but during this day, this is like the only day in the game during day 4 that we're actually able to go pretty far. And, you know, in combination with, um, with uh, the first person mode, we don't even actually really need that much of camera manip right here. But, you know, you can just really make some beautiful, like pictures of the of the castle here like for example with these three wait let me turn on the custom textures real quick like with the three towers here you can really like make some hard to reach you can really make some shots from some hard to reach spots so that so that is why all of the the, the places where all of these games are taking place are quite interesting because they they will scatter throughout the castle like every single day and that gives you more opportunities to actually make interesting machinima sh like shots for your machinima in here on the other hand remember that boathouse that we went to like two days ago uh, with our broom now we can actually walk there this is like also like something of day four and like look at how far we can go like 
we were just up here. And now you can, like, even if you wanted to make it a bit wider, like, now you can just literally see the entire castle from a pretty cool angle. I really like that. So, like, some of the, some of the more obscure shots, so to speak, were of the castle, like, from really far away, like, like, uh, oh, wait, this is in, in, like this, for example. Those were just really made during day four when I was, like, uh, working on the games. So here's the boathouse again, and this also allows me to make some better, allows you to make some better shots of here. So now we can actually walk here. Still, there's nothing going on here, and we can't really do anything. But it's a, it's a cool little, it's a cool little Easter egg they got going here. I like it. Okay, I'm not going to walk all the way back. <laughs> it's way too far. Here we go. Oh, I just lost my beans. Oh boy, go get my beans back. What? Uh, I lost two beans. That was not really a smart move. Hi, what do you say to a race? It'll cost 20 beans. Okay, look, here we go. 20 beans. So now everything is extremely expensive. <laughs> In the beginning, it was like 5 beans or something, if I remember correctly. Now it's 20. From today on, things are getting like really expensive. Tomorrow as well, I think raises are going to be like 30 beans or something. So then we need to we need to actually max out our beans just to do those free races. And if we lose one of them, <laughs> oh boy, we got to go back to the bean bonus room. Okay, that was uh, better than I expected. Here we go. You won this time, Potter. Here's a famous witches and wizards card. Number 35, Bowman Wright. Famous for developing the golden snitch. Okay, that's cool. Let's do another race. Fancy another race, Harry? To see sure. if you can beat me again, it'll cost 20 beans. Oh, again 20 beans. Getting close to me now. I'm just going to. I'm just going directly here. <laughs> just make it better save this. Sorry. <laughs> you won this time, Potter. Here's a famous witches and wizards card. Number eighty-four, Roland Keg. President of English Gobstone Steam. Another uh, another duplicate here. Okay. Let's do the final for today. Come on, Potter. Let's race again. I know I'll win this time. It'll cost thirty. Thirty beans, beans this time. Okay. Oof, I hope I have enough for uh, for gnome for what is it for gnome Let's tossing later? Out. I won't lose this time. It'll cost thirty beans. So we already met like the thirty beans here. Uh, this is the roller coaster race, the sprint race, <laughs> literally sprinting. Like, just look how close these rings are to each other. It's ridiculous. Alright, I'm now in first. Something tells me this is going to be really close. Here we go. Alright. For winning the race, 
You get a wizard card. And you get a wizard card. Number and you 37, get a wizard card. Cassandra Vablatsky. Cassandra Vablatsky celebrated Seer an offer of unfogging the future. And it looks like we also got an additional 10 cards now, so our stamina will increase, which is always welcome considering we got another night mission going up. Awesome. Alright, uh, we got Gnome Tossing left. I hope it is 20 beans or something. I really hope I don't have to go back. Bet you can't throw a gnome further than the current record, Potter. Fancy a try? It'll cost 30 Oof. beans. Okay, I don't have enough. Oh, I got 60 already. I'm kind of daydreaming here. Let's go. At least we got like two tries with gnome throwing. I swear, guys, really. Ever heard a mandrake scream? Me neither. Okay. Apparently, Gilderoy Lockhart won Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award. Good for him. Nobody gives a shit. He's like the Monopoly man of Hogwarts games, really. Okay, I got the money. Why don't you have a go at beating the current known throwing record, Harry? It'll cost 30 beans. 30 beans, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> 200 points I need. Okay, let's do it. Alright, uh, that was uh, a bunch of bullshit. Boom! Oh! Okay. Well, that was uh, <laughs> quite interesting. I just need 10 more points. If I can just get some. Alright. 380 points. That's probably the highest I've ever gotten. Oh, I can still get more. Okay. Wow. <laughs> 520. You managed to beat the record, Harry. That is insane. A wizard card. That is insane. That is the highest, probably the highest points I've ever gotten with uh, with. Uh, Number nineteen. Gnome, Newt's what is it Commander. called? Gnome tossing. Newt's commander celebrated offer of fantastic beasts and where to find them. All right. So the, 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 those were the games for today. Okay, we got the cards, we beat his games. It's time to go to Gringotts. There are free books from what I can see right now. Let's first get some, let's get a nice sugar rush. Ordinarily, she would have used Elamora to open the door, but in this case, her wand had snapped and was unusable. I don't really, I never really understood what this hint was supposed to be. Maybe the hint was like that we had to buy Elamora, but we did that long time ago already. Slowing down when there's an obstacle is better than attempting a wild maneuver in order to avoid it. Okay, that's a great hint. I can definitely use that later against uh, Ravenclaw. Fire crabs can be attacked with Flipendo, and then you can kill them with Incendio. Okay, that's great. Also, basically tells us that we're going to get the Incendio uh, spell today. Time for the final spell challenge of the game.
Hey Ron, are you still alive? I'm finally here. I'm ready to go. Good morning, class. Today's lesson will most assuredly involve us in learning how to cast the appositely named Bluebell Flames. The proper incantation for this charm is Incendio. You will now see that a crawl space has been revealed. Harry Potter, room. please come this forward and do all the work challenge. for the class. Mr. Potter, if you wouldn't mind coming forward, please. The Incendio spellbook is located on the other side of the crawl space. Once you've managed to collect it, the Incendio charm will be yours. You must then return here to the classroom. Do you understand, Mr. Potter? I do, Professor. Very well then. Off you jolly well go. I've never heard anybody say that actually. I've I have mad respect for Flitwick because he's like a charms master, but don't say off you jolly well go. It makes me lose all respect for you. <laughs> so before we're going to play it, uh, shots related, like Trigon related, I can be really really quick about this. This was the least interesting area for me to, uh, to work on in Trigon because uh, there were just a couple of hallways and that's basically it and like I could make some interesting shots here with the like with the hogs here and with, uh, with the lava uh, like flowing through this little gap. And of course, also the the devil's face on here. That was kind of interesting. And of course, you know, with the flames here. But that was kind of it. You know, there was not a lot of other stuff to do. Especially later on in the challenge, there's really like some kind of weird uh, rooms that are just all over the place, and they really don't look interesting. They just look really dull. It's like the, I'm talking about the room with the four chambers, where we'll, where we will actually go really soon. Um, yeah, so I will not be doing a lot of camera manipulation here. I'll just uh, go ahead and play the game, get this over with. Great, I just lost my beans. Seriously, now you're triggering? You couldn't trigger earlier? Now you triggered me. Whoa! the left analog stick again. Goodbye. I think there's also nothing else to collect in this spell challenge, just like the Expelliarmus spell, there is not like anything to... There's not really anything that we can collect here when it comes to uh, wizard cards. At least I wasn't able to find one in the past. So let's get through here. <laughs> There's actually Bertie Bot's beans here. I don't really need them, whatever. Like this little area kind of look cool, the stairs. It kind of looks like a pyramid if you'd look up, if I can look up, if I have, if I'm too far away. Like here, you know, it kind of looks like a pyramid. That, that was cool. Like that was a cool part of the challenge, but it's just a bit all over the place. And I don't really care much for this challenge anyway. Like, this is the room that I'm talking about. Like, this room, this looks really dull. Like, there's nothing to see. There's just one room with a, a gargoyle, a second room with a gargoyle, and there are two more rooms there with gargoyles as well. So there's just literally nothing to do. We just gotta go ahead and beat the gargoyles. Oh, 
Also, the camera is uh, really acting up here. Like, I don't understand this camera angle. Why can't we just do a regular camera angle? Like, see, I cannot even properly see what I'm doing. Everforce, okay, I stand corrected. We actually use Everforce now. So how do I get out of here? Uh, oh, here we go. I can't, like, kill the, the, the crap yet. I just wanted to say head crap all the time for some reason, but it's a fire crap. I, I, I've played too much Half-Life in the past. Okay. Oh, there's like two. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're making me lose all my beans. What? Here you go. Okay, so apparently there's like two gargoyles. I thought there were like four. But... Oh, wrong. Wrong button. My bad. Okay. Good, good, good thing I have two potion vials then. Okay, we can have a force this one. And now we can go up here again. So, now the door's open, I guess? Yeah, okay. Now we can get past the fire crab. And here we go, here's the spell book already. Now, something interesting to note here, it says Incendio may also be used as a dueling charm, although care must be taken if the opponent knows Expelliarmus. This is quite interesting because this tells us that originally in the past, after uh, we, we, we would be able to have more duels in the game, because the duels that we had against Malfoy and Goyle during Night 2, those are the only real human duels that we have in the game. All the other duels, like we're doing now, is literally against gargoyle statues, which is kind of useless. So this actually like tells us like original initially they were planning to add more duels in there, and to actually give us Incendio as a dueling option as well. Um, the Incendio is actually programmed to work inside of duels. I will show you after uh, after we finish the um, uh, the spell challenge. I'll actually just go back to day two and with Incendio and we'll actually duel Malfoy again and you will see that he actually uh, repels Incendio back at you, it's kind of cool. So initially they had a lot more plans, you know, with this, uh, with, with this, with this spell. Oh, oh, what? what? Well, that was random. Let's try this again. Okay, I got the book. Um, so let me first have a look like where do I have to go? This one, okay. I need to go here. Ah, uh, okay. 
I'm not close enough. So, can I do it from here? Okay, that works. What is this, Fort Boyar? Man, I should just really play that song, really. Go! Can I like walk, walk? I can't walk past him. Can I just do it with two? No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, two is fine. Okay. If it works, it ain't stupid. Now we can slide back. Woo! And now we gotta solve this puzzle here. Oh, yeah, that's the wrong button. Now we can finally kill some head crabs. Like, we can finally... It's finally payback time for all the times that they burn, they burn me. That is uh, this side, I guess. Here and here, yeah. Okay, and here, it everything should be gone. Can I verify? Yeah, okay. All right. What the hell, bro? Are you going to do this again? Alright, I'm not gonna make it, so... Okay, they're both back now. I should probably, like, turn my camera already. Okay, here we go. And boom, okay. Now we can press this button here. And now the, f the flames in front of the door are like halfway gone. And I gotta go back to this room, turn on the fire again. Like, switch it back. Now it goes back to the place where we just were. And now we should open up the other chamber. And then we should be able to go there. Hello, fire crab. Damn, that is pretty hardcore, actually. <laughs> now I kind of feel bad for him. And so now both flames should be at the other side. Okay, correct.
Let's verify. This is the one that we have to do. Here's nothing, here's nothing. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Let's try this again. I was also kind of late already with everything, so... Let's try this again. Like, the key is to also already turn... turn the camera as soon as you're, like, moving. It saves you a lot of issues. Nay! <laughs> Okay, okay. That's it. Bye bye. We're out of here. That should also net us an additional 40 house points. Excellent, Potter. 40 house points to Gryffindor. That is all for today. Class dismissed. There you are, Potter. I just thought I'd remind you we've got a Quidditch match against Ravenclaw. I'll meet you outside the stadium. Hurry along. Number 44, Devlin Whitehorn. Founder of the Nimbus Racing Broom Company, great. All right, there should be another uh, chest here, an Alahomora chest. So let's go ahead and open that one. Number 90. Sakarisa Tugwood. Pioneer of beautifying potions, discovered pimple curing properties of boo 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 tuber pus. Okay. And there is one more. And that one is actually here. And that is an incendio uh, chest. Number 42. Crispin Kronk. Sent to Azkaban for continuing to keep sphinxes in his back garden despite repeated warnings. <laughs> this dude just get, doesn't give a fuck. He's just like, whatever, I'm gonna do whatever I want. And you can't tell me what to do. All right. Um, like, for example, if I open up the camera right here, uh, let's just move to the corner here so we can actually see everything. This is kind of a faithful remake. Uh, the, the Charms class of, of course, the, the ones that you were able to find inside of the, the Harry Potter um, Harry Potter movies, simply because, you know, this the, the Charms classroom is pretty important, you know, together with Defense Against the Dark Arts. So, basically, my first thought, what I wanted to do here was just to actually create, like, shots similar to... Um, shots similar to the movie. Like, for example, like, you have a huge... Like a wide establishing shot of the of the classroom here. Just ignore Harry here. So you can actually see it's the it's the Charms classroom. Also something interesting that I found to, to do here is also the teacher's perspective. Basically basically 
you could technically just make a shot from here and then you you would be Professor uh, Flitwick basically which is cool and you know the little feather here I'm not really sure if this is like a nod to Wingardium Leviosa because it's exactly the same uh, feather maybe it is but you know then it, I also thought it was kind of interesting to make like the same kind of shot you know that uh, when Hermione and Ron were at like charms doing Wingardium, Wingardium Leviosa like it was this kind of shot or, or it was from this side, I don't really know, but it was like a bit of a, a shot with an angle. So that's why that was also the first thing that would come to mind when I'm here. Also, last thing, just the, scri the scribbles here on the wall are really interesting. Like it's really square and it's a flat roof. So like design wise, I really like this level. You could also go ahead and also go crazy with the books here. Although they're kind of the same, it's not nothing, nothing too crazy, but... Okay, so I think we opened all the chests, that was number one. That was number two, yes. And number three was behind the, the board, right? Yeah, okay, we opened them all. So now that we've got Incendio, there are an additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are actually eight more chests that we can open right now. So I'm sorry, Wood, you will have to wait. Let's start from the bottom. Um, there is one on the first floor in one of the classrooms. I hope I can remember which classroom. Uh, now I'm going to Transfiguration. That was not what I wanted. Now that Transfiguration is over, there's actually a lot of students here. You might just as well go here and talk to them. I don't go for looks in a boy. It's personality that matters. Okay. So, let me show... Let me see your new Hufflepuff robes. You can't talk for some reason? Okay. Crab and Goyle. Are the ugliest people I've ever <laughs> seen. Thanks. That is, uh, I, I was Goyle last night. You don't want to know what I had to go through, really. But it's interesting that you said that. Like, where is it? This one was close, I know for a fact, because I've been trying it no numerous times. Here you go. Number 77. Ah. Uh, Norvel Twonk. A duplicate of Norvel Twonk, okay. Howdy ho. Let's go down real quick, and here should be another, yep, here we go. Number 68, Curly Duke. Plays lead guitar with the popular wizarding band The Scissor Sisters. There is another chest here. Oh, sorry. I was trying to burn the chest. Number 89, Alberta Toothill. Winner of the All England Wizarding Dueling Competition of 1430, famously overcame the favorite Samson Wiblin with a blasting curse. Okay, well, I don't really know like what was so special about about this tournament, but then shouldn't be like any consecutive winner from 13, 1431 and stuff actually be there. But appar apparently, it was like a hell of a match then that she nope. got her own Not through fully there. own magi card. Flubberworms make my skin crawl. Well said. Me too. What do you got? I don't go for looks in a boy. It's personality that matters. Okay. A 
Right, uh, time to go to Kringoth's because there was actually another uh, incendio. There was actually still another incendio uh, chest that we had to open. That's the final chest we have to open there. Okay, let me see. Did the notes uh, change? No, okay, it's all the same. So here's the final final chest that we can open. Number 60, Laverne de Montmorency. Inventor of many love potions. Actually, got to go to the Quidditch Stadium now. Not to play Quidditch, but there is actually also another card that we can get um, near the Quidditch Stadium behind the rocks. You've probably seen it already, maybe a couple times. But now that we got Incendio, we can go ahead and open it. Here we go behind the stones. Number 53, Greet to Catch Love. Author of Charm Your Own Cheese. <laughs> well, that's a book I actually want to read. That sounds really interesting. Like how I can how I can bewitch my own cheese. That would be funny. Now it turns into a flipendo shield. Did you see that? Also, when I, while I'm here, I should probably like uh, f fill up my potion bar. Number twelve, Merwin the malicious. Credited with the invention of many unpleasant jinxes and axes. Stop doing that. Okay, so we got another ten. Uh, it's another 10 cards, so that gives us more inc increased stamina. Yep, let's go, let's do that. Couldn't hurt to do it. Number 82, Rowena Ravenclaw. Co-founder of Hogwarts, gave her name to one of the four Hogwarts houses. The last one is uh, going to be an interesting card that we, we, that we, it's basically a guy that we all know. No, it's not Voldemort, but I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> I'll just keep it a secret until we actually get the card. Now we actually get to enter the 
secret passage in the seventh floor because you've probably like seen this seen this gap under the under the bookcase already so now we actually get to go in there and newsflash there are <laughs> those crappy oh I wait I have Okay, so here is a... wait, I think I went too far already. Yeah, I think this is the wrong door. This is just a secret corridor. Now you're back. Here we go. Here we go. Really deeply hidden. But there is number 100. Number 100. Albus Dumbledore. Currently headmaster of Hogwarts. <laughs> great card, great card. I don't think we can actually enter here. Here is, uh, this is also locked. Yeah, okay, so let's go back. We've had three spell challenges so far. And of course you cannot re-enter them, like by normal means, but what if I told you it's actually possible to uh, re-enter at least one spell challenge through no clip? So the Incendio challenge that we just finished is actually the only spell challenge out of the three that we can uh, properly access with no clip after uh, after we beat it. If uh, Expelliarmus in Defense Against the Dark Arts is impossible because um, we can go there, in fact, but there, there's actually nothing behind that portrait. It's just an empty, empty, empty area. And Everforce, we can actually go in there. We can actually go past that little weird statue that was standing in front of the crawl space. But then the level, whatever you do, the level will not be properly loaded. And once we no clip through here, we can actually go throughout the entire challenge again. I'm not really sure as to like like how how far this is how far we can go but as you can see everything at least the majority of it is like properly loaded properly loaded again like you know I, we could and it actually it looks exactly the same as it was like after we after we left it like the gargoyle is gone and uh, the spell book is gone most likely but now we can just basically re-enter everything See? And I thought that was kind of cool. If you go, uh, if you go and try to reload the Everforce spell challenge, there will actually be uh, like only parts of it will be properly loaded and it will look like an absolute mess i can tell you right now like it's really a huge mess like here are it's like blocked by the bookcase where we can just no clip through here and we're out of here so i thought that was a kind of cool little detail to show you guys here's the queer stadium <laughs> come on harry wake up i would sorry to keep you waiting come on harry let's show ravenclaw how to play quidditch or are they going to teach us how to play Quidditch? Ravenclaw wins the match! Okay, let's do this. To the Quidditch Stadium at Hogwarts for the next match of the tough. Ravenclaw versus Gryffindor. I know that everyone's expecting this match to be a really exciting contest. It is a really exciting contest. I have to give you that. I actually never lost against Raven Ravenclaw before. So. I just have to keep my keep my boost. Ah. Ravenclaw Seeker flies into the lead. Potter zooms ahead. The Ravenclaw Seeker's been hit by a bludger. Ah, that was a really heavy tackle. 
Snitch is like really going everywhere. That one was really close because I, I know for a fact she was about to grab the snitch, but that was great. That was a great match. What a match! Those Ravenclaws didn't know what hit them. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I'm worn out just from cheering. Of course you are. <laughs> what a lame excuse, Ronald Weasley. How many house points do I have now? 470. We had 390, so there's gonna be quite a bump tonight, so that's nice. I'm going to save. Uh, but we can now end day four. We've got all the spells here Flopendo, Lumos, Defendo, Spelliarmus, Scourge, Everforce, Incendio, Lomora. Let's end the day. And have a look how, how many house points uh, we got. Let's take a look at the house points. Rivendor. Nice, 470. Hufflepuff. Ravenclaw. Ah, they're not getting any points. Slytherin. What? Okay then. Hey Harry, what do you think of this? I was on my way back to the dormitory when I heard moaning Marta in her bathroom. Apparently someone had tried to flush it down her toilet. <laughs> she was in a right state. Careful. My dad told me some books can be very dangerous. Well, we won't find out unless we look at it. It looks like an old diary. Belonged to T.M. Riddle. Hang on. I know that name. T.M. Riddle got an award for special services for the school 50 years ago. I know that because Filch made me polish his shield about 50 times in detention. Well, whoever he was, he didn't write in it. It's completely blank. I wonder why someone wanted to try and get rid of it then. Weird. Harry went to bed before anyone else in his dormitory that night, mainly because he wanted to examine Riddle's diary. He sat on his four-poster and flicked through the blank pages, until... Hello, Harry Potter. My name is Tom Riddle. I'm at Hogwarts and horrible stuff's been happening. Do you know about the Chamber of Secrets? Of course I know about the Chamber of Secrets. In my fifth year, the chamber was opened and the monster killed a girl. I caught the person who'd opened the chamber, and he was expelled. I can show you if you like. I can take you inside my memory of the night when I caught him. Okay. Harry sat entranced by the memory Tom Riddle showed him. Evening, Hagrid. What are you doing down here, Tom? It's all over. I don't think you meant to kill anyone. But monsters don't make good pets now, do they? It never killed no one. Come on. The least Hogwarts can do is make sure the thing that killed that girl is slaughtered. It wasn't him. He wouldn't. He never. No! It was Hagrid, Rob. Hagrid opened the Chamber of Secrets 50 years ago. Go tell Hermione. I've got to go and see Hagrid. Of course you do. Let's see our, our, how are our potion files. They're full. They're ready to go. Uh, the most important spells we need are Incendio and Flopendo, so we're also good to go. 
uh, in that case. So there are a couple of wizard cards that we need to get tonight because you probably guessed it, we're going inside the, the Forbidden Forest with Aragog and everything. Um, this is, that is a one-time entry zone, basically. We can only get in there tonight. There's a couple of wizard cards that you must get. If we don't get it, we will never be able to actually get them again. Also, this is the last night that we have to check. Uh, presumably, this is the last night that there are uh, hints for green gods. I'm not completely sure. But I will have a look again tomorrow morning if, they, if they're still there. But first of all, uh, we gotta go to Gringotts still because we gotta go check the hints for tonight. There's a couple more. I always find it funny, like Lucius, Lucius sounds like he's sitting in a bathtub. As <laughs> chairman of the school governors, I've simply got to act and send you away. Away? Away to where? No, not the wizard prison. Not Azkaban. I'm afraid so. A dreadful thing, Dumbledore. As of this moment, you are suspended as headmaster of Hogwarts. If the governors want my removal, Lucius, I shall, of course, step aside. No! However, <laughs> you will find that I will only truly have left this school when none here are loyal to me. You will also find that help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. Of course, if anyone wanted you to find out some stuff, all they'd have to do would be to follow the spiders. That'll lead him, right? That's the key to the whole thing. And that's all I'm saying. Come along now. Wow. Smooth operator, really. Like you're throwing a key somewhere. You're saying this is the key if somebody wants to find out stuff. Like how, how more obvious can you be? <laughs> that's also a giant key. Like how come Lucius doesn't say anything? <laughs> Alright, so that's the key to the Forbidden Forest, and I just forgot basically to go to Gringotts, so... Gotta go back now and first to go to Gringotts, because I'm not really sure like what happens after we fight Aragog. Because a sugar rush is really what I need right now. There's like three books. Okay, let's start with this one. If she had used incendio on spider webs, okay. So basically, that tells us indirectly that we have to use incendio on the spider webs. And that you can use flipendo to. Also, you could that you can flipendo the spiders, okay. What's the third one say? Incendio charm will assist in keeping everything in the house free of those sticky spider webs. Okay, I get it, game. <laughs> You're really trying to emphasize I should use Incendio on the spiders. You know, that's the whole key <laughs> to the whole thing. Okay, let's get in there. Let's uh, go into the Forbidden Forest. Basically, it's a, this looks a bit similar to uh, the area with the Whomping Willow, but this one looks more all over the place and a bit harder and all that stuff. It looks more sinister and like bigger as well. So first thing, since we're re-entering the forest, we gotta understand, as you can see already, the forest is full of spiders. 
So, once again, no clip. <laughs> no clip modes is really, where the, f why is no clip not working? Here we go, no clips working now. So in order to, you know, to do my work here, um, no clip is literally a necessity. As soon as I get out, because as soon as I like exit no clip, the spiders will come back to me. So that was the number one key that I had to, the, like the number one thing that I had to do here. Like I, I simply couldn't like enter and screw around in this level camera wise if I if I didn't use like the no clip option. One thing what is really really interesting here for the filmmaking are the trees. There's a lot more trees than there was in the Whomping Willow area. And as you can see there's like it's it's much more fast and the, the trees look really really pretty. And you can really make like really interesting compositions with them by simply just moving around with them, like moving around with the camera and just like playing around with the with these opportunities. Like here as well, especially because of the like the JPEG that is in the background, you know, it kind of already looks fast pretty quickly. But you could you could really go make it a little, little bit like this, like add a bit more uh, field of view. And technically speaking, you could add your own depth of field yourself. So technically you could make the background like blurred so you don't really even see that it's a JPEG. There's also a couple, I already said that, there's a couple of, uh, of uh, cards that we need to get here. So let's just get, oh hi. Scared the shit out of me. I don't like it when they do that. <laughs> All right, uh, the first wizard card is here actually. And it's also, again, like stowed in a corner. It's so hard to, it's so hard to see and really easy to miss. Number 66, Flavius Belby. Only wizard ever to survive a level attack. Now they also introduce like tiny little spiders. Let's just go ahead and no clip real quick. And just keep an eye out on the... Like there's two things here that work insanely well together and those are the spiders and the trees. Like having these in the same shot really, really works well. Like now of course this is only like, like small amount of spiders. But like, you could even go like this, you could move around if you wanted to. But for some reason, the trees in this area, like in, in the Forbidden Forest, are much, much better and much more usable than they were in the Forbidden, like in the Whomping Willow area. So if you really wanted to use these for, hey, let's see what you did there. Okay, I gotta explore everywhere, of course. It's good that I that I've got. Uh, I see. I, yeah, I see you. I see you. Like, can I? No. Okay, I cannot go here. Okay, so that was just a bit of set dressing there. Then I'll just go this way, and I'll just. Uh, Incend the oldest thing. Oh hi, more spiders coming. Uh, I really don't like spiders. I just really hate this level. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I can't make it more pre. I can't make this prettier than it is. It's just it's spiders everywhere, and it really like I'm so done with spiders. I hate spiders. Did I mention already? I hate spiders because I really do. I just really don't like spiders. Oh, beans. I don't really need those. 
Okay, is there still anything? Yeah, there's like, what they did here, what I really like, is like they use different types of geometry, like those, like uneven geometry. And they also put it like really old tall trees on there that really adds to the entire aesthetic. It's really good. I really like it. Now, of course, there will be uh, there will be more instances of this, of uh, how we can use the trees. But first, let's go talk to Aragog. Is it Hagrid? Not exactly, but I'm a friend of Hagrid's. Hagrid has never sent men into a hollow before. Hagrid's in trouble. That's why I've come. In trouble. They think up at the school that Hagrid's been setting a, a something on students. They've taken him to Azkaban. But that was years ago. Everyone thought that I was the monster that dwells in the Chamber of Secrets. They thought Hagrid had opened the chamber and set me free. Which was why he was expelled from Hogwarts. So you didn't come from the Chamber of Secrets? No, I come from a distant land and Hagrid cared for me. The girl who was killed 50 years ago was discovered in a bathroom and I have not seen any other castle apart from the cupboard I grew up in. If it wasn't you who killed that girl, then what did kill her? We shall not speak of it. I'll just go then. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think not. But, but... I cannot deny my children fresh meat. Well, fuck me. <gasps> like, especially here, um, of course, I did not like, I didn't implement, uh, I didn't really use Aragog for inside my shots because once again I wanted to create this alternative uh, reality, you know, that would take place just shortly after the events of Chamber of Secrets, so that's why I didn't really use it. I didn't implement him in the shots. But I just really like, what I really love about this area is just, you know, it's, it's, it's vastness, you know, it's, it's just extremely vast. Like, it's much more vast than the Whomping Willow. It just really puts the Whomping Willow to shame. There's, like, height differences. There's places where you... Like, there's ledges. There's, like, tiny paths going down everywhere. There's, like, a lot of detours that you could possibly make if you wanted to. Like, here as well. So many trees. Like, this is... This is, like, really a lot better than, of course, the Whomping Willow area. But having said that, I think the Whomping Willow area was... Like, out, out, supposed to be outside of Hogwarts and not necessarily in the Forbidden Forest. Okay, so we're going the right way. That's correct. And uh, Okay. Hey! Okay, let's go up here. Is there anything here? Nope. Oh, but there is there is a ledge here. Let's see what we got here. Nothing. Okay, so why did you put the ledge there? Anyway. Let's look up real quick. Now this is okay. There there are a couple of places like later on in the game that are just really, really cool. With uh you know, with shot making. So Oh, no, I'm actually going back to where I was. I shouldn't go there. So here it's just all the same. Then we can go here. Spidey, come. Spider-Man. All right. This is just a ledge. Let's uh, take a moment and take a look. Like for example here, you know, especially like here. Wait, let me uh, let me go like this. Especially if you go a little bit higher, so you actually feel like the height of the trees. And if you go here, you can even make it a bit eerier. But I just prefer to go like this. You know, 
this this forest has just so much personality. Also, if you look at the at the textures that they use, like it's completely different textures compared to the Whomping Willow area. Like there's much more decay, moss, um, molds, like branches growing inside the floor. Uh, completely different textures. It's awesome. I really like it. It's a really good job. I just really want to make sure, you know, that I'm not missing anything because, again, once I uh, once I leave here, I cannot go back. I need to get two more wizard cards. Once I get those, I can just leave, of course. So I came from here. So here we got Aragog. I don't think that I can jump here, can I? No, this is way too far. Okay, so we got to go to this place and we got to burn. We got to burn this piece. Burn this piece. Now this, we have got to go up this really creepy small stairs. Here we go. There's the first. Where's the spider? So there's a there's a chest. Uh, let me see if what happens when I go up here. Like what happens? Nothing. Okay. That was just to distract me basically. And here, there's nowhere. Okay, there's nowhere where I can go. Let's take a quick look again. Here we got like a lot of geometry going on with the rocks and everything, it's cool. It's not really interesting per se, but it's uh, because it's kind of flat. Here's where the, the, the age of the game kind of shines because it looks kind of flat, you know, it doesn't really look like there's a lot of depth going on. Oh look, pumpkin pastries is always welcome. Okay, so we gotta get up there. First I gotta get rid of you. Is there anything else here? No. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. All right, and here we go up here. All right, awesome. And there's already two of those little bastards waiting for me. They're literally waiting for me. See? Great, that is one of the two cards. Number 63, Herman Wintringham. Plays lewd with the popular wizarding band, the Scissor Sisters. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep making this joke because I really like it. Something's on fire here. What, I can't put this on fire? These mushrooms are lit, man, really. Anyway. Okay. Well, bye. <laughs> bye, Harry. Yeah, 
Okay, I first gotta get rid of all the spiders here because there's just too many of them. So did I, like, do I still have the card or not? Number 63, yeah, okay, I got him. I really dig the, uh, the ambient that they're playing here. Like, especially, yes, here is like one of those areas that you can really go crazy with the camera. Like, if you go up, and you look up, like, for example, here is not that interesting. Like, the, this little weird tree is, like, kind of weird. But if you go here, you got, like, this extremely, like, weird, eerie rocks with all of those trees up there and you got the airy atmosphere playing, it's awesome. Like, that's why I, I mainly focus, I would mainly focus on the atmosphere here when I was working on this area because this, this area just breathes atmosphere. Literally. Oh, here you go. Okay, I guess I gotta go there. Boom, okay, uh, yeah, let's turn on my textures again. this instead okay cool uh, so now we're underneath Aragog's web so there's not really any interesting stuff going on here Can you aim Harry, really? He's just like hilarious. And that flipendo, so did you see that? That flipendo just went completely through him. Because of all these uh, spiders, you know. And you. <laughs> There's just too many of these, man, really. Okay, so here's Aragog, and uh, there's nothing really going on. Hey, that's a cheap shot. I cannot hit you right now. All right, now we got a wall sneak. I haven't seen the second wizard card yet, so I hope like I'm not missing it.
Ah, uh, here we go. There it is. There is the second chest. Number 64, Jacinda Sykes. Jacinda Sykes, wait, that is the third one. So I'm actually missing, I am missing a, a chest because this is the final, here, here is going to be a dead end. And basically if I incendio this piece of his web, he will fall down and take me with it. So I gotta do some backtracking. Where is that card? I'm already starting to get lost here, you know that? This place is already... Here it is! Hey, drop. My goodness. How come I missed that one? Finally, we found it. Ignatia Wildsmith. Number 62, Ignatia Wildsmith. The witch who invented flu powder, yes. Number 66, Flavius Belby. We got number 62, Ignatia Wildsmith. We got number 63, Herman Winfringham. And we got number 64, Eugenda Sy Yoconda Sykes. Awesome. So with this, we can actually, we found all of the cards in the Forbidden Forest. And now we can finally go ahead and we can uh, fight Aragog. So now that we've already almost been there, I kind of want to use the opportunity to like give you like one more example of like uh, of a nice interesting shot. Like example, this, this, this would be a great example as well. You know, this, this, this forest, like, is really, like, supposed to make you feel small, basically. Like, if you look at how huge these trees are. And if you wanted to add a bit of, uh, like, it also, you could also add, like, the, the spiders in here. You could, like, go up here. Also create a really looking eerie shot with uh, with the with the vast trees and the rocks and everything. Or you could, you know, move away from the trees and see all of the spiders on and about, like lurking around in the in, in, in the background. I've probably said it like a couple of times already, but uh, I'm gonna say it again. Like the Forbidden Forest, top notch level in this game. Really, it looks awesome. It really has like all the atmosphere. Hey. It really has all the atmosphere that it needs. Okay, so here is the start. So now we just gotta go for it. Okay, we go to the right. And now we're back. Okay, I don't care. I'm just going to incendio this stuff. This I never understood. Like, why is Harry falling down as well? Like, why can't Aragog only fall? <laughs> okay. Um, before we take on Aragog and yet another boss fight, there's a couple of things that I want to say. That here, the boss fight against Aragog is really something that the game really did not execute well. Like, this is really... The, let me say that the boss fight against Aragog is really great. I really love it. But they didn't really fought this through. Because... Um, actually, kind of, they made Aragog the final boss of this game. In terms of difficulty. Uh, Aragog is basically a lot more difficult to defeat... If you compare it to the Basilisk. The Basilisk only has like one kind of attack. Aragog has like three. The, and Aragog can actually run around pretty fast and he can hit you. Like 
it's it's easier it's more assume like it's more uh it's easier to assume that you will die fighting aragog than you will fight the basilisk for basilisk the only thing you need to do is just run away for it but this like sometimes you can't even outrun aragog it's that it's just how fast he is you know he is really really fast so for some reason at least that that's how it feels to me and you will probably see this in like a minute like when i take on aragog but it's just, they kind of made him like the true boss of this game, which I really don't like. It's really weird. Um, or, you know, it's like maybe they did it on, uh, not on purpose, but they should have gave should have given the, uh, the Basilisk more attacks to make it more difficult, basically. But having said that, let's uh, take on Aragorn. Like, see? He's gonna attack me again. Yeah. Oh, now he's doing his little earthquake thing. Okay. That scares the living shit out of me every time he, he like runs towards you. Hey. See, it's like almost impossible to escape him for some reason. my last potion vial, so I've got to make this happen right now. I got him, I got him. And there's the final potion vial of the game. said she was found in a bathroom what if she never left the bathroom what if she's still there you don't think not moaning myrtle it would make a lot of sense if it was oh in all the excitement i forgot someone's been up to the dormitory and taken the diary what i went to look for hermione but i couldn't find her when i got back to the dormitory the diary was missing what afraid so but only a gryffindor could have stolen it Nobody else knows our password. Exactly. Anyway, I'm off to bed. See you, Harry. Yeah, thanks, you, Ron. Ron. Thanks for rescuing me. You're my best friend. It's my job. This line, you're my best friend, it's my job, is the, on the only reason why this is in the game is to make people feel sympathy and, like, 
feel thankful for what Ron did because the only lines he has is like, oh, I'm tired, I'm off to bed. And that makes people annoyed with him. And with this, now we actually owe him, you know? Well, guys, that was night four already. That was quite a hectic night. Uh, it's even so much of a hectic night that I actually lost all of my po all of the stuff in my potion vials. They're completely empty. Let's go to the herbology greenhouse one more time and refill them. Yeah, they're full. Yep, they're full. Awesome. So with that, we can conclude night four and it's time to go to day five. Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin. Oh, I must have slept in. Oh no, the Quidditch match. Yep, the Quidditch match against Slytherin. Of course, Slytherin and Malfoy can wait. Uh, I want to go check out Gringotts, see if there's any new passage. And we got to get beans. Like, how much beans do? How many beans do we got? We only got one. So I got to max out my beans, and we got to play Neville's games for the very last time. If we beat these today, we actually finish the high score goal. We we've beaten like Neville's games every single day. So Slytherin can wait. Uh, yeah, beans. And beans and Gringotts. I'll just first get my beans. Hi, Harry. Big <laughs> match against what? Slytherin today. I'm glad it's you that's doing it. After all that flying about and what we found out last night, I can't think straight. Well, you think I can. We can't tell uh. <laughs> anyone about the diary, and I don't want to be the one who brings up why Hagrid was expelled 50 years ago. And then there's... Kill this time. Let me rip. Tear. The voice. I just heard it again. Didn't you? Harry, I think I've just understood something. I've got to go to the library. What does she understand? And then she walks so away so sassy, like, I gotta go to the library. Because that's what Hermione does. When in doubt, go to the library. Anyway, Harry, you'd better get a move on. The match? Yeah, the match, the match can wait. The match, uh, they will wait for me anyway. These robes are really itchy, aren't they? Is that so? I don't like Quidditch. It's too fast to follow. Incendio! We're getting close. Four more beans. One. 
Why is it always with the last three or four beans? Like they're they're so stubborn they don't want to give me more. Why is that? I just need one more. Can you give me some slack or what? Here we go. One hundred. Okay, great. Like Quidditch, it's too fast to follow. Ow. Oh, okay, you got lucky this time. I burned myself. <laughs> yes, Gringotts. I want to have a look if there is uh, anything going on with Gringotts wise. Otherwise, it's actually, we're actually done with. Um, We've actually successfully completed this goal oh, as well, if there's nothing that's new. Got it. Ah. Well, I did get a chocolate frog. So I still get like a chocolate frog every day, but there are no more books. Yeah. We've officially run out of hints. So with that said, we've officially completed yet another... Um, yet another goal that we've set here. And that's this one. We've successfully read all of the hints inside of Green God's Bank. So that is, uh, we've currently have now, we've currently completed three goals right now. So we're kind of on track. Of course, later, later we have the Quidditch Cup incoming and also Neville's games. So there's more records that we can break. I'll be glad when this turns over. I'll give you that. I just really kind of think, you know, that this uh, the Quidditch match against Slytherin is quite, you know, a missed opportunity because they they kind of made it too hard. I understand, you know, Malfoy has his Nimbus 2001, like uh, all the entire Slytherin Quidditch teams has like has their like uh, Nimbus 2001s. But, and I understand that they're faster than Harry's model, but like, do they have to be this fast and do you have to make it this difficult? I can understand why they did it, but p people, this is a game for like 10 year olds, 9, 8, 9, 8, 10, 11 year olds. I mean, I was, in 2002, I was nine when I played this and I could, I was barely able to even win the Quidditch Cup. I had to, my, I had to let my mom and dad play for me in order to beat Slytherin, because I, I just couldn't do it, it was way too hard. So I kind of think that there's kind of a missed opportunity here what they did, like they could have made it a bit easier. I know that you have to make it harder than Ravenclaw, but now it kind of feels, some, it's sometimes it feels like it just made it plain impossible. Okay, yeah, there's no more cards, okay. Bye guys, see you next year. Nah, I'm, re I'm really not coming back now. I just wanted to make sure that there was no card that I could get. I just wanted to make sure that there weren't any more cards that I was able to get. Gnome tossing or racing? I'll just go do racing first. That's an additional free cards. So now we're on the... Where are we actually? I read the, the, the tower on the edge. Like we're looking over on the... On the flying practice court. Okay. What's up? Hi. What do you say to a race? It'll cost 40 beans. 40 beans? I don't even have enough for free races. Inflation is a bitch, even at Hogwarts. My goodness. We 
we went from 5 to 10 beans to 40 beans. What gives? Probably going to lose this race. I don't think there's uh, there's more time left. Yeah, we're already here. Oof, this is going to be quite uh, expensive day, basically. Maybe I can still win. I don't know. now okay <laughs> you don't hear me complaining really I thought I was going to lose you won well Potter have this wizard card thanks well that was actually uh, Chauncey Aldridge Chauncey Aldridge first known victim of dragon pox fancy another race Harry to see if you can beat me again it'll cost 40 beans This parkour is so diff so weird. Now here we go. How come he's always faster than me? I'm still not in front. Now I am, okay. Whoa, he's really close by here. <laughs> Stop <laughs> I have to I have to keep my first place, whatever the cost. Wow, this is a really weird record. I don't like this. Well done, Harry. Here's a wizard card. Thanks, mate. Number 39. Gwenog Jones. Captain and beater of only all-female national Quidditch team, the Holyhead Harpies. Alright, so I don't have enough beans. You won last time we raced. Think you can win again? It'll cost 50 beans. 50 beans! Bro, am I made out of money or what? Two more. One, two. Here we go. One hundred. Let's try this again. You know what? I'll save the final uh, broom race for last. I'll just do gnome tossing first. Oh, pretty view actually.
I think we've been here before, but I'm not really sure. The ninth rank record's there to be beaten, Harry. Why don't you have a try? It'll cost 40 B. 40, okay, that's not too bad. 250. Ah, <laughs> uh, nothing. Jump. What am I doing? I'm literally wasting my throws here. Great. I already can't make the record anyway. You didn't break the record this time, Potter. Let's try again. You didn't beat the record last time, Harry. How about another go? It'll cost 40 beans. Okay, let's go. Hey, you do <laughs> Why are they still headbutting me? Okay, 20. That's nothing. Huh? It didn't go through? Oh, this is going to be difficult. Okay, 120. Can I, like, double it up or something? Like... I made it. You win a wizard card. Awesome. Uh, yeah, because I got multiple rings at the same time. Number 20. Wendelin the Weird. Alleged to have enjoyed being burned at a stake so much that she allowed herself to be captured 14 times. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna... I want... Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh... I'm, I'll be right back, Neville. I'm gonna get some more beans for you. Let's do it. You're really expensive, you know that. Let's have a race, Potter. It'll cost 50, 50 beans. beans. My goodness. Yeah, I thought so. This is a spring race. the most uh, extreme sprint we had so far but still going pretty fast here we go here we go here we go well done for winning Harry have a wizard card of course we get a wizard card number 40 Colossa Pinkstone We've also completed yet another goal, uh, but first, holy shit, that's quite a long description. Famous campaigner for lifting the International Confederation of Wizards Statue of Secrecy and telling the non-magical that wizards still exist. Mrs. Pinkstone has been imprisoned several times for her blatant and deliberate use of magic in public places. So, we've also got an additional 10 cards, so our stamina increased. 
And having that said, we're officially done now with um, with Neville's games. So let's go ahead and boom, set the high score to green. So the only goals that we have left for now is to beat the game with all eight spells. Technically, we have all eight spells. So, well, we haven't beaten the game yet. Get the maximum amount of house points. We can still get more, win the Quidditch and house cup. Uh, max out our inventory and of course all of the wizard cards because there's quite a few more wizard cards that we need to get Now the only thing left to do for today is to play against Slytherin and win the Quidditch Cup So the first thing we got to do is actually <laughs> It's one of the hardest things in the game, and we we yeah we that basically we ended right here like yesterday. So there is no other way. Uh, I have to face my fears. We have to play against Slytherin. So let's do it. Try, but I did it. It is with great pleasure that I present the Quidditch Cup to Gryffindor. Uh, 170 against 30, and Hufflepuff beat Ravenclaw, actually, wow. 190 to 110. Harry, that was wicked! Oh, it's such a pity Hermione didn't get to see it. What? Hermione wasn't at the match? No, I haven't seen her since she ran off this morning. I don't know. She's probably got her head stuck in a book somewhere. Anyway, I'm worn out. I'm off to bed. Ron is just like, I don't know man, I don't know what they did with Ron in this game really, like he's either, he's just either assuming all of the random stuff or he's, he's either assuming things or he's tired <laughs> and he wants to go to sleep, he's heading off to bed. Whew. Well guys, uh, we officially, we've officially completed yet another goal, here we go, we've, be, we've won the Quidditch Cup. And that should also grant us some more, yes, some more house points. Here you go, we got 510 now. So, uh, that is going quite well thus far. Now the only thing left is of course the house cup and the wizard cards and whatnot. But the most important thing for today is done and we actually won the Quidditch Cup. That was... I'm not going to lie, I was really afraid that I was going to be here like playing matches against Slytherin for like for like two hours straight because it can be really infuriating, it can be really frustrating 
but it literally just took me 20 minutes, not even, like 15 minutes. I remember the previous time when I did this, it took me like almost an hour. Okay, so we checked Gringotts already, there, there shouldn't be anything. Our potion vials are ready, so first thing I'm going to do is properly save. Of course, we need to. One more time, just to be sure. And with that done, it's time to go from day 5 to night 5. And that is actually the day where we're going inside of the Chamber of Secrets. So, we're almost done with the game already, By uh, basically. We, uh, we're literally going to face off against the Basilisk, the final boss. Gryffindor. Hufflepuff. Hufflepuffs are asleep. Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw as well. Slytherin. I'm the only house actually still gaining house points at this point. They all they've all given up or something. <laughs> I just don't know. Ginny. So, I went to see Hermione. I found a piece of paper in her hand. A page torn from an old library book. That must have been what she was doing before she was attacked. What was the page about? It was all about basilisks. The giant snakes that lived for hundreds of years. Apparently, a basilisk can kill people by just staring at them. Anything else? Yeah, spiders don't like them. They run away when a basilisk is near. And there was something else. Hermione had written the word pipes on the page. Pipes? Pipes? That's all, just pipes. Ron, this is it. This is the answer. The monster in the Chamber of Secrets is a basilisk. A giant snake. That's why I've been hearing the voice and nobody else has heard it. It's because I understand parcel tongue. Harry, do you think Ginny might be in the Chamber of Secrets along with that flipping big snake? Yep. McGonagall said they searched everywhere in the castle, but no one knows where the chamber is. We've got to find her. Okay, so what we need to know is how the basilisk has been getting round the place. A giant snake. Surely someone would have seen it. Pipes. Pipes. Yep. Pipes gone. <laughs> it's been using the plumbing. I've been hearing a voice inside the walls. The entrance to the chamber of secrets. What if it's a bathroom? What if it's in Moaning Myrtle's bathroom? Okay, so what do we do? Place is crawling with prefects looking for Ginny. I'll go first. You join me in moaning myrtles on the second floor. First thing I want to say for this snake to fit inside of the plumbing inside of Hogwarts, this castle must have like some giant ass plumbing now. <laughs> like how can a giant snake fit in there? Also, I don't really like this cutscene at all because you can tell that the developers were really like either like really like suffering from pressure or something because like the, the the release date for the film was coming near and they had to release this game because they basically did everything in one single cutscene while in the film it, it took like a, a little while you know for all of them to find out. Here it's just like oh pipes, oh this, oh that, oh we found A plus B and C and here we go you know. It's a bit of a missed opportunity, unfortunately. I just really wish they would do it a little bit better. It could have been a lot better, of course. So we are ready to go. Uh, good part is I don't need any spells for the Basilisk, so we should be good for that. It's 
to you, Harry Potter. What do you want this time? To ask how you died. Smooth. Oh, <laughs> it was dreadful. It happened right here. I'd hidden because Olive Hornby was teasing me about my glasses. I was crying when I heard someone come in. It was a boy, and he began speaking a different language. I went to tell him to go to use his own bathroom, and then I died. But how? I just remember seeing these great big eyes. Where exactly did you see the eyes? Over there, by the sinks. Harry, say something! Something in parcel tongue! But go on, Harry. Okay then. Uh, open up. English. <laughs> I'm going down there! Oh, I must be miles under the school. My, you can also over exaggerate, Harry, really. You, 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 it was just like a five second drop, so you shouldn't over exaggerate here. We're in the Chamber of Secrets right now. It looks pretty epic. I do really like it. I do wish it, it'd be a little bit bigger because, you know, in the film it always looks like a lot bigger. But I, I'd say it's a pretty somewhat faithful recreation. Of course, it's not exactly the same how it was in the film, but you know, the. The snake heads are everywhere, which is kind of cool. Now I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to no clip mode and I'll just have a quick look showing you like what kind of interesting stuff you can do here. Since it's kind of a small room, I mainly focused on the snake heads right here and I kind of made sure to go past the safe scroll because otherwise it's in there and it's kind of annoying. So I'll just go here. Uh, let me slow it down a little bit, go up. And this is probably also a shot, yes, this is actually like one of the shots. This is the exact shot that I used for like one of the thumbnails of the stream. I think it's even a little bit closer, like so. And by slowing down the camera, you can't, I said slowing down, slowing down, yeah, there we go. Like by even slowing down the camera, you can just go do a rider, dynamic rider shot from behind the one, like one snake head to the other. Of course you can. And I pressed the wrong button. Let's zoom in a little bit. Like so. And then you can actually do like a dynamic rider shot where you go move past the fangs of one snake head and then go to the other one. Another interesting, this is like a really good example of using wide shots because you know you're in the chamber of secrets there's like all these snake statues here. This also kind of works, it's a really 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 simple shot I do like a I do really like the symbolism in the shot. Like you got all of the snake heads, and then you're slowly moving past them towards the two giant snakes on the wall, which looks really cool. This is actually the best area in the Chamber of Secrets to make shots because as soon as we enter the Chamber of Secrets, it is practically impossible to make shots and that is uh, most and foremost because of the basilisk. The basilisk will keep spawning and will keep going in and outside of those uh, little shelter holes and like you will only have like the entire room empty for one or two minutes, no, like one or two seconds max. Like the basilisk will only be gone for like one or two seconds max and then he will come back but it's it kind of conflicts with the um, altern or alternative reality that I want to make here so that's why I kind of decided like not to make any shots in the chamber of secrets at all especially because it's too hectic 
and it you know it, it is too recognizable it's gameplay it's like regular gameplay and that really breaks the immersion that we're trying to make like we're trying to create a bit of an alternative reality that just sh shortly happens after all of the events that take pl place in the game but if we see Harry fighting against the Basilisk then it's just like oh we're actually just playing the game so then it breaks the immersion inside the cinematic immersion inside of the machinima that is why it is we're really limited in making shots in the Chamber of Secrets I will just show you as soon as we start as soon as we enter and then we're just going to um, and then we're just going to kill it last little example that I want to do here let me speed up the camera real quick uh, with the cool looking snake drawings on the wall you can actually do quite some cool stuff like you can also make a really shallow depth of field shot like where, where you're focusing on the snake heads you could go a little bit wider perhaps but you know you could like really focus on here and go a little bit crazy with the tilts and whatnot to make it look eerie but you know these uh, these paintings here on the wall are also really pretty so they they also can help you creating some really interesting perspectives Oh, yeah, I'm still... <laughs> Every time I forget to turn off no clip mode, it sometimes really gives me a heart attack almost. Chamber of Secrets time. It's time to save the day, so to speak. It's time to save the world and most importantly, Ginny. She's still alive, but only just. You've got to help me, Tom. We've got to get her out of here. There's a basilisk, and it could be along at any moment. The basilisk won't come until it's called. Let me tell you about the real reason Ginny's like this. She's been writing in the diary. My diary for months. I grew stronger and stronger on a diet of her deepest fears until I had Like we've power shown before, you can actually manipulate cutscenes in real time as well. What do you mean? Ginny Weasley opened the Chamber of Secrets. She daubed threatening messages on the walls and set the Serpent of Slytherin on the mudbloods and nearly had this nick. No! I'm afraid so. Ginny told me all about you, Harry. So I decided to show you my famous capture of that great oaf Hagrid to gain your trust. You framed Hagrid! Yes. But you, Harry Potter, how is it that you managed to defeat the greatest wizard of all time? Why do you care? Haven't you realized yet? I... I'm Lord Voldemort, dun, dun, the dun. greatest sorcerer in the world. Sorry to disappoint you in that, but the greatest sorcerer in the world is Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore's been driven out of Hogwarts by the mere memory of me. He's not as gone as you might think! To business, Harry. I'm going to teach you a little lesson. Let's match the powers of Lord Voldemort, heir of Salazar Slytherin, against the famous Harry Potter. Kill him! And now you didn't have to speak in parcel tone for some reason. <laughs> So they, they kind of had to censor that because, you know, as, as you know, in the movies, uh, Fox pokes out his eye. So he cannot, like, he cannot kill Harry anymore by staring at him. But here they kind of censored it because, you know, Peggy free. Here it is, the Chamber of Secrets. So let's, uh, let's go to the corner real quick and let's just have a look at the, uh, what the Basilisk is doing. Breaking the whole shit apart, that's great. Alright, you do you, buddy. So let me talk to the audience for a second. Basically, what we gotta do here is we gotta grab Gryffindor's sword and keep hitting him, yada yada yada. You probably, if you've played the game before, you'll know what to do. It's just that, you know, now he's going back. Keep an eye out like for like how long he'll be gone. So we'll keep, we can start counting now. Like one, two, three, four, five. Six. See, he's he's gone for like max a maximum of six seconds. And 
Therefore, it's really hard to create shots in the Chamber of Secrets because he's supposed to be dead by now. We know, you know, we're, su we're supposed to have defeated the Basilisk. Also, Fox keeps flying around here, like he's right here from time to time, which is also not really helping. I initially really wanted to go like crazy ultra wide like this and just make like extremely wide shots of the Chamber of Secrets. Technically, I could, but only do it for like two seconds and it wouldn't really look good. Like I could go with this. I technically go with this. It is just that um, the bas although the basilisk is going for like maybe four or five seconds, you can still see Tom in there. Tom is not the main problem uh, because I could technically rotoscope him out of the frame during post, but Fox it just keeps moving and is inside the shot, which is really annoying. So. The only real thing that I kind of was able to do here was actually just to create a shot of Salazar Slitter in the statue. So, you know, to really, you know, to at least, to kind of acknowledge, you know, that we've been inside of the Chamber of Secrets, because this level is kind of like limited in terms of ca camera manipulation, because we're only supposed to go here to fight, and that's it. And, you know, I, I tried to modify the ISO, it didn't really work. So the only real thing that I can kind of well, that I can kind of do here is like focus on on his statue. So having said that, um, yeah, it was kind of a bummer. It was really like an anti climax when I was here. Like I really wanted to make some cool some cool looking representations of uh, of the Chamber of Secrets, but it just turned out that as, as soon as you finish, as soon as you like beat the Basilisk. It doesn't matter. You will actually go out of the uh, go out of the chamber of secrets. So there's like nothing you can really do here except fight the basilisk. So without further ado, let's do it. Let's uh, let's fight him. Okay, the sword works. Uh, where is he? Kill him. Oh, here you are. So what are you gonna do? The only attack that the Basilisk has is... Um, shooting his venom out of his mouth which you just saw him doing and also like making the rocks fall down but I don't really know if he does that anymore after you get the sword of Gryffindor see like nothing's happening there's like a good there's like a good five seconds or so nothing happening and you can just you can maneuver and you can like dodge his attacks so easily and then it's your turn to attack That took long. <laughs> so that's why I find, you know, the that's why I find the the the, the final boss battle against the Basilisk a bit underwhelming at times. They could have made it more epic, and you know they did a lot already with the music and everything. But they could have made him like more. Like he's supposed to be the final boss. Like he should he should attack more often and faster, and he should also have more different attacks. Of course, it, it makes it a bit difficult because because you know he's blind now. But yeah, it's just Aragog is a, a much harder boss than the Basilisk still, and you know so go ahead, change my mind. <laughs>
also... Yeah, okay. My settings are good. <laughs> just wanted to check my settings. Oh, I did a lot already. He's almost dead. He's just staring at me. I'll just do this because otherwise I will lose a lot of health. Apparently dodging is not that fast. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I remember these events a bit different, different than they are here. Harry, oh Harry, I wanted to tell you. It was me, Harry, but I swear I didn't mean to. Riddle made me do it. It's alright, Riddle's finished. Come on, Ginny. Let's get out of here. Now kiss. Harry! Run! Hermione! Harry! Run! Hermione! <laughs> How are you feeling? A little bit of that fact. Really disappointed. With all that's happened, Chris McGonagall has cancelled this year's exams. Yep, that's Hermione. <laughs> As you can see, Harry, Hermione's made a complete recovery. Yep. <laughs> Did you know that the House Cup was about to be awarded? The presentation's in the Great Hall. Yeah. I hope we've got enough house points to beat Slytherin. I really enough love house points? I think we got enough house points to beat them twice. Well, when you're ready, Harry, we'll go in. Yeah, you guys can go. So, um, yeah, day six. Apparently, we've been fighting the Basilisk all night. We didn't sleep. We just pulled an all-nighter because all of a sudden it's day six. Um, day six is the last day of term. Basically, uh, the game's over now. We beat the Basilisk. The only thing left to do is to go to the Great Hall for the House Cup ceremony. But basically, you can do this whenever you want. and You don't have to do it right away. You can still go everywhere, you can still, uh, you know, if, if you don't have good grades for flying and Quidditch practice, you can go back and actually get a better grade and you will, your house points will improve. So there's still chances to increase your house points. You can also complete your famous Witches and Wizards cards still, your collection. And uh, basically a lot of the, uh, some of the areas that we were unable to go to, um, uh, will open up again. Like for example here, if we go to the dungeons, now we're actually able to go inside the dungeons during the day because it's the last day of term. Normally this will always be closed, but uh, now we can just get in. So let's just take a quick look here. I'm not going to do any camera manips anymore. In terms of camera manips, I think we're kind of done. But here we are. And you know, like there's nobody here. <laughs> You can, you can barely tell, you know, that it's daytime because it's pretty dark in here. But here we are in, in the dungeons. Here was where Malfoy was standing. And all of the all of the prefects are also gone. So You still have this weird bloody angle of the camera, but there's just nothing you can do. It's just basically programmed like this because it's supposed to be uh, a stealth mission. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. Also, uh, Fred and George is open. We need to go there because I believe there's actually, they sell like a couple of additional uh, cards, like a, a couple of additional duplicates. They don't really sell new cards if I remember correctly, but you are probably able to get some additional duplicates. How many house points do we have? 600. Here we go. Okay, so basically I can, um, I'll just do it right now because it doesn't really matter. So we, we actually, Met the maximum amount of house points here, and we also won the house cup because nobody is going to Like I've never seen it happening that any of the other houses also get 600 house points So we actually maxed out the house points today. That's awesome. I didn't thought like I was ever technically possible to do it But we did 
Uh, technically speaking, I have not maxed out my inventory yet because I only got one bean. I first want to go have a look at Fred and George's shop. Because I want to make sure like that they actually have like some duplicate cards on sale, maybe some other stuff. If not, then we just go ahead and um, trade the remaining cards. Because if everything is correct, we should have like eight cards. We should have eight cards missing right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah, but this one, th that one is, yeah. Okay, so we're. We're also on schedule when it comes to the wizard cards. Hello. I'm going to try out for the Quidditch team next term. Okay. Go f go for it, I'd say. If if you I, I was like looking at you, I thought like if you were a Gryffindor, then I would say fat chance, but Hufflepuff should be possible. I'm really looking forward to the summer holidays. Yeah, me too. I wonder if I'll ever win which weekly's most charming smile award. Well, let me open up your mind and find it out for you. Nope, not gonna happen. So I'll be right back here, just having a look at uh, Fred and George. I'm going to Bracknell for my summer holiday this year. Okay, good for you. Where's Bracknell? Shane, the Quidditch season's over, eh, Potter? Yeah, was a pretty good uh, match. Wait a minute. You sound like Malfoy. Shane, the Quidditch season's over, eh, Potter? Why do you sound like Malfoy? I don't think we've actually been here, like, during the day, so this is kind of what it looks like during the day. Looks kind of interesting. And also this weird camera angle, that the, the, the stealth camera angle is gone, so now you can just explore normally. I always like this kind of little, like this reading room. Looks really nice, like I would be, I would probably like it to sit here, but you know, to go and read, but I'm probably not a Gryffindor. I see myself more as like a Ravenclaw or a Slytherin. So here we are, Fred and George. Uh, for some reason, we got another Alahamora spellbook. How much is the Alahamora spellbook? One hundred Bertie bots every flavor beans. I just re don't really understand like why this shows up right here. Uh, the balloon holster. I got it. Voluminous balloons are a great way to distract prefects and annoy Percy. And another potion vial. But how can I buy another potion vial? I've only got like space for free. So I never really understood this, like why some of these items are returning during the day. I kind of expect it, you know, for the... Is there anything here that interests you? Okay, so... How like... much is this Bertie Bots bean bag? 20 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. So if I get 20 Bertie Bots beans, will I like increase to 150 or 200? How much is a pack of stink pellets? 20 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. Okay, I just wanna I just wanna quickly test this out real quick. I'm kinda curious myself, and I mean we got the time anyway. It's kinda a shame that I can't like crawl underneath here. Would have been nice if that was the uh, that was, if that was an option. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Can I buy more Bertie Bot bean bag bullshit? Here we go. How much is this Bertie Bot bean bag? Twenty Bertie Bots every flavor beans. The, the, something tells me this I is going to be a waste please. of money, but let's just see if it works. You can now carry more Bertie Bots every flavor beans, Harry. What? Is there anything here that interests you? I didn't know that. Okay, so that means we still have to buy additional things then. So if it this also works for the balloon holster. What does this cost? 20 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. Okay, I'd go. like to buy that, please. With the balloon holster, you can carry loads more non-explodable luminous balloons. Okay. Okay, okay, that's good to know.
And I also need the stink pellet bag. How much is stink pellet bag? Twenty birdie bots every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Now you can carry more stink pellets, Harry. Non-explodable luminous balloons. What do they cost? Twenty birdie bots every flavor beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Non-explodable luminous balloons are great for distracting people. Okay, how many do I have now? I got 40, so I need to buy one more pack and then I need to get I'd more like beans. I'd like to buy that, please. Non-explodable luminous balloons are great for distracting people. Okay. Take a look around, Potter. So... We've maxed out, now we've finally maxed out our luminous balloons. We got 45. I got the Quidditch cup, I got the brass key, I got the Altreats for some re I still got an Altreat for some reason, which I never understood. I need more beans, so this is Alahamora. How much is the Alahamora spellbook? 100 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. Is there anything here that interests you? Yeah, a lot. I said that I was going to buy everything, so I don't have a choice to actually rebuy everything again just for the completion, just for completion's sake, because otherwise I've, like, and I haven't properly filled my inventory, and I haven't bought anything from Fred George, so. Technically speaking, you know, I I completed the goal like days ago already, but this is just, uh, now I'm just working towards, you know, maxing out and, and fulfilling my inventory, like the very last goal, so. Flibbity flibbit. Flibbity gibbet. Uh, hello there. Uh, I need. What do I need? I need uh, two packs more. Two packs. I need two packs of stink pellets. Okay, but first I'm going to try to get that additional potion vial. I kind of. I'm kind of curious. How much is this wicked well potion vial? 100 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. Okay, I'll buy it. I'd like to buy that, please. Let's see if it shows up in my inventory. Smart move, Harry. Now you can carry even more Wiganwell potion. Hmm. Well, that was a waste of money. <laughs> There's only like three potion vials in my inventory. Uh, I'm gonna write down, I wanna go to the library later, and I wanna have a look. You know, if I can still actually fill my potion vials, because these three are full. So if, if I can still fill it up, that means that basically I still have the fourth potion vial, but it's just not visible. But, you know, we gotta buy everything, so... If there's and how much is a pack of stink pellets? 20 Bertie Bots every flavor beans. Let's do it. I'd like to buy that, please. I'm also gonna max these out. You can use stink pellets to get out of all kinds of nasty situations, Harry. I'd like to buy that, please. You can use stink pellets to get out of all kinds of nasty situations, Harry. Stink pellets are maxed out, balloons are maxed out, uh, my, my beans most definitely not. And now the question is, am I going to get another Alahomora spellbook? I don't think so. Like, I don't... I don't know about you guys, but I really don't see the is extra the benefit of you? getting the second Alahomora spellbook. Because I already got the spell, and it's not going to do anything. Like, the fourth potion vial also didn't do anything, so I'm just kind of really uh, wasting beans here, so... Take a look around, Potter. Bye, guys. Enjoy your summer break. I'm going away. Okay. 
let's max out our beans one more time so that we've actually so that we actually have a maxed out inventory. Then we can tick off yet another one one of our goals. Up those beans, I know you got them. Here we go, one of fifty, finally. Let's go ahead and go to the library and try to see if we can actually finish like fill up our fourth potion vial. No, okay. So that's kind of interesting. So basically the fourth potion vial is just kind of a hoax because you can't do anything with it. And I just basically spent 100 beans for nothing. So it was good that I went there. We. We expanded our uh, arsenal of stink pellets and balloons and beans. But yeah, um, so nothing else to do here. We got three potion files to Nimbus, max out balloons, stink pellets, max house points, and max out beans and everything, all single spells. Uh, I believe also in terms of quest, this is like all the stuff that you can get. So, with having that said, boom, here we go. We've officially completed yet another goal, and that is to finish the game with a maxed out inventory. Now, we actually have it maxed out. Like, I didn't really know you could actually go even further than 30 uh, stink pellets. But again, you know, this was kind of an optional thing that I wanted to do, so it didn't really matter if I missed this. But... You know, for completion's sake, it's always good to do this. I really, I, I'm really happy I did. I'm really happy that I did this. Time to get the remaining eight wizard cards. There's eight left and we can't really find them anywhere in the game anymore. We just literally, the only thing that's left is that we got to trade with fellow students to get the, the remaining cards that we still need. So there's, there is one here. I'm glad the Quidditch season's over. I think it's a stupid game. Incendio! I'm going to Bracknell for my summer holiday what, this What year. is there to do in Bracknell? I wonder if I'll ever win which weekly's most charming smile award. Yeah, you will. I'm really looking forward to the summer holidays. Okay, so... There is supposed to be one on the second floor, maybe in the, maybe in here, in the charms classroom. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, here we go. Hi. I think Ravenclaw's got the most handsome Quidditch team at Hogwarts. You were rubbish in yesterday's match, Potter. I'm glad the Quidditch season's over. I think it's a stupid game. Okay, I'm gonna... Tamora! I'm really looking forward to the summer holidays. I think Ravenclaw's got the most handsome Quidditch team at Hogwarts. But you're Gryffindor. You played brilliantly in yesterday's match, Oh, Harry. thanks, bro. That's, that's really sportive of you. Okay, um... Nobody here, then I'll just go to the first floor then, have a look if they're here. Hello, does anybody want to trade with me? Do you want to yes. swap famous witches and wizards cards? 
I'll give you card number 23, Glenda Chittuk, for number 27, Mirabella Plunkett. Okay, let's swap. Here you are. Awesome. Glenda Chittuk. Number 23, Glenda Chittuk. Popular presenting, popular presenter of the WWN Wizarding Wireless Network program Witching Hour. <laughs> Witching Hour. Okay. You want to swap? You played really well in yesterday's match, Potter. Oh yeah, thanks. Do you collect famous witches and wizard I cards? I do. I'll give you card number two, Cornelius Agrippa, for a number fifty-nine, Gregory the Smarmy. Okay, let's swap. Here you are. Number two. Cornelius Agrippa. Celebrated wizard imprisoned by the non-magical for his writings. Like, you, you don't have anything to say? Do you collect famous witches and wizard cards? I'll give you card number 36, Jocelyn Wadcock, for a number 84, Roland Keck. Okay, let's swap. Here you are. So these are all the cards, you know, that I got duplicates for. If I didn't have the duplicate and I just have one copy of the card, Number 36. then Harry will just, just say, I don't have that card. Because, you know, he doesn't want to give away his only copy of the card. So we're actually uh, trading all of our duplicates. Jocelyn Watcock, chaser for Puddlemere United Quidditch Team record. Chaser for Puddlemere United Quidditch Team. Record for highest number of goals during British... Season of the century against Belly Castle Bats, 1931. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we're done here. Now there's a couple more cards we can get on the fourth floor. I collect famous witches and wizards cards. Do you? I'll give you a card number 61, Havelock Sweeting. For a number 77, Norval Twonk. Okay, let's swap. Here you are. Number 61, Havelock Sweeting. Unicorn expert helped set up unicorn reservations throughout Britain. I collect famous witches and wizards cards. Do you? I'll give you card number 75. Mungo Bunham for number 13, Andros the Invincible. Okay, let's swap. Here you are. <laughs> what was that gesture? Like, give me, give me, give me the card. Go, go, go. <laughs> number 75, Mungo Bonham. Famous wizard healer found at St. Mungo's Hospital for magical ailments and injuries. Okay, there should be one more. Do you collect famous witches and wizards cards? I'll give you card number 78, Orsino Thruston, for number 98, Dimpfna from Marge. Okay, let's swap. Here you are. Number 78, Orsino Thruston. Plays drums with the popular reasoning band, the Scissor Sisters. You got anything, you got anything to say? I'm glad the Quidditch season's over. I think it's a stupid game. What? What do you want? What, what is that gesture that you keep making? What? All right, two cards left. They should be here. Hey, you're still here, huh? You guys got anything? I'm going to try out for the Quidditch team next term. Great match yesterday, Potter. Thanks. You want to trade? I'm glad the Quidditch season's over. I think <sighs> it's a stupid game. I run out of I run out of incendios to give. Really, I don't care anymore. Do you want to swap famous go. witches and wizards cards? I'll give you a card number eighty-one. Kwang Po for number 43, 
Cyprian Yowdle. OK, let's swap. Here you are. Number 81, Kong Po. Chinese wizard who discovered the uses of powdered fireball eggs. All right, then it's probably you. Do you yep. collect famous witches and wizards cards? I'll give you card number 94, Merton Graves, for a number 31, Balfour Blaine. OK, let's swap. Here you are. Number 94, Merton Graves. Play cello with popular wizarding band, the Scissor Sisters. OK, let's go have a look if we've actually got all the cards. This is complete, complete, complete. Yep, we got all 100 cards except for one. And now we need to go ahead and actually get our final card. I'm going to save to celebrate this milestone. Let's have a look if there's anything I'm missing here. Now, the final Famous Witches and Wizards cards can be found right here. Ah, Harry. I see that you now have 100 unique Famous Witches and Wizards cards in your Folio Magi. Please, take this card to complete your collection. Wow, thanks, Professor Dumbledore. Run along then, Harry. Number 101, Harry Potter, Wicked. The boy who lived. So let's just go through all of them real quick. And that's that. So now that's done. The only thing that there is literally left to do is just go inside the Great Hall and watch the end credits. Before we do that, I kind of want to talk Perhaps to Dumbledore. You be elsewhere, Harry. Because he's, he's giving a couple of hints for some reason. I'm sure you've got better things to do than to stand around talking to me. Why don't you spend your last day of the term exploring those places where you haven't been before? Or perhaps you could try exploring those places you have been before. Perhaps you should be elsewhere, Harry. Let's take a final look at the house points. So Slytherin's got 300. And Ravenclaw's got 250. Then we got another 200 for Hufflepuff, and look, I got a whopping 600 points, which is basically the max that you can get. 
And by completing the Folio Magi, I think we're kind of done here. I just want to have a final stroll over the grounds and in the castle to make sure uh, that I'm not missing anything. You know, maybe there are still some places where we can explore. But then uh, it's safe to say that we've officially completed the game. So I'm not going in here because um, then I'll just restart, you know, the training. I don't want that. Let's go to the Forbidden Forest. Can I actually enter the Forbidden Forest again? That would be neat if that was possible. The door's locked. But you have a key. Why don't you open it? The door's locked. Hmm, okay. So Hagrid is probably still in Azkaban, so... Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. And what else we got? So we got the Quidditch Stadium, the Forbidden Forest. Let's go to flying practice. Probably only Madame Hooch standing there. Yeah. I probably don't even have to have have to take a look at like the herbology greenhouse. But we'll just go in there just to be sure. In terms of the castle, I don't think that there's any any new place where we can go. I mean, I could, like, the dungeons we went, it's open now. Okay, is there anything new in here? Nope. Oh, the horclumps were uh, grow back, grew back. I didn't know the horclumps grew back. The venomous tentacula is gone at least, so that's good. So there's nothing left. There's nothing left for us uh, to explore in the grounds. We've been everywhere. Let's have a quick tour throughout the castle, make sure we're not missing anything. Okay, so here's nothing. I I wonder if I'll ever win Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award. Yeah, you will. I'm glad the Quidditch season's over. I think it's a stupid game. Hey, I'm not going in there yet. Here's nothing. No way through there. Let's see if there's anything here that we've that we've. No. So we went for Fred and George already. This is probably Filch's office. Hey. Right. I'm going to Outer Mongolia for my holiday this year. Well, it looks like the entire school is going to Outer Mongolia for some reason. Hope you have a terrible summer holiday, Potter. Oh, well, I kind of shot myself in the foot there. There you go. Can't get eat in that way. Eat some flames, bitch. Okay, we went through here. Let's just go here one more time. Nah, I'm not going to bother. There's nothing here. We went here already. So, Green Guts we went. There was nothing new. So the only places left to explore are like in here. No, I can't open it, okay. It would have been cool, you know, if you can just open this thing again and just go back to the Chamber of Secrets during the day, like after you kill the Basilisk, that would be cool. Right, isn't it? I'm so pleased that the horrible Basilisk is gone. It was making a terrible mess of my perfectly miserable... Perfectly miserable bathroom. Okay, well, you're certainly welcome. <laughs> I did it with all the pleasure in the world. It's so lonely. Do you think it's wise that you spend so 
how much time visiting the girls' bathroom. Well, she's asking the re the real questions here. For some reason, like the this chest is oh is like covered in ectoplasmum again, and we're getting another wizard card. Is this like Gr Gryffindor again? Number forty-one. <laughs> Godric Gryffindor. <laughs> we got another. We got another duplicate of Godric Gryffindor. Okay, I'm not really sure if that was intended by the game, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I finally got it to work. The whole reason why uh, I couldn't, like, uh, go to uh, couldn't. So the whole reason why I couldn't use the level selector. <laughs> was because I didn't input the code, the, the action replay code, to actually make it work. I kept thinking to myself that I had like all of the, all of the codes working because you know, I had access to the development men to the developer menus, but it just turned out that I didn't, I didn't uh, like input the action replay codes and that actually prevents me from going into different levels. So now finally, having that said, like better late than never, I can finally show you the Incendio dual mechanic. So let's go ahead and warp back to day two. Let's see, uh, defense against the dark arts. And now we're going to, uh, this is the snake cutscene. Let's go to the duel. And then of course, we'll just reload the game. Well done, Potter! 40 house points for Gryffindor! Now I'd like you to use the Expelliarmus spell you've just acquired in a real duel. Okay, we all know how this goes. Okay, so... So here it is. I'll... I keep... See? Now that I hit him, he will send it back to me. And you also just saw it that when Incendio hits him, it also deducts a point from his total. So this kind of tells me that they they were initially planning to use Incendio as a dueling charm as well. It actually works. <laughs> Let's finish this in style. Okay, so that was quite a quick little demonstration that I want to give you. Okay, yeah, this is fine. It doesn't matter. So because if we go to our um, uh, to where is it? The book of spells here. We'll go all the way to the chapter that has uh, he, the incendio. It says incendio may also be used as a dueling charm, but care must be taken if the opponent knows Expelliarmus. So, considering that we uh, get incendio like on day four, we actually never get the chance to really use this spell in a real duel. Like, we only duel gargoyles from like day four on during the incendio challenge and then the only thing we can do is repel their attacks and the final duel with humans that we have is actually on night two in a restricted section if you remember that uh with crab and goyle so and, and then we don't even have incendio yet so it's kind of interesting that even although we were never supposed to have incendio and use to, in order to use it as a duel in mechanic it it actually works it is still coded to work properly so i thought that was kind of cool and it was well worth, you know, the time to actually go out of my way and show you this, uh, this in action. Now it's time to go back to our real save file. Because, believe it or not, we are actually done with, um, 
with the game. We've successfully completed the game for the full 100%. Now, before we, uh, before we go and say goodbye and uh, go to the Great Hall, watch the end credits and the final cutscenes and whatnot, I kind of wanted to uh, go ahead and do one more thing because... So, although the game is, like, pretty much over and, like, there's nothing left to do and the only thing for us to do is just to go into the Great Hall and watch the final cutscenes and the, the end credits, I still wanted to go ahead and uh, do a bit of a recap. You know, I thought it was a, to be a good moment to actually stop uh, for a moment and reflect on what we've been doing for the past hours, like for the past 15 plus hours, besides... Uh, of course, playing the game, which we were also doing. So the uh, quick recap, the initial idea here was, was that we were going to investigate the machinima potential of Nintendo GameCube and Wii games. With being more specifically, of course, Nintendo GameCube games, and even more specifically, Harry Potter and uh, the Chamber of Secrets, for that matter. Uh, besides using it for an upcoming project called Trigon, which is, uh, like I said, it's going to be an experimental visual study of the 2002 Harry Potter universe, I also kind of wanted to use this opportunity as an example to measure the machinima potential of GameCube games in general. Considering that machinima films are often made with PC games because of their custom content modding support uh, and freedom, I aim to show, basically I, I did, that it can be done in console games as well. And I did this with the Dolphin emulator in conjunction with its custom texture function and free look camera option. So basically the question I wanted to answer was, from a preliminary perspective, can any machinima potential be found in Nintendo GameCube games? So look at this, I'm emphasizing preliminary here for a number of reasons, because first of all, it's just one sample, it's just a single sample out of hundreds of potential games. So I can't give you a conclusive and definitive answer right now. Not every single game will enough, have enough skin and bones in, to, in order to make it machinima proof, basically to make machinima with it. And not every game is, is able to actually work around some of the limitations that you have with the free loop cameras as well. Also another thing to mention, really simple, we have not done any camera manipulation in Wii games yet, so we don't know their potential. Can machinima potential be found in at least GameCube games? Well, my answer to that is yes, asterisk, <laughs> with a huge asterisk, because we are answering this from a preliminary first look perspective, basically. Like, can all machinima, can all GameCube games have potential machinima? Like, can we make machinima with them? Like, like I said, not every game will be suitable for filmmaking since all of these games were not made with this particular. Uh, use in mind. Some of the games will probably be able to work around this particular issue flawlessly, while other experiences m might fall flat because you're running into issues along the end. Every game and every genre is different in that regard. So for example, if we get like an open world game such as Harry Potter or Super Mario Sunshine, or a game that emphasizes human interaction like The Sims, you know, might be much more suitable for machinima purposes with Dolphin than more linear and smaller games like uh, James Bond games or Tyrock or Lager Winch or whatever for that matter. So in terms of Harry Potter, after around like our huge gameplay uh, session for the past couple of days, I think this answer that I'm going to give you right now sums up the appropriate answer to our question in a bit of a broad sense. So there is potential, absolutely potential for machinima making in this game as long as you're able to work around the game's limitations in a creative manner. I have to emphasize creative here. Of course, while this can apply to practically every game, you know, there are a number of elements we should take into account that we can use to decide whether we will be able to work around these limitations. And those are three things. First of all, it depends on the game's freedom. Like, is the player given freedom to move beyond the initial quest? Is there exploration possibilities? Or is everything extremely linear? Can we revisit areas? Are there areas that we can or not properly manipulate with the camera? Like in Harry Potter, we had a couple of um, areas that were really hard to maneuver around with the camera. And luckily we, got, we had like the cheat, uh, the cheaty buttons to uh, move into no clip mode. So we were actually able to counter some of these issues. Freedom in in-game also applies to our surroundings. Like can we manipulate our surroundings to achieve the goal we have in mind? Can we break objects, place objects, move? change them or hide them in some way and also what purpose can we give 
to the surroundings and game data, are we able to reverse the game? And with reverse, I mean, are we able to do the exact opposite that the game wants us to do or look at or focus on for an ex extended period of time? Again, like, let's just do an example of what I mean with reversing. So for example, in Mario Kart's Double Dash, that game wants us to race. Nothing more, nothing less. That's of course the core gameplay. What if we reverse the game by not racing and just driving at our own pace and every now and then we stop because we want to make some interesting shots and interesting point of view from the map as, as we were some kind of tourist, you know? But would that be possible for us to do? Like, is it possible for us to reverse this game? Will the game automatically end if the other players finish their laps? Or are we able just to continuously like move on? Like, can we spend 45 minutes in the map and make all the shots that we want without being disturbed by the other racers? Because if the game were to automatically stop once the seventh player finishes their third lap, it would really pose a serious critical time issue. We would only have like four to six minutes per map to like create shots on a regular basis and resulting in us that we have to keep booting into maps over and over and over again in order for us to do what we want to do. So if that were to be the case, we cannot really reverse the game properly to make it do like what we want to. So we need to find creative workarounds in order to make it work just fine. Now let's have a look at some of the issues from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets during and also take a look at like how did we actually fix these issues during our extended gameplay session. So there's quite a few issues going on. Uh, after going over them really quick, I'll show a couple of visual references to how I countered these. So the first of all, we got GameCube RAM and limited pers first person view. You've probably seen it since the beginning already that things will, that textures and objects will pop in and out of the screen. And that is because, you know, the GameCube has r l limited RAM and can only display so much. And that's why, it, because we are actually currently in a um, field of view with the camera that we were not supposed to be. That's why we can actually see the shift in what is loaded into the RAM. Also limited first person view. We can go into first person mode and look through Harry's eyes, but because of the RAM, uh, the RAM, the limited RAM available on GameCube, we actually only have like a limited first person view to actually look around. Field of view is also exactly the same. Like, um, because it, the more we zoom out, especially when zooming out, it will be extremely easy to actually see all the texture popping and like unloaded textures and objects and whatnot. Heads up display. Every time when we were uh, capturing things, uh, you know, we, we would have like the, the GameCube control, uh, the GameCube controllers, uh, the GameCube controller layout are there all the time. And you know, we, we had to fix that as well. Limited camera control and animation options because you know, the, the, the Dolphin camera did not really have a lot of options. We could move around, we could rotate, but there was no option for us, you know, to add keyframes or like a timeline to create more complex animations. Also, we had the cutscene only maps, like um, uh, Dumbledore's office, uh, basically, the, the, um, because we can only enter there during cutscenes. And yes, we could try to reverse engineer the game, but that was that's going a little bit beyond the scope of what I tried to do. And I tried to do it, but it didn't really work. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong and how to do it exactly, but. You know, like there's only maps that are accessible through cutscenes, like Dumbledore's office and the Quidditch, uh, sometimes the, uh, no, not the Quidditch stadium, only like Dumbledore's office. And then you only have like a couple of seconds to anticipate and just create shots, which is really annoying. And it's almost practically impossible. Same goes with boss fight maps and also Quidditch because the broom will always keep on moving. So here's a little thing that we did to counter it, like with the, the most, the first and most prominent issue, of course, was the lack of RAM and the constant popping uh, if you use a two wide FOV. And to counter this, I used the no clip mode to align Harry with the area of the map that I wanted to implement in the shot. Like if you look at the left shot, he's looking at the pillars in the, in the back and that's actually, that entire area is loaded into RAM. From that moment on, I actually moved, did camera manipulation and then, um, everything should be loaded into the RAM. If there's also a shot where parts of the, lo lo the map were not still properly loaded, I went ahead and combined the first person perspective of Harry and additional camera manipulation to get, actually get this. 
And you can also do additional camera manipulation on the right. Like for example, I combined the first person view here with additional camera manipulation because I was already able to see the majority of the, um, I was already able to see the majority of the roof there, but now with additional camera manipulation, I was actually to really see it like the way how I wanted to. Heads up display. Now you can see it, it's blocking the view in the, in the top right, so to speak. And also it doesn't look well, it doesn't look good when I was creating shots for Trigon because you don't want to see that, you know, you want to get a cinematic representation of the game and therefore you need to get rid of the heads up display. So I used the, the, did this by using uh, the custom texture feature in Dolphin by dumping it, uh, erasing out the actual texture in Photoshop. And basically I would leave myself with an empty transparent texture and I place that in a folder and Dolphin would load it. So I also assigned the custom textures to a hotkey like you've seen multiple times before. So I was able to switch between these on the fly. In a nutshell, the, even if it's not visible, the texture for uh, the heads up display was actually still there. It's just transparent. So that's why you're unable to see it. And uh, of course I was still able to uh, circumvent the issues in the boss fight maps at least a bit, you know, in the Chamber of Secrets when we were focusing on Salazar, Slitter and Statue. It was really important, but it was actually really hard to create shots without the Basilisk because that would really scream like, oh, we're in the game. The rest of the boss fights, you know, they take up such a large portion of the map, it, was, it would be impossible to create shots with them and Quidditch as well. Um, and of course, I got to say, you know, the camera just had really like some moments that were the good, the bad and the ugly. And I really tried to work around these as, a, as best as I possibly could. So going back to the free elements, we were able to reverse parts of the game's intentions. We were able to reverse the majority of the issues that we had with the game for intended purpose. And luckily, this game has a lot of in-game freedom, which helps us with our creative freedom as well for camera manipulation and to bypass the expectations of the viewer. You know, that's really important, bypassing expectations of the viewer because it allows us to shed um, better new insights on the many video game worlds that we thought we knew inside out and also had taken for granted. We also changed the purpose of our surroundings many, many times. Like for example, remember that scene where we were in the Forbidden Forest with Aragog? Uh, and instead of primarily focusing on the spiders, which would be something that the game wanted us to do, you know, we, had, we got a Flapendo, the spiders, we got Incendio, the spiders. We actually focused on the surroundings, you know, the vast amount of trees, geometry, rocks, and their assigned textures in order to create a whole different look on a level that is like that level is practically dictated by spiders, but we actually created a whole different look in that spider dictated level, which is really cool in its own right. So with that, with my conclusion, I would like to conclude Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets breaking magical boundaries. Thank you for tuning in to the stream from time to time. And we've done countless camera manipulations. We've solved issues shared numerous creative insights, experienced the wonderful atmosphere that this game has to offer firsthand. We went through highs, we went through lows, and we finished the game to full completion. It's been an amazing ride and I've enjoyed every single minute of it together with you guys. Only thing left for me to say is to thank you again. Hopefully see you again on my channel once Trigon releases later this year. And without further ado, and let's go ahead and watch the final cutscenes and credits together. For now, take care. Bye bye. We come to the end of another most eventful year at Hogwarts. And so, for their many achievements and outstanding commitment to the school, it is with great pleasure that I present the House Cup to Gryffindor. Harry told them everything. 
For nearly a quarter of an hour, he spoke into the rapt silence. He told them about hearing the disembodied voice. How Hermione had finally realized that he was hearing a basilisk in the pipes. How he and Ron, following a hint from Hagrid, had followed the spiders into the forest. That Aragog had told them where the last victim of the basilisk, 50 years before, had died. How he had guessed that Moaning Myrtle had been the victim, and that the entrance to the basilisk's lair, the Chamber of Secrets, might be in her bathroom. Well, it had a lot to do with loyalty and friendship. And courage. <laughs> Harry, you can't forget that. Yes, and courage too. Professor Dumbledore explained that 50 years ago, Lord Voldemort, as the 16-year-old Tom Riddle, had enchanted his diary, and that diary had enchanted Ginny. For it was Lucius Malfoy who had planted Tom Riddle's diary on the hapless Ginny Weasley. And, as for Harry, well, once again, he truly was the boy who lived.